Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very, very special GDQ Hot Fix show. My name is Midnight Vesper, and I am your host for this Golden Sun 20th Anniversary Race. 20 years ago, Golden Sun was released to the Game Boy Advance to massive success and captivated the audiences of RPG and fantasy fans alike. Now we're going to commemorate the game with a massive Golden Sun race. Four great runners will speedrun the no save and no quit category. While there may be a victor today, we are all here to celebrate the love of this beautiful game. Before we start, we do have a couple announcements we like to say. Summer Games Done Quick 2021 online is July 4th to the 11th. The Games Done list is out and prize submissions are now open. You can go to gamesdonequick.com to find out about submitting prizes for the event. Also, Frame Fatales, the all-woman speedrunning event, will be returning on August 15th through 21st with Flame Fatales. Game submissions will be open May 18th to the 25th. You can go to gamesdonequick.com slash frame fatales for more information on the upcoming event. And of course, information on all of our hotfix shows will be available at gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. From there, you can find out more information about submitting your runs to any of our weekly shows. And of course, if you are watching this on YouTube and would like to support our live content, please consider checking out our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash gdq. If you have the, an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe to any Twitch channel of your choice every month for free. Please consider using your Prime Gaming account to subscribe to the GDQ Twitch channel. And, of course, just a reminder, reminder that tomorrow is going to be Community Spotlight with a Mega Man Battle Network show featuring Battle Network 1, 4, and 5. So tune into that as we celebrate Mega May. But first, let's go ahead and toss it to our amazing commentators for this four Person, this four-person race of Golden Sun. Good cause, and Plexa, take it away. Hey, hey, welcome, everybody. Welcome to this uh, really exciting race we've got in front of us. Look, um, I'm joined here with Good Cause. I'm Plexa. I'm uh, the world record holder of this game, and um, I've been speedrunning this for quite a long time. Uh, I was at GDQ, actually, doing this category, and it was, uh, it was a pretty good time. We actually had uh, Bowie on comms, and he's racing today. Um, but I'm joined by Cause. How are you doing, Cause? I'm doing great. Thanks, Plexa. I am uh, the good Cause, and I am also a speedrunner in the Golden Sun community. I've been with these guys for about maybe close to a year now. Um, great community here, and super excited to see everyone uh, coming together and doing this great race. Yeah, today you've got four of the absolute best Golden Sun runners that we could find. Uh, everybody here has been grinding the game out. Everybody has PB'd in the last couple of weeks. I mean, most of them are PB'd in the last week, even. Uh, Bowie's just knocked it out of the park. Future's PB'd. Felissa is almost there on a 339. Bluezer is on 339 pace. These are some really, really amazing runners in front of us. We actually have some really amazing um, stories leading up to the event, too. Um, uh, over the last week or so, Bluezer and uh, Bowie actually tied for their PBs. And since then, uh, I think Bowie's taken the lead, but really, really amazing stories and a lot of competition leading up to the event. Yeah, there's only 11 frames difference between them. It's crazy. Like in a game with this much RNG, it was, it's, it's insane. But there's a lot of intro to go through in this, in this game, in this category. So um, why don't we get this race started? So let us count down our races. All right. All right, I'll leave the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, and go. Looks like we have everybody starting except Bowie. Uh oh. <laughs> he was caught napping. <laughs> there we go. All right, everybody's in. Bowie, Bowie's a few seconds behind, but that's fine. It'll be it'll be all good. Yeah. This game is uh, full of RNG. There is. Even if we only have a couple seconds difference between people, it's, it's really not going to matter over the course of the run. Basically, this game is a, a cascading game of RNG coin flips through the entire game. The, the later we go, the bigger these coin flips become. So this is, uh, even though Bowie was, uh, was caught napping, it's going to be all good. Uh, no worries at all. Uh, so the first thing you're going to see all our runners do here is they're just going to clear through the, the beginning text of this game and then, go, then they're going to set the text speed to fast. There's a lot of cutscenes in this game, like 
more than there really should be, and there's no cutscene skip option. Uh, so setting tech speed to fast is going to be really important. Mm -hmm. uh, one cool thing that they're all doing for this race is that they are changing their border color to match the elemental gin or the elements that they're supporting in this race. So we've got Bowie out here on Venus. We've got Blueza representing Jupiter. We've got uh, Future X representing Mars and Velissa representing Mercury. Pretty exciting. Um, so good time to get your uh, Team Blue or Team Bowie, Team Team Future, Team Velissa in chat. Um, but yeah, of course, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, some of our, our competitors here today? Yeah, so Blues are here. We have Bluezer, Bowie, Velissa, and Future. Um, if you're in the Golden Sun community, you probably know them all quite well by now. But um, if, you, if you're new to us, let me tell you a little bit about each of them. Bowie here has been... Um, probably one of the most um, popular speedrunners in the in the Golden Sun community and definitely brought a lot of attention to the community over the past year and a half or so. At least that's how I found the um, Golden Sun community originally. Um, while Plexo's the um, world record holder, Bowie's definitely the prophet that has uh, brought more people into the fold. Bluezer has probably run the, the game the most out of everyone here. I think Blizzard probably has the most runs completed or um, attempted, rather, <laughs> out of all of the runners here today. <laughs> he sure does. Um, he sure does. But yeah, Blues is a fantastic yeah, runner. Yeah, we've actually seen um, we've actually seen the first interesting thing in this run. Actually, just sorry to cut you no. off, but um, you, you, we've just kind of seen Golden Sun in a nutshell. Blueser had come screaming out of the gates, just mashing like a god. We'll come to learn that Blueser is potentially the strongest early game runner we have. Um, but he got bad RNG. So the first four encounters in this game are scripted. Um, they happen at the same period of time. And then um, whether or not you can run from the encounter or not, that is RNG. But where the encounters happen aren't. Uh, so Blueser got terrible luck. He got three fail fleas, which is basically... Uh, each, each, each flea is a 50-50 at this point in the game. But Velissa got perfect RNG. So Velissa's uh, taken the lead here very early on through some uh, pretty fortunate RNG. And uh, it means nothing right now, to be honest. Um, it's interesting because it's the first showcase that how RNG heavy this, this category is and how the lead can just flip-flop all over the place. Um, it, it in the lead's just changed again. Futurex with good RNG has just uh, taken the lead coming out of the intro. Oh no, he's tied with Blueser, more or less. Oh, it's going to be a close one. It's going to be uh, swinging back and forth the entire time. I'm super excited for this and how it all ends up, but uh, I'll continue with uh, just giving a little bit of uh, background on each of the players here. So, um, Velissa's actually, uh, I believe she's uh, been a Golden Sun runner for a long time now, isn't that right, Plexa? Yeah, she's been in the community for a very, very long time, um, way back to when I was first starting out even. Um, I don't know how many runs she actually completed, but she did a lot of research into some of the glitches. She found a glitch, she found the Infinite Climb glitch, uh, which we won't see in this category, but we will see an offshoot of that um, much later on. It's very cool. But she's definitely been known to the community for a very long time. Executionally very, very, very talented. Um, has the smallest delta between her best possible time and her uh, PB time. And what that means is that she is executing well, in, uh, well beyond her uh, game knowledge level, which is pretty pretty crazy mm -hmm. she has gotten good at the game very very quickly and um lastly we have future x future um while he has the um the longest if you could say that uh pb for the game he does have ungodly rng on his side future has had some ridiculous uh rng feeds and especially in the past week i believe he got um, there's a split in this game for Tunnel Ruins, and he got a zero encounter Tunnel Ruins, um, which is unheard of. Yeah, Future is definitely, uh, I mean, no slight against him at all, but he is the luckiest runner we have in the community, and it's just something about him. He just, uh, especially as the game goes on, where RNG matters a lot more, he, he just gets it every single time, so consistently, it's, it's, it's really crazy. <laughs> so I, I really uh, think that this is yeah. anyone's race. Oh yeah, it, it truly is. Um, anything can happen. There's so like we've been going on about the RNG, but there really is a ton of RNG, and well, we'll, we'll come to know that very well as soon as we get out of this introductory period. Um, I mean, we should probably start explaining the game at some point, but uh, before we do that, I just want to touch on my expectations for this race. Is that uh, 
Blueser here is by far and away the strongest early game runner. You should expect him to take an early lead. I would not be surprised to see him the first person to clear the halfway mark, which is roughly Kraken. Um, and then Bowie, on the other hand, has got the strongest end game of this group. I would fully expect him to be yeah, a minute or two behind by the midpoint, but to make up all of that difference as he comes into the last split, and I actually think he'll take this out. Uh, Velissa, don't count her out. Technically extremely capable. Um, if a few things go her way, she can absolutely win this race as well. Um, and if Future gets lucky, like he currently is, um, he could he could just take this race as well. I'm uh, I'm predicting a Bluzer win here, but uh, more or less the same. Do you think he's going to hold the lead? Yeah, he's certainly capable. He's been on some really fantastically paced runs. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Bluzer is probably the riskier, the riskiest player out of the bunch here. Um, in order to push the limits on his uh, on his recent PBs, he's been doing some strategies that are riskier, um, but more rewarding, high risk, high reward type of stuff. But um, why don't we start talking about the actual game and uh, specifically the category that we're playing in today. So there's a lot of different categories in Golden Sun, but uh, this one here is the no SNQ category, which is no save and quit. Plexa, do you want to talk to us a little bit about what the intricacies of the category means for us? Yeah, so uh, we first started out playing Golden Sun pretty naively and we just aimed to go as fast as we could. Uh, the fastest way to get through this game is using RNG manipulation and the way you do that in this game is you save the game, you hard reset, that resets the random numbers back to where they uh, start from. The GBA has a really primitive RNG algorithm as you'll see with most GBA titles and uh, that basically allows us total control throughout the entire game. Uh, it makes it a very technical and difficult category to get into and also it, it deviates quite a lot from what people remember Golden Sun to be. Um, a lot of people have fond memories of like running through bashing encounters, using Jin, using summons and stuff, and RNG made up, it's like, well, I'm just going to run from everything, and then I'm going to kill stuff with the Assassin Blade. Um, so then along came Bowie, and he was very insistent on, on wanting to run a category that didn't have this precise manipulation, and any percent no save and quit was basically born. So preventing saving and quitting essentially prevents anybody from doing RNG manipulation, um, and that there are some other consequences. We lose access to some glitches. Most recently, we found uh, arbitrary code execution, which requires a save and quit. Um, and all of that stuff is kind of taken away. So it's almost like a, a, a glitch limit uh, intended quote unquote playthrough of the game. So we'll be using battle strategies that people may have thought of when they were kids, maybe not. Um, and really trying to capture the spirit and the essence of the Golden Sun series with this category. Um, that the, the popularity of this category is really a testament to the fact that it does truly capture that Golden Sun essence. Um, and as we get closer and um, further into the game, there's quite a, lot, a long way to go before we get there. But as we get closer into the game, you'll start to see those gameplay elements come through. And in particular, some of the boss fights are, are really, really quite cool mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and interesting. But that's basically the category we have today. Uh, it's not glitch-free. There are a couple glitches. We'll point them out as we go, as we go on, but there's only... Um, this category has two major uses of, of uh, three major uses of the retreat glitch and a couple optional ones as well. Uh, well, we can talk about that much later. The uh, defining feature of this category for me personally is um, runners will need to have combat encounter knowledge um, to a very high depth and degree uh, compared to the any percent category where it's more scripted. Um, so there's a lot of variance that you can have in encounters and um, runners will have to basically have each encounter memorized for each area, or at least intuitively know what the encounter weaknesses are when they see the encounter. Yeah, it, it, it's really a big change that the RNG amount of categories, my notes was like five, two, three, one, one, or something like that. It'd be like, oh, this is the number of things they need to do to uh, run away from an encounter. Here, it's like, oh, here's a cross table of every possible encounter you can get and the optimal way to clear each enemy. And those, those encounter matrices uh, get, get very, very convoluted very quickly. Um, you'll start to see that way more as we get into some of the in-game dungeons, uh, but up to that point, uh, even then, there are still edge cases and optimizations that runners will be throwing in from time to time to try and get an edge. The one caveat to the no SNQ category today, though, is because we're doing it in marathon form, there are going to be some safety saves. So you may end up, well, of course, you're going to see some saving, but not quitting. 
Well, we might see some quitting. We may see some resets. Um, hopefully we don't. Hopefully everybody can get through with the category intact, but it's pretty unlikely. Um, the fact that there are four people trying to do a run simultaneously, something bad is going to happen to one of our runners. I don't know who, I don't know when, I don't know what it's going to look like, but something bad will happen. At least one thing. And that's where those safety saves are going to be very important. Let's talk about some of those things that could happen um, that are more pertinent to the early game, um, and maybe some of the good things too. So um, in, in combat, for example, there's um, some specific types of actions that can happen to us, or occurrences rather, um, you can get an attacks first in combat, and controversially, you can also have a caught by surprise. An attacks first is um, basically you get an ambush round, and this is a free flee action. So one of the other things in this game is that fleeing is always fastest. We try and get out of encounters in combat as fast as we can, whether that means defeating the encounter if we need to, or just getting out of it by fleeing and taking the risk. And Flex, do you want to talk to being caught by surprise a little bit? Yeah, let's talk about the, the, the style of game a little bit so we can better understand the the, the, the combat of this game. It's a, it's a pretty simple uh, take. Uh, it's, a, it's a twist on the classical JRPG formula. So if you've ever played Dragon Quest or if you've ever played um, like, like a, a turn-based RPG, it, it's exactly like that. So we have four player characters. Well, at the moment we have three, but we'll eventually get four player characters and they'll each take their turns in, in accordance to their agility, and then enemies will also take turns in accordance to their own agility, and the turn order will be determined by their agilities. The twist on the JRPG formula is the gen system. The gen system uh, is actually one of the best takes on the, the classic JRPG framework, in my opinion. Of course, I would say that, but I also think it is one of the most interesting systems. So Jin are very powerful spirits that can offer you bonuses in battle, so they could be uh, a protective shield, or it could be extra damage, or it could be an agility boost or a defense boost or something like that. Um, the trade-off is that if you use the Jin, they go into a state called standby. And when they're standby, all of the bonuses that the Jin offers you when they're set go away. Um, these bonuses include uh, changing your class, so changing you from your base class to a different class, and those classes uh, come with mul bonus multipliers on it. Um, those multipliers are, are huge, like they scale up to like 180% or something silly like that on each stat depending on the particular class you're in. So you have this unique trade-off where if you use these spirits, these djinn, that you, you get weaker but you get access to a very powerful ability. Uh, while djinn are standby, they can then be used to summon. And summoning is a very, very powerful thing in the game. It's basically um, a, a percentage HP blast on the, on the enemies. Um, summoning is by far and away the strongest action in the game, but because you lose all of the bonuses from your djinn, um, it, there's a, a risk-reward trade-off there that you have to make when you're using them. Um, once you say that once they're summoned, they go into a phase called stand, uh, uh, recovering, where they can't be used, and then after that they return to you. Uh, we see all our runners actually entering Soul Sanctum, this is the first dungeon. Uh, we don't have access to djinn just yet. Um, and as, as Good Cause has already said, the fastest thing to do at this point of the game is just to flee. So basically runners will be counting encounters and just fleeing as they can, hopefully not failing. Um, we can see Future, again, is living up to his name, is, is getting very lucky and has got one encounter, no, flip, no fails, and Blue has got a couple fails and Felissa got a... Uh, now she's got two fails as well. Um, and Bowie's just, oh, Bowie got the caught by surprise seed. Which is a good segue into the thing you wanted me to talk about, Cause, which was caught by surprise, which is basically uh, um, an enemy back attack where they uh, get a free action and you can do nothing about it. Um, it's a 1 in 64 to get one of those. Um, right now, they're just annoying. By the end of the game, they're basically run-ending, so or hopefully we don't be. see many more of those. Yeah, a caught by surprise at the end of the game has the potential to wipe your run, um, and it comes right out of nowhere. Yeah, so the Soul Sanctum dungeon isn't that complicated. It's it's pretty basic. There's uh, three screens of encounters that they can get. Uh, four screens, sorry, of encounters that they can get. Uh, everybody's moving into the next cutscene, which is kind of like the midway point for this dungeon. And really, the runners are looking to get a, a, a sub-17 going into the, the next cutscene segment, uh, which is after this room that uh, three of our runners are in at the moment. Um, this this next room is, is quite notorious. Um, it's notorious for having an extremely high rate 
Well, when we say high rate, what we mean is that the rate at which you generate encounters is very high. Um, that's because there's a slight um, extra level to the, to the slight extra levels on the enemies in that region, which increases the encounter rate for some reason. And something has happened to Future. Oh, he's woken back up. Oh no, he lost the lead. So Bluezer is out ahead, as expected. Uh, Bluezer gets very consistently good times here, regardless of RNG. I don't know how he does it. Mm -hmm. He's a he's a wizard. Yeah, it's it's all the runs that he sacrifices to the risky strats that he does. <laughs> Has to even out eventually. <laughs> Yeah, he's making very good time, actually. Melissa is unfortunately getting more uh, fails on her fleas. She is losing a bit of time here, but that's okay. And Blues' luck finally has caught up to him, and Bowie is, is not having a good time either. He, he is he is failing a lot. That is unlucky. Then there's really nothing he can do. Um, there's no magic RNG thing that we can do to, to fix it. You just have to take it. Uh, fortunately, right now, the, the deviation of times coming into the interior is usually only about 30 seconds at max. But Bowie could be headed for a very disastrous situation where people could be dying. Um, and that that can lead to very bad things. He may have to do the whole dungeon over again. Ah, he takes the safety mm, save. Yeah. That's something you wouldn't normally see a runner do. You'd normally see them just take the, take the... If they die, they die and just reset. But obviously, can't do that in this race. Absolutely. That would set them back way too far to recover. And, and Bluezer has entered the final, uh, into the interior. He has completed the dungeon. Future and Velissa are basically synced, but ooh, Velissa gets the flea and Future gets a double fail. Looks like Velissa is about 12 seconds behind Bluezer. Uh, that's kind of fun. And something interesting about and fleeing here actually is that it's... every time that they fail flea, they have an increased chance to perform flea successfully the next turn. I believe it's about 15% chance more each time, or what's the exact amount, Plexa? Uh, it's 20 pins. Yeah, it's 20%. So every time you fail, you get extra 20% chance to flee. The catch being you can't have negative flea chance, so you still may not have a chance of fleeing if you're very low leveled. Mm -hmm. So you may see some people here fleeing three times in the same encounter, which basically means that they just have really, really bad RNG in that particular instance. But it does happen. Yeah, it looks like there's about a 40 second spread between uh, Bluezer and Bowie, uh, with Velissa and Future in between there. And that lead's basically going to stay th that way for uh, the next 26 minutes. Uh, we are getting into the interior plot point of the game. Um, Basically, what's going to happen is the the whole reason this game is, is, is happening is about to happen. So at the beginning, uh, we were going through the prologue. The prologue is basically uh, Satoris and Minati. We don't know who they are yet, but they're basically the bad guys. They broke into the place that all our runners are in right now in Soul Sanctum, and they they failed this puzzle that uh, Blue and Velissa are currently solving. They they didn't do the puzzle, and it triggered a an adverse reaction, which caused a, a, a giant eruption and blew up half a veil, causing a number of people to be hit by a boulder, uh, which is, you know, not really conducive to living, unfortunately. Um, spoilers. Um, so that's, um, that, that kind of set up the plot a little bit of like, okay, something mysterious has happened, what's going on? Something's very deeply protected and guarded within Soul Sanctum. Uh, within the Soul Sanctum, as we will find once our runners uh, complete this puzzle, is that uh, the four elemental stars are housed within the middle of Sol Sanctum. And the elemental stars are basically essence of synergy, or synergy, I guess is how you're supposed to say it, but I'm terrible and I say synergy. Uh, this distilled form of synergy is basically um, the life force of the world, so to speak. And each of these stars has been extracted from a lighthouse corresponding to that element that, that is scattered across the world. Uh, this game deals with two lighthouses, Mercury and Venus, while the other two are dealt with in the second game. In extracting that essence of synergy out of the lighthouses, it kind of turned off alchemy in the world. Alchemy is the power that powers synergy. In turning off synergy, the this magical ability that our characters have has become a scarce thing. Like not many people have access to the ability to like make things burn or move things around with a giant hand. Um, and in, that, in sealing away synergy and distilling it to these stars and sealing it away in Soul Sanctum, it's kind of removed alchemy from the world. And it turns out Satoris and Minati, these bad people who uh, were trying to break in here, were trying to steal the stars and return alchemy to the world and return this magical ability. 
Um, that whole plot point isn't resolved in this game, it's resolved in the next game, but that, that's the basic premise. Craydon here, the old man, who we uh, don't get to control or do anything with, has convinced our, our party to go on a raid into Soul Sanctum to collect the stars. And, uh, well, he doesn't know if they're there, but he believes they're there, and he's, he's kind of come prepared, and he will uh, basically heist the stars out of Soul Sanctum and cause a chain of events leading to, uh, well, either the saving or destruction of the world, depending on your, your perspective. That's an interesting point, is that um, reawakening alchemy in the game isn't, uh, at least immediately, it doesn't seem like a malicious intent. It's a, kind of like a gray area. Yeah, it's certainly, I mean, it's certainly portrayed as being quite a negative thing at the beginning of this game. Um, but as you explore the world of Wayard, which is the, the universe in which this game takes place, and, uh, you encounter more and more instances where actually having these powers is quite a good thing. Um, very notable is the town of Emil, which we'll come up to in about oh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes or so. And in Emil, um, the town is dying and people are sick. And it's actually through the power of synergy that these people are healed and, and gain access to a healing fountain, basically. Um, which is the first real hint that perhaps returning alchemy to the world isn't such a bad thing after all, despite this entire game being dedicated to stopping it and failing miserably. <laughs> uh, but that's the, the basic premise of this game. It's, um, eh, the, the, the plot in, in Golden Sun 1 is okay. The, 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 the plot in the second game really just does a number on it and uh, really makes the whole story complete. And it's, uh, well, I'm very excited that we get to demonstrate that in a, at an event in the future. Um, but let's stick to this game for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, we'll talk about TLA all day. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. We've got a long intro to get through. So, this game has do, no slip. right yeah. being as fun as it is for the the intro length that it has. Yeah. So we've we've said a few times about the length of this intro. The intro is actually uh, uh, forty one minutes, give or take. Uh, usually, we'll cut a run at forty two. Maybe Bowie ends up with a forty two here. He's a little bit behind the pace, but. You know, it, it, it's so long, and, and this is, we spend 26 minutes of the game just mashing through text. But it's 100%. 15 minutes of, of gameplay, maybe. <laughs> it is 100% um, worth it, though, when you come out the other end. Yeah, it, it, it feels bad when you're doing it, but over time, you learn to just accept it. Uh, you just reset, get back into the intro. You're angry because you just had to reset, and then eight minutes in, ten minutes in, you're like, well, actually, I'm over it now, and now I'm de I'm detilted. I can continue. I can focus <laughs> on the next round to come. Us golden <laughs> it's sun like runners, a cleansing experience. Yeah, us golden sun runners always joke about doing the intro. Like we're not playing the we're not playing the run to actually do any speed running. We're just speed running the intro. That's it. <laughs> yeah, just mashing text boxes. That's all we're doing. <laughs> yeah. The reason this game is so fun, though, is that the, um, the menuing in this game is incredibly crisp. There's only three frames of input lag on doing a command, and that makes for some incredibly snappy menus. Like, right now, we've just hit one button, right, and then press A to flee. Uh, the first fight is in probably 20 minutes from now when we fight the bandits, and you'll see just uh, people doing crazy movements and moving really fast. I know quite a few people were impressed with the menuing at, at AGDQ earlier this year. Um, that's just not something I can do. Everybody in the community can do that because the game allows you to go fast. It, it, it's a really, really satisfying experience and it sounds good too. The audio landscape and soundscape in this game is amazing. Not just the soundtrack, but even the, the confirmation when you do a button press. It's a very satisfying sound. and makes for a real great auditory experience. There's so many people talking in chat right now about how much of a masterpiece this entire game is. Um, and I really have to echo that. Like, it's not just the gameplay. You know, Golden Sun does a, a great job of the classic JRPG with its own twist with um, a job system centered around uh, Jin. But uh, it's really a masterpiece in every other right too. Like, personally, I love these graphics. Um, they're very nostalgic for me. And, uh, I remember being a kid, I was probably around nine years old when this game first came out, and going through my first city and seeing the buildings and the EMPCs around and the shops and the different weapons you can uh, buy and equip and that type of thing. Just a really amazing experience. But not only that, you touched on it a little bit there, Plexa, but the the audio or the, the soundtrack for this game is incredible and probably 
the best on the GBA, honestly. With the, with the the restraints that they were operating within, they really did a masterpiece. The battle soundtrack for this game is amazing. Um, even the soundtrack right now, um, there's a lot of like really, there's a lot of diversity with the soundtrack. It's just all around amazing. Yeah, I, I don't know how Motoi Sakuraba did it. He is the composer for this game. Also the composer for Dark Souls and uh, some of the Tales of games, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And I think a Star Ocean game or two or something. But look, look this is a 20-year-old game, as, as uh, Midnight nicely said earlier. Um, it turns 20 in like uh, two and a half months, for crying out loud. It, if an indie developing studio released a game that looked like this, no one blinks an eye. It, it, 20 years later, the graphics hold up. The soundscape holds up 20 years later. The fact that they got this sound out of a GBA sound trip is ridiculous. Um, I mean, you may not care for the gameplay. I respect that. But the soundscape is, is and has to be the, the best for the console. Uh, just absolutely incredible. Hey, there's still um, still a few more, like half a year left in 2021 for them to, to release a uh, remake of the game. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Uh, well, each to their own, each to their own. <laughs> I think these games are perfect as is, but you know, I would say that I would play that. I'd play a remaster, you know that. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I, I just want it available on the Switch, honestly. That's just, that's just me. Yeah, so that's actually a good segue actually into what consoles everybody's playing on. Um, if you own a Wii U, the uh, black sheep of the Nintendo gaming console library, then you are a lucky person because you can go to the eShop right now and buy this game for like five bucks or something, and the sequel for like another five. Um, and playing this on the Wii U is such a satisfying experience. Like the, the, the ability to remap buttons allows for some really crazy stuff. And uh, it, capturing it in HD, 60 FPS in a very easy way with using standard capturing software is just, it's just so nice. Um, so three of our runners today are doing that. Uh, so Blueser, Bowie, and Future are all running, running on the Wii U, uh, while Velissa is running on the DS. Now there is a slight performance difference between the two consoles. Uh, we do know that uh, the DS is slightly slower on the intro and then potentially slightly faster on certain summon animations, uh, but we don't believe there to be enough of a difference to split categories or anything like that. And people who compete on DS are, are certainly at no significant disadvantage that we know of. Just a note here, Critical Sid says in chat, I want a TLA remake where the only thing they change is making the gin menu not lag. And I just had to repeat that because I haven't seen a comment that rings so true to me. And Flex, I'm sure that you uh, understand that on a spiritual level as you've sped run um, TLA quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we will talk quite a lot about that laggy gin menu at SGDQ. I mean, uh, we we're very fortunate to have the Lost Stage make it into SGDQ this year. Um, incredibly honored to to be able to do that and but we will complain about that gin menu many 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 times uh, fortunately in the first game the gin menu is basically lag free it adheres to the, the three three frame delay usually um, if you get all of the gin which we won't be in this in this category um, I think the delay goes up to like six frames or something you definitely feel the lag but it, it's not not even worth complaining about it's, it still feels snappy and fast and just super crisp um, yeah, Jenna good. So there's a little bit of story developing here since we've been talking about the game. Um, you may have realized a familiar NPC from the intro, um, Felix, taking off his mask and revealing that he actually survived the uh, eruption three years ago. You're telling me the boulder didn't kill people? Oh my. <laughs> Too bad about his parents though, RIP them. <laughs> um, yeah, you've also seen Satoris Minati kind of crash the party. Um, they were the NPCs that, that killed us earlier on. And a new guy, Alex, he's the guy in blue, who we uh, basically only ever talk with, even though he's immensely powerful. Um, so Satoris Minati and Alex have crashed the party with Felix. They have come to collect the elemental stars, seeing as they couldn't solve the really, really simple puzzle that we solved. They have uh, crashed the party and will be stealing the stars off of us. So currently, Alex has... Um, orchestrated the stealing of three of those stars but they were uh, a little bit not a little bit wary about taking the last star the mars star so uh, they made us do it but as soon as we picked up the mars star uh, the volcano that we currently reside in uh, started to erupt and uh, 
that's currently what everybody's playing through. Mm -hmm. uh, the wise one shows up. The wise one is basically God in this game. Um, we don't know how powerful it is or, or the exact law behind it, but it's an immensely powerful being that is the guardian of the, the elemental stars. And um, the wise one will basically prevent any serious harm from coming to Veil, vale, but the, the volcano will still erupt. And it's obvious at this point, but uh, some people are asking who's in the lead. Currently, we have Bluezer in the lead, uh, just, just by a little bit. Um, and it looks like Future and Velissa are just barely behind him. Yeah, Blue's got about a 12, 15 second lead over Velissa last, last time I checked. There's maybe like three or four seconds between Velissa and um, Future, and Bowie's about another 20, 15, 20 seconds off the pace from, from Velissa. Uh, from uh, yeah, from Future, sorry. Um, even though there is, a, there is a difference in lead right now, it's pretty much meaningless. Um, it, everything can turn around on the blink of an eye at any moment. It's, it's really quite, quite something. The last dungeon in particular uh, has a high level of variance, and we'll talk, to that, we'll, we'll talk to that more at that point in the game, but just for some perspective, um, getting bad RNG in the last dungeon can add about 30 seconds per encounter, so the time difference right now is, is truly, truly minuscule. Yeah, if one of if uh, Bowie skips one encounter in the final dungeon, he is even, and that's just an encounter skip. It's not even that that hard to do. Um, but th that's the story of this run. Like the first boss fight that we're coming up to, which is Bandits, which is in probably 10, 15 minutes from now. Um, they have an enormous amount of RNG as well. Um, whether they heal or not can cause up to 30 seconds of deviates. That could easily close the gap here. If Blueza gets terrible RNG and everybody else gets normal RNG, we could have an even race after the first boss. Absolutely, yeah. It's funny, some of the bosses in this game don't necessarily pose a huge threat to wiping the party. However, what they can do is cause you to lose time. And when we are trying to go fast, that is, of course, not ideal. Yeah, um, the bandits actually are one of those bosses that can kill you. Um, well, they don't kill you, but they can kill people. Um, so Golden Sun uh, takes inspiration from games where reviving is very hard. It's not Final Fantasy. You can't just buy a phoenix down. Uh, revives are rare and scarce. Um, we get a total of three revives in the entire game. That is it. We do not get access to the ability to revive. That occurs at a higher level than we will get and we'll be relying on three revives to get us through the game. Some runners may opt to get a couple more, uh, but generally the, the route has worked in three revives, which is insane, really. Um, you can always go to a Sanctum and revive, but anytime you have to go to a Sanctum, you're losing 20, 30 seconds. Looks like Blues is just finishing up the interior and he's gonna come into Veil, vale, which is like, oh no, everything's erupting, we're all gonna die. Again. Um, which Basically, it's just key for more cutscenes, honestly. Um, <laughs> nothing else is going to happen. Mm -hmm. We have story time coming up with Isaac and Garrett soon in the uh, Veil Sanctum. Oh, yeah, they, they recap the events of Soul Sanctum in Grayscale. It's quite fun. As a runner, you really appreciate that cutscene because you don't have to press any buttons. It's, it's really nice. Absolutely. It's really nice. And there's also, we'll come up to it in a few minutes here, but there's an option at the end of that cutscene where they they basically do the classic JRPG thing and they're like, hey Isaac, we know that you're roughly 17 years old, but can you please save the world for us? <laughs> and then they give you the option to say yes or no. If you actually say no, the game ends there. It doesn't actually. You actually have to leave the Sanctum, but yes, there is a bad ending. Basically, if you say no and then uh, walk out of the Sanctum, the game says, uh, and the world drifted towards its fated destruction. And then it says, would you like to retry? <laughs> um, so at least it doesn't make you do everything again. You can just basically hop, hop right back in and say yes to the question this time. Um, but it's pretty funny. We do have a, a meme category called bad ending, which basically races to that. Um, nobody plays that category anymore because it's, well, text smashing. <laughs> we really should play that, that category a little bit more because we are here for the intro and really nothing else. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, everybody runs that uh, on Japanese though, and uh, not many of us have Japanese cartridges. Ah, uh, fair enough. <laughs> I believe, actually, I think Bowie does. Bowie has a, a wonderful setup. If you've ever ca uh, caught his stream before, he has, I think, uh, an original, like, in the box still, 
of uh, Golden Sun, a Japanese version. Yeah, Bowie uh, recently took a trip to Japan, actually, and picked up a bunch of Golden Sun stuff, which was pretty cool. Um, for people who do know Bowie in chat, you'll know him as Mr. Camelot. He has... Uh, He's probably the world's largest Camelot fanboy. I, I'm very much happy to cede that to him, <laughs> um, given that I only play Golden Sun. And Camelot are the developers of this game and the Mario Sports titles. Uh, they have Mario Golf coming out soon, so I look forward to that. Um, but they do a really good job with their sports games, actually. The, uh, the Mario Tennis for GBA is actually using the same engine as Golden Sun, and it actually has RPG elements and is probably the best sports game on the GBA and probably the best sports game within like 10 years of its release or something. It was really well done. But they also do other games. They also do Shining Force uh, and uh, Bowie is very much known for his Shining Force. Shining Force 2 in particular. Um, and there's a couple other games, Shining the Holy Ark, Shining in the Darkness. There's a couple of reused assets. We'll probably point this out at the, at, at later on as well, but uh, yeah, all our runners are in the uh, Sanctum cutscene. We'll be here for a while which means that we're almost at the end of, uh, of uh, at least the Veil cutscenes. Agonizingly far away from the end, unfortunately. Um, it's like, this is like a four minute cutscene, I think four or five, plus another minute after this one. It's really quite, uh, quite horrific. <laughs> Bowie is chiming in in, uh, in Twitch chat saying, uh, well, he's a fan of Camelot. He's not a fan of the sports games. <laughs> he has played them before. Um, but yeah, he, he's a fan of their, their RPGs and uh, all, all of their old stuff um, on Sega Saturn and things like that. So once we get out of Vale, we'll be coming into our first uh, gym encounter where we, we get another lovely tutorial coming up, actually. Yeah, just when you thought Golden Sun couldn't give you more cutscenes, they find a way to give you more cutscenes. This time, it's the unskippable gym tutorial. Um, I don't want to talk too much about TLA, but I will say that TLA has a skippable gin tutorial, which is the best thing ever. Um, not in this game, I'm afraid. So we have, once, as soon as we leave Vale, uh, we will run into Flint, and then Flint will be like, oh, I can teach you how to use gin. Yay. And then we can spend another three minutes learning about gin and seeing some real top tier menuing while we're at it. Real, really, yeah, real, some real slow menuing. <laughs> Lightning fast. Lightning fast. What are you on about? <laughs> um, you know, Plexa, why don't we talk about how um, the, run, the run has kind of evolved over the last year, um, at least as far as um, PBs go. I remember when I first started in the community, the world record was probably a 43 or a 42. Yeah, so this category didn't get a lot of love until Bowie started doing serious runs of it. Um, then I picked up the category and started grinding it as well. Um, we got it down to a 340.37, if I recall correctly, a 36.37. And that stood for a while and everyone's like, oh, wow, 3.40, that's such an incredible time. Um, but sub sub 3.40 is like the, the holy grail. It's, can we get sub 3.40? And I, I was like, yeah, of course we can. Um, but everyone's kind of been chasing um, me in those times for a while. So the 340, I got that. And then Bowie came in and got a 345, and he got a 343, a 340. Uh, anyway, you came down, to, came down to a 343. Then I got a 339, and then Bluza entered the game. And then Bluza started to grind this game a lot as well. And he, he started to challenge for, for a top time as well. Um, by the time I think I'd gotten my 338, Bluza had taken second place on the leaderboard and, and was, I think, with a, a, a low 340. He he, had, he was ahead of Bowie. Um, then other people entered the game, Velissa, Future, and... and um, but it's really been me, Blue, and Bowie at the top for, for some time. Um, currently, as it stands, uh, the world record is 335.36 by myself. Uh, Bowie is in second place with, I believe, a 338.25. He got that last week. Uh, about. 72 hours ago, in fact, so uh, very, very hot off PB, very much in form. Bluezer is a little bit further back, 339.38. Uh, um, very much capable of a lower time, but a, a very good time nonetheless. Anything sub 340 is very, very strong. And also... Velissa um, currently has a 342. Uh, yes, sir, go ahead. I just also wanted to note that maybe uh, within the same week that Bowie got his most recent PB, the uh, 338, um, we, we mentioned this earlier, but not as many people were watching. Um, at the beginning, we mentioned that Bluezer and Bowie had a tie, I think down to, a, what was it, 11 frames? 
Yeah, it was an 11 frame difference, so they're very much going head for head, uh, blow for blow, neck and neck, very, 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 very close. That's just a really uh, amazing and a really hype story coming into this community race because there, there's actually such fierce competition between them. Yeah. And as I was saying, Velissa has a 342. She has been contending for 33, uh, 339s very recently. She's just been doing the uh, no cutscene version of this run, which does exist. It's called New Game Plus. Um, and Future got a 344 just this week as well. So everybody's very much in form. And Bluezer is the first person into the overworld straight into the Flint tutorial, where we get, uh, where, where our patience has been rewarded with more cutscenes. <laughs> I'm actually super proud of Future for getting the um, 345, the, the sub 345 time. That's a, a huge milestone for people. Yeah, he's uh, really come a long way. Uh, he has a three minute improvement, I think, over his old PB. He's uh, really come a long way. That means I need to catch up now, too. Come on, guys. Yeah, you're, you're dropping off the pace. You're dropping off the pace. <laughs> <laughs> right, we got three runners in the Flint tutorial. Bowie is not too far off. Um, we're basically learning how swapping these gin around between between your party members will change their class. Um, that can give you new abilities, it can give you a greater stat multipliers. Um, we don't really use this too much in this run, there's a couple exceptions to that. It, it's way, this uh, class changing feature is used significantly more in, in the other titles in the series. Um, we will, however, use summons and, and the, the gin to do things, so in Blues' stream right now, you'll see that uh, Flint has just been used to attack. It's like a, a 1.2 multiplier on a base attack, I believe. Um, and now he's going to use a summon, in this case Venus. It's a very strong AoE ability, well, strong for its, for its size. Um, and that'll scale up to an ability called Judgment, which we are going to see a lot of much later in the run. Mainly because it is the fastest fourth, fourth, fourth tier summon. Exactly, exactly. But there's some cool stuff that uh, Jin do for us beyond that too, like setting them, or I always get confused between setting and unsetting, but uh, your Jin will make you tankier, um, so you'll have more HP and more survivability when you're trying to use um, some of those riskier fleeing strategies. But also, the other thing that they'll do for us is they can, um, Lexa mentioned that they can increase your stats and multipliers, but what they can also do is just give you... Um, like more agility so that way you can alter the turn order of your party. So uh, I mentioned there's a lot of RNG and uh, well Bluza just had the first instance of bad RNG and Velissa, oh almost almost. So what our, what our uh, racers here are trying to do is they're trying to skip the encounter to Vault uh, which is the next town. No one got the skip either. Oh and oh, Velissa had, had Garrett die, that is so unfortunate, that is so unlucky. Basically, it is possible to get from the uh, Jin tutorial to Vault without an encounter. And every time you transition from a dungeon to a new dungeon, the uh, amount of steps that you've taken resets. So the time for the next encounter is reset back to zero. So if you make it to the town without the encounter, everybody missed it, what a shame. If you make it to the uh, town without the encounter, we call that an encounter skip. So in this case, everybody failed it. Uh, Bowie had the best RNG though, he got the first try flee, everybody else failed. Um, and Velissa has to even go to the Sanctum and revive, so that's a pretty significant time loss. Uh, it's really unfortunate. Very unlucky to have happen. Um, but like I said, something bad's going to happen to our runners. I just don't know when or how, <laughs> but it will happen. Loser's coming into the cutscene with Ivan, who is our third party member, our future third party member. Kind of a, a weird individual, that Ivan. Uh, he can actually read minds, and uh, we can... I believe that the, the main characters in the party can sense that because they are elemental adepts themselves. Correct. Uh, the lore is that if you're an adept, which is somebody who can wield these powers, you can see these powers being used. If you can't, then um, you can't see them, uh, which leads to some interesting instant, uh, interactions uh, and some wild inconsistencies in the plot, if you really think about it. But that's okay. <laughs> um, we'll complain about that at Colossa. <laughs> Uh, looks like Velissa is deferring the revive, that's fine. She will, she'll do it immediately after she gets Ivan. Uh, and you'll see a couple of our competitors picking up the nut from the box. So Bowie just picked up a nut. Um, the nut is an item which heals for 200. Uh, we pick up that nut specifically for the Satoros battle, which is the big major boss of the early game. Um, it 
basically gives a full heal on somebody at this point in the game and it's going to be really important to get through that fight without something bad happening so uh, I think all of our runners will pick it up I just believe blue gets it after this cutscene it's one of the unique quirks to his uh and his way of thinking Ivan in particular is a really great party member for a few reasons um he's very meme worthy um, the community has a Divin meme, which is basically um, because he's so squishy. Ivan will is probably the most likely party member to die, at least the way that we do the run. But um, the flip to that is that Ivan is also the fastest party member, so potentially the most valuable because we can outturn enemies. Yeah, not even potentially. He is the most valuable party member. Um, he makes this whole run work, basically. He is the definition of a glass cannon very fast, hits hard, ideally he's able to do stuff before anybody else can do anything, and then carries the run because of it. Uh, Blues is coming up to the bandit chase, this is pure RNG, sometimes they can uh, evade our grasp, but we have a pretty consistent setup that usually works, he's going to chase the guy there, yep, Blues comes back and successfully catches the purple bandit. Uh, Blues has the um, a very good technical strategy for that, I think all of our other runners are going to use a much more primitive strat, the strat that I use, um, which is basically run up and then run left. Whereas Blues is actually shepherding the, the bandit into the corner. That's just one of the things he does as, as one of these, as the strongest early game player in the community, even better than myself, like way stronger than myself. Something else that the um, players did here. Got it down. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Something that the players did, uh, it was very subtle. You may not have noticed it unless you're familiar with the run, but a lot of players deviated just slightly to pick up an item in a barrel called a mint. And what this is, is it's, a, it's an item that permanently increases someone's agility. And we'll definitely be using that later on, most likely on Ivan, but it's a very key item for the Saturos fight. Yeah, where people decide to use that mint will be interesting, so we will talk about that in a bit. Looks like everybody had a pretty good bandit chase, so no real time lost or gain there. But Bluezer is way out ahead, he's already starting to get to the bandits fight, so let's talk a little bit about that. Um, Ivan has an ability called Ray. Ray is very, very, very strong for this point in the game. Uh, he'll be our main source of DPS, and Garrett and I Isaac will chip in where they can with uh, Venus and Flare, Flare respectively. The bandits can heal. They have uh, an item called a Herb, which heals for 50 HP. The purple guys uh, can use that uh, willy-nilly and whenever they like. Ideally, they don't, but uh, they can. And the orange guy in the middle has two herbs, but he has to use his smoke bomb before he can use them. Um, the worst case scenario is four herbs, and if they all go on the orange guy, we're not going to have a good time. It's going to be a very painful split. Uh, and that will basically, uh, that could set blue way back if that happens. So you can see here, first turn, Ray, Flare, uh, Venus, Flare, Ray, and we'll see what the bandits do. They can defend, they can glower, they can attack, they can... Ooh. There's a herb, herb on the orange guy to begin with. That is tragic. So the right guy attacked, so Blues will probably end up attacking. Oh, he didn't. We discussed this, but uh, he, he could attack the guy on the right. Oh, he got the range. Nice. And the guy on the left is defending. That's super annoying. So Bluezer can have at most two her uh, three herbs from this fight now, depending on whether the orange guy decides to use a herb. And he's not using his smoke bomb, so Blues is going to get through this fight, fight with one herb. That is a very good fight. Well done, Blue. Early lead to Blizzard. Now we have Future and Velissa entering the fight. They'll do exactly the same strategy, and we'll see what they, they have going for them. And shoutouts to everyone performing. Smoke Bomb on Velissa's stream. That means herbs are in play on her stream. Very scary. Everyone's incredibly fast with the menus, as you can see now. This will be the first fight where it's really technical from the menus. And um, yeah, you'll just be able to see everyone's speed. Oh, he's coming out of this really quickly. Yeah, but he's getting lots of herbs, unfortunately. Uh, looks like... All right, Future got through Herbless, I believe. And Velissa is getting some herbs, and Garrett is in a really precarious situation. I'm surprised she hasn't healed. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully this ray kills. Oh, oh no, another herb. Oh, you another herb, see that's painful. Yeah. Future getting out there with the, the great yeah, Future look. RNG. Yeah, Future had really good RNG on this fight. Um, was it, Bowie has had pretty good RNG. Uh, he got a couple herbs, but they went on the good targets. Was that a, a, another herb on oh, Velissa? Velissa is still going. Uh, yeah, Velissa got three herbs, I believe. Goodness. And very, very, very close to death there. 
Um, on two characters. The, the orange bandit has an ability called Slice. Uh, slice can proc, doing double damage, and whenever that happens, you're basically dead. Um, but very, very lucky. Um, but as you can see, lots of RNG. What we had happen there was uh, Velissa come in second, and she's leaving fourth. Uh, so very unlucky, um, but there's plenty of run left. There's plenty of opportunity. That's just literally the first point of the game where RNG is like very obviously uh, causing time gain or, so, or loss or gain. The major next part of the game that we'll be coming into is Goma Cave, and at that point, you'll start seeing how big of a, of a variance random encounters will cause for our runners. Yeah, um, basically, the strategy in Goma Cave is we want to get Isaac to level 3. I don't know if anybody took an encounter in Soul Sanctum. I wasn't paying enough attention to see that, but I don't think anybody did which means that everybody will be looking to pick up a high experience encounter so that Isaac and Garrett will jump to level 3. Garrett being level 3 is a bonus, you really only need Isaac level 3. Uh, this level threshold is important for the Forge fight. Forge is a Ginny of the Mars variety, and it's our first instance of a battle to Jin. Forge is one of the scariest early game enemies there is. It's a three turn fight and he can kill people um, and he can also run away, which is also terrible. So the runners will be running through, uh, going to Goma Cave, trying to get to Forge as fast as possible, and will flee from anything that is low experience, but if there is a high experience encounter, they will take it, they'll get their levels, and then flee for the rest of the dungeon. That's a, something really important you know that you noted there, Plexa, is um, Forge being able to flee. This is true for all Jin that we fight throughout the entire game. Every single Jinny can flee from us in, if it's a combat encounter. And when that happens, we will have to reset the screen most often um, to get the encounter again because we can't complete the game without the, the, um, the gins that we're going after. Yeah, and I mean, now that you bring it up, um, this run will collect exactly 18 gin. Oh, 18? 18 gin, yes. <laughs> exactly 18. Um, we get the first 16 to power us up to get access to the highest level of summons. And the last two gin we get are just hilariously busted in an unbelievable way. Um, so we'll, we'll note those when we get to them. All our runners were picking up the Water of Life from the Mera Vault, which he offers us after defeating the bandits. Um, the Water of Life is a revive item. It allows us to revive a character. We will not be using it to revive. We will be selling it and then buying a lot of armor and equipment. It's actually worth quite a lot of gold. And the armor... Yeah, 2,250. Yeah. It's a lot. The equips that we get from it are going to be crucial in um, navigating the next split of the game successfully, allowing us to, you know, take more risks with uh, taking fleas, but also with the Saturos boss fight coming up later on. Yeah, I think optimally you skip them, but practically speaking, you you will lose more time by skipping it in this category. The manipulation runs never got the water of life because you never needed it, but for these runs, you definitely do benefit from having those extra defense stats on you. Okay, it looks like um, Blue got two encounters on the way to the Goma Cave, which is where he's at right now. Um, you can usually get uh, two encounters to the cave. You can get three, you can get one. Felissa also got two encounters, that's a bit of a shame. Um, but it's another way that you can gain or lose time here, the number of encounters that you get and whether or not you flee or not. Looks like all of our runners are having a really tough time running away, that's a bit of a shame. Mm -hmm. um, but it looks like Vliss is definitely having the worst run time of it. And of course, Future uh, is... Oh, I've got the mix up, sorry. The future is the one that had a bad time in the overworld and Vliss is uh, getting the good RNG. Vliss got the one encounter. Yeah, and she Excellent. also got the first turn flee on it. Yeah, very nice, very nice. Making up a lot of that time there, very helpful. Sometimes, Especially after that really tragic bandits fight. Truly, yeah. Sometimes it won't even matter if you get a lot of encounters. Um, of course, it's not ideal, but if you get the first turn, first turn flee on all of them, it's, uh, it's fairly insignificant. Yeah, I think as a runner, you're, you want to see as few encounters as possible, but like, actually, time speaking, you would prefer to get a lot of encounters with a first try flee than to get few encounters but have none of them be fleas. Because every time you fail, it basically adds another encounter's length of time to that battle. Um, so, obviously, you prefer to have good of both, but if I had to pick, I'd definitely prefer to have uh, fleas. Looks like Blues is first into the cave, and Ooh. he got a very good encounter first up. Yeah, so he's going to take this encounter and then flee from the rest of the dungeon. 
exactly. So the two will hits is just enough to get Isaac and Garrett to level three. And now he's in the perfect position just to flee for the rest of the dungeon. You love to see that encounter early, because um, otherwise you're getting to the end of the dungeon and you're like, do I need to take another high experience encounter? Or, or do I need to take an encounter, like a low experience encounter? Or do I take the risk and, and get that last encounter or not? The, the other thing, and um, correct and, me. And first try flee as well. The other thing, correct me if I'm wrong, Clint, but getting that encounter, the perfect encounter early on in the dungeon to secure that level also makes the rest of the dungeon easier because you have a higher flee chance. Correct. It's not much. It's about 5% extra, but it helps. And Blue just got caught by surprise and has failed the first fleet. And oh Ooh. no. Oh no. Okay, almost. Almost. Scary. Looks like Future got a good encounter as well. Ghost Skeleton is more than enough. Bowie is having a tough time running from the skeleton. Um, skeletons are scary. Bone charge can kill things. <laughs> so, what can happen here is members of your party c can die because you're taking a lot of risks with your with your fleeing and you're ideally trying to go fast so you're a little bit more um liberal so to speak on the kinds of risks you're willing to take so flex what can happen here if uh, one of the party members dies uh you're taking a long trip back to vault to revive them or you are risking a very risky forge fight uh, I would expect most runners to take the forge fight and abuse saving. Uh, not usually something they'd have the luxury of doing, but in this category, uh, this this race, they'll be able to do that. Um, we just had a really unfortunate situation happen on Bowie's stream, by the way. He got the double will head encounter, just like Blizzard did, except he didn't have Venus prepared. Ooh. Without having Venus prepared, he cannot clear that encounter quickly, so he had no choice but to flee and is still looking for that high experience encounter. Really difficult position for Bowie. He's nearing the end of the dungeon. And Bluzer is just coming up on Forge now, just across this log is Forge. Um, and the point of Forge here is that Forge can use Blast. Blast can kill people, um, so we have to be very careful about if Ivan gets damaged. If Ivan gets any damage at all here, he's going to have to heal Ivan. And straight up, he uses Blast on everybody, so Brutal. Bluzer will need to heal Ivan here, and then um, it should be fine from here. There shouldn't shouldn't be able to do anything else except to flee, which would be bad. Oh, it tried. Oh, he tried to flee, actually. It tried. Oh, oh very lucky. That's basically a free turn for Bluzer, but if that had succeeded, uh, that would have been catastrophic. Absolutely. Oh, and he didn't use... He didn't use Venus, so he added an extra turn to the Forge fight. That is so unlucky. Oh, he's just coming Oh, he had on to it. concede a low experience encounter. That's so unfortunate. And it looks like everybody's coming to the Forge fight around the same time. They're all about 20 seconds behind Bluza. This race is already so tight. Oh, we have a blast on Velissa. That's fine. It didn't target Ivan, so she's actually okay. She'll just defend this out and um, kill. Um, Bowie had to heal. It looks like Bowie's getting through Forge just fine. I think I saw a heal on Future and... as well. Yeah, the heal is pretty normal. But Bluzer is the first person to leave Goma Cave. That is really nice. Bowie, everybody gets forged roughly the same time except Bluzer, who is Perfect. about 30 seconds ahead, I want to say. And none of them um, had a forge flee from them, which is the true victory of the day. Yeah, forge fleeing is such a pain. Uh, the only worst thing is getting caught by surprise, but yeah, it's really unfortunate. That would have been really unfortunate, sorry. Um, and Bluzer is into the shopping. So Bluzer has sold his Water of Life. He's buying an, uh, a few set pieces of armor to make sure that we take as little damage as possible from attacks, for physical attacks at least, and a couple weapons for Isaac and Garrett so they can actually deal damage. Uh, and it looks like Future slightly ahead of Bowie Ooh, coming out. Five, and it looks frames. like the time difference is actually more like 45 seconds. 45 seconds between Blue, Bowie, and Future, and another 5 seconds with Velissa. So a very, very tight race. Uh, Bowie has actually made significant strides. Remember, he was 40 seconds behind Bluza coming out of Soul Sanctum. Big, big, big time gains from Bowie. He's catching up. And huge props to Future for, um, you know, having such a good time still. Uh, so Bluzer is coming up on the next gen that we're going to get. The next gen is called Gust. We don't have to fight Gust. Gust is a gen of the Jupiter variety. Um, and Gust is one of the more important gen to this category. So the TAS actually skips this gen, but no other category can afford to skip it. Uh, so a while ago, Cause was telling you all about how gen can manipulate your classes and stats, and sometimes we use it to manipulate turn order. Uh, Gust 
being a Jupiter gin and Jupiter having a natural high inclination towards agility uh, basically means we're going to use Gus to put on Mia in particular to speed her up and sometimes we'll put it on Isaac to speed him up so they can get their actions off before anything else. So very important gin to pick up for this category uh, even though the task is able to skip it and cheat. <laughs> the specific split that they're all on right now is one of the first splits as well that has a huge degree of variance because there's a lot of potential encounter skips, a lot of RNG with your fleeing. If you're lucky, you're going to get a lot of first turn flees. If you're unlucky, you're going to be fleeing for a few rounds and it all adds up. Yeah, so Blue here just missed his first encounter skip. The first encounter skip is a 50-50. Uh, this one here is only a 30% chance to get. He, he missed it, but that's that's normal. But the real killer here for Blue is that he's not getting first try fleas, so he's losing time every time this happens. It's very normal to see up to a minute of deviation on this split, and by this split, I mean up to entering Goma uh, Bilibin Cave, which is the next major dungeon. Blue actually gets two encounters on the way to Kalima Forest. That is uh, truly, truly tragic. What was the flea on his second encounter? Very unlucky. Did he? I, I wasn't, I didn't catch the flea. I just saw that he got two encounters and I was surprised. Uh, oh. Well, we got a kid. Oh, oh, Future almost got the skip. They're all like very much neck and neck. Velissa got Velissa, the skip. And Velissa got the skip. Velissa, and you can see um, Future didn't get the skip. Velissa got the skip. They were not even. Now they're basically equal. This game is cruel. Um, well, every every little micro instance of RNG like that can just swing the run back and forth. It, right now, it's very clearly swingy, as you can see the times deviate between our four runners. But when we go deeper into the game, you're really going to see things deviate by a, a, a ton. Um, this is just child's play for now. <laughs> Fortunately, Blue's getting the worst luck, so it's basically going to contract the race down and we're going to have a really, really <laughs> tight tight race. Maybe uh, during this cutscene, we can talk about some of the player choice um, player choice uh, things that are going to be coming up soon. Mainly, where you put Gust in your party. Um, I think that it's generally understood that Isaac is the right spot now, but for a while there, we thought Garrett was the right spot to put Gust and also who we use the mint on. Um, the Mint will come up uh, probably at Mercury Lighthouse. Um, what we're doing right now, actually, is we are getting a cutscene in Colima Forest um, because it's faster to get this cutscene here than it is in Colima. The whole reason we care about this cutscene is because we want to pick up Granite, another gin. It's a Venus gin that gives us access to Ramses. Ramses is the tier two summon for Venus, which basically means it deals a ton of damage, more damage than anything else at this point in the game can deal out. Um, Granite has some other nice side effects that we'll touch on later, but for the main purpose of picking it up, it allows us to clear encounters significantly faster. Um, I did a back of the napkin math calculation at some point and realized that picking up picking up Ramses now saves all of the t all of the time you spend collecting Ramses at this point of the game is made up before you even enter the Satoros fight, which is insane. It, it, it's such an insane speed up in the 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 time it takes to clear an encounter. Absolutely. Now this is where agility comes in. This is where agility comes in. With Gust on Isaac, it allows him to outspeed a double ooze encounter, which is very important, which is one of the most common types of encounters that people will, will touch on. Um, whereas Gust on Garrett provides additional safety. It means that you can clear some of the more dangerous encounters uh, without them taking action. So it's a bit of a trade-off, um, but generally right now it's accepted that you want to outspeed things rather than be defensive when it may not uh, matter. So Blue has entered what is called the Kalimba Basement. Uh, he has got an insane oh. rate. That is an absurdly good rate. And he gets the first turn That is please. a very, very late encounter. That is a huge time save for Blue. Wow. Um, and he'll pick up Granite. And what I was going to say before he got amazing RNG was you usually see uh, three encounters in the basement here. Uh, it can be as bad as five normally. I have had eight personally. We'll see what he gets um, on the way back. <laughs> just good. Yeah, look, everybody else is getting an encounter at the normal mm -hmm. time. Uh, and Blue, but Blue is getting some amazing RNG yeah. right now. This is really good. Both of his encounters in the basement so far have been first turn fleas. Oh, and is he going to get... Oh, so close. Almost. Almost the perfect basement there for Blue. That is that is ridiculous. And Bowie picked up an encounter right before Granite, so he's mm. kind of lagging behind, but uh, Future and Velissa will pick up an encounter on the way back very shortly as well, so they'll even out a little bit. Oh, the red apple. Blue's is opting for the apple. 
He's opting, uh, opting for the apple. Now, the apple is a stat boosting item like the mint. It gives plus attack. Uh, runners may elect to get this if they want to secure some damage ranges. I personally don't think it's worth it for world record attempts, but in a race, the safety is very good. It's only a five second investment, uh, well worth it. Loser. Bowie is unfortunately getting quite destroyed at the moment. Loser also got the encounter skip on the way back, and oh, that was close. He almost got the second encounter skip to Billabin. It looks like Future is the first, uh, second person out of the basement, sorry. Uh, and Bowie is just, oh, he is just not having a good time. That is so unfortunate. This game is mean. It looks like Velissa has gone for the apple. It looks like Future skipped the apple. I said at the beginning of the split, um, you're, this is the w major one that you're going to start noticing huge variance because of the random encounters. Um, go McCave too, honestly, but this one's, a, this one's a big one because of the potential for encounter skips, and I think that that's coming to fruition now. You see Bluezer entering the Billabin Cave entrance. That is a monster split. What that that made up everything that happened in Goma Cave and more. He is that is quite an advantage. He's attained here. He's the first person to Billabin Cave, and that's this Billabin Cave is the first place in this game where we switch our strategy from flee to fight. Uh, I know Bluezer will flee some large encounters, uh, but generally the, the the strat here is use Ramses, use Ray, and kill things. Future isn't too uh, far. We need behind to get him. experience for Satoros. Sorry, future isn't too too far behind him. Maybe an encounter? No, um, it, it, it's deceptively far away. Oh, Bluezer has a quad. Ooh. He normally will flee this in a world record attempt, but he is taking the quad. This is very dangerous. Um, it looks like he got lucky though. Oh no, he, he didn't get the outspeed. Okay, that's fine. He, he cleared the encounter just fine. It's th that, the, the quads can be dangerous if they gang up on one person, but they fortunately spread the damage around a little bit. It looks like uh, Future is the first person, second person into the cave. Bowie is just entering the cave. Everybody looks like they're going with the Gust on Isaac Strat today, which is, the, as I said, the currently accepted best play for this area. Future actually had a pretty safe one mob encounter that he took the flea to try and get away from. Bowie, on the other hand, is uh, taking the, the fight. Yeah. Looks like Blues is into Emil Overworld. Yeah, even more scarier encounters here, but single bear, that's no problem. The, the, the double bear encounter is the one you don't want to see. That one's pretty scary. Uh, the trolls in the cave, which which is what Bowie has, and the gnomes. Gnomes and trolls are just really awful. Gnomes outspeed us, so they'll always get their actions off, which always makes for slow fights. So really unfortunate encounters for Bowie. Um, yeah, he's going to have to do something um, miraculous to make up some time here. He is really he is really feeling the wrath of RNG. Bluezer is getting the dream RNG. Uh, triple slime, perfect, great experience, no actions, just super free. Mm -hmm. That's a huge part of why we put Gust on Isaac right now. Exactly, so that encounter specifically, which is very common to show up. And Bowie just got a third encounter in the oh. cave. That is so unfortunate. And there's nothing he can do. He can't risk running from this fight. The gnomes and the ghoul are just very, very dangerous enemies. So he just, he has to take it. He'll be okay on experience. There's no experience issues he'll run into anymore. But that's, that's a pretty big time sink. As you can see, he slipped back to last place. I wouldn't like... Uh, and Bluezer is first person into Emil. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Lost Cap? Woohoo! <laughs> so the Lost Cap rate is of what Blue's coming up to right here. We have to push it onto the ice pad below uh, to get to the one of the uh, one of the Mars gin, but we don't actually need to push it. We just have to have our move Psy energy connect with it. And I think that the reason behind that is because the only way that it's able to be pushed is to the left. And so when the game reads that move interacts with um, the snowman there, it just All right, I have to I have to cut you off. I have to cut you off. Oh. Bowie is at a very critical moment right now. Oh. Garrett has died and he's got a quad. If Bowie doesn't flee now he is to, he's gonna have a very long walk back oh oh that is tragic oh no oh that is the worst possible thing he was in such an unwinnable situation um he had had garrett die on a previous encounter and there was nothing he could do he, he had to he had to commit to the flea uh, a quad like that I, they've claimed my runs in the past that is just so so unfortunate there is yeah, Bowie's got a, a mountain ahead of him to climb. Unfortunately, he needs some bad RNG to, to curse our other runners. Uh, otherwise, he's just, that's like a three minute time loss or something. He is very, very, very far behind, unfortunately. Bowie's got some solid end game and mid game potential though, so I wouldn't count him out completely. Um, there's a lot of bad things that could happen to Bluezer and the other runners, but uh, it would need to be a, 
there's a lot of things that we need to happen for this to, to come around. Yeah, he, he, he really needs some, some miracles here, unfortunately. Um, but if there's someone that we can count on for miracles, it's Bowie. So unfortunately, we'll have to leave him where he is for the time being as everybody else is uh, moving on to uh, Mercury Lighthouse. Uh, so, so Bluzer is first person to approach Mercury Lighthouse. Mercury Lighthouse, we pick up out. Oh, he's dis dis a retreat. He overmatches. Oh dear. Um, so, uh, Mercury Lighthouse is where we pick up our fourth character, Mia. She is very important to the speed run. Um, and uh, we do our first instance of a retreat warp. So, retreat warp is basically the only glitch we get to use. It's a glitch where if you have retreat bound to a hotkey. Uh, and you use it and it fails, you basically are in a state where you can wrong warp. Now I know the speedrun community likes its whole um, imagine a bus analogy, so I'm gonna take, take that and try to explain the retreat glitch using the bus. Well, in this case, a bus station. What the retreat glitch does is, if imagine you're at a bus station, you're like, I, I need to find bus 52. So you, you get your map out, you go find where terminal, where, where bus 52 is leaving from, which station is it leaving from, you go to that station, you get on the bus. Excellent. What the retreat glitch does is it changes the map. So instead of uh, you thinking you've got the right map, uh, you've got a different map and you go to a different 52. So, okay, you go to 52 and you get on a bus, it's the wrong bus. The bus takes you somewhere completely different. That's how the retreat glitch works. It changes the underlying area without you even moving anywhere. And then you're looking up doors as if you were on a different map. So it's a pretty powerful glitch. It's going to allow us to skip significant portions of Mercury Lighthouse and a couple and a couple dungeons later on as well. So very, very, very important. It actually makes the Mercury uh, Lighthouse this, this is, incredibly short. Yes, yes. Basically, we're going to see three screens of Mercury Lighthouse of proper dungeon, that is. And then uh, we're up straight up to the top of the lighthouse. Bowie's an Emil now, so he's uh, not doing too bad on catching up. Yeah, he had a pretty fortunate run back. Uh, very lucky. Um, but he, again, he's got his work cut out for him, uh, I, I believe, but it's it's a tough run. So Bluzer is about to do the retreat glitch. He has six PP, so he's using move to go down to four. He's going to use retreat. It's going to fail. He's going to run through this door, and bam, he is not where he came from. He is deep into the dungeon, right near, conveniently, where we get the gin from. He's putting Gust on Mia, as we flagged earlier. That's going to allow Mia to outspeed almost everything, which is super helpful. You see he's using the mint oh, and the he's, apple, too. He's he's committed the mint to Ivan, uh, man after my own heart. Yeah, I, I'm team always mint Ivan. Other people disagree with me. Uh, Bowie likes to mint Isaac if he can, so he tries to hold the mint if he, if he can. Uh, that, that mint's basically going to allow uh, Ivan to outspeed Satoros consistently. Um, otherwise, you need level 7 to do that, which we don't always get. This Harpy uh, Siren encounter is one of the slower ones. There's a great deal of RNG in Mercury Lighthouse concerning the types of encounters you get. Some of them can take three actions, others can take one action. So it's just complete RNG what you get, and um, velissa has got the double Harpy and is barely managing to clear that as well, so very lucky. Mm. The Triple Cuddle. The Triple Cuddle is the best encounter you can get. It's They do nothing and they die really quick, so very, very lucky there. The Future has the Double Siren. Double Siren is one of the worst encounters you can get um, because they are faster than Ivan and they have an ability called uh, that'll like, make you go to sleep. And speaking of which, oh, it doesn't lucky. proc. If sleep procs, you're in for a bad time. Yeah, really bad time. Essentially, what's a... Blue is coming up to the sleep fight. Go ahead. What sleep can really do for you and why it's so dangerous is because they can outspeed your party members and essentially put someone to sleep who was committed to summoning for the encounter that turn essentially making the fight one or two turns longer. So Bluzer is doing the Sleet fight, which is a Mercury Gin, the first Mercury Gin that we, we battle. Um, this Gin is notorious for being annoying, um, mm -hmm. but Bluzer got through that fight without any issue because he took the apple, which removes any possibility of annoyance unless you get caught by surprise. So Bluzer's um, basically gearing up now to hit, hit the top of the lighthouse. Um, he does need to retreat, so he'll just do a quick trick to get his PP back. And then he's on his way to fight Satoros. Looks like Velissa's entering the sleep fight. Um, looks like she did some... Oh, she set Gust on Mia. She got very lucky. Oh, did she, though? Mm. Oh, she misses the damage range as well. Uh-oh. Velissa could be in some trouble She even now. threw that's, in the extra attack concerning. that missed. Oh, that's so lucky. That's so lucky. It tried to flee, but it failed. Oh, wow. Gosh. So fortunate. 
and Future is coming into the fight without the apple, uh, at, and he's using a, a oh, backup strike. Sweat. Oh, but Sleet runs away. Unfortunate. This is the, so he's got to reset the room and take that fight again. This is the first instance that we're seeing of a Jin successfully fleeing. Yeah, it, the, the Jin flees get more and more impactful as the game goes on. Um, right now, that's an annoyance, but it's it's a time loss nonetheless. So Bluezer is entering the Satoros fight, um, the big in uh, the big boss of the early game, basically. Um, everything we've done to this point has basically been in preparation for this boss. Uh, it's compulsory boss. It's required to set story flags that allow us to complete the game. Um, so there's no way around this fight. Uh, Satoros would be a very, very difficult fight. He is much stronger than any of our party members, um, but he has a fatal flaw, and that is that he's a pattern-based boss. <laughs> Do you want to explain what a pattern-based boss is, of uh, course? Yeah, absolutely. So basically, Satoros is going to follow the same pattern of attacks. He will do, a, a, um, the options are attack, heat flash, which is like a powered up physical attack. Um, he can do fireball, which is an AOE, and eruption, which is another AOE, although a little bit stronger and more dangerous. Um, Satoros always does the same attack pattern. However, where we enter the fight is always in a different spot. And so we are basically going to be watching what Satoros does. And based off of his actions, if he does eruption turn one, we know exactly where he is in his turn order. If he does anything else, we'll have to wait until turn two to figure out exactly where he is and then adapt our strategy accordingly. Yeah, so the, the main thing here is that eruption is powerful enough to instantly kill anyone in Loser's party at the moment. Um, so we need to have some kind of protection up. So Granite, that gin we picked up in Kalima, has this ability to give us a 50% damage reduction party-wide. So we're going to open with Granite and get some actions off, and then we'll see what happens. If it's turn one eruption, absolutely fine. But if it's an attack, that means eruption could be coming, so he will defend. The other really cool thing... So we thing... first turn up... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, well, one of the really cool things about Granite in, in terms of turn order is that when you use Granite, it doesn't matter what the agility of your party member is. It is always a priority. It will always go first. Yeah, priority gen are very, very important. We'll cover those in a little bit as we as we are getting into the Satoros fight. Satoros opens with Heat Flash. That is potentially okay. Um, it could either be a, an attack or Fireball coming out of this. Uh, fireball would be bad. Attack would be attack also nice. kind of bad. It's now Eruption, so he has to defend. And um, Ivan will tank it, so he's fine. He just has to defend the Eruption. There's no way around it. But because we can predict that very powerful ability, we're able to successfully navigate it and it mitigates a ton of the power of Satoros. So now Blue should be fine. As long as he inputs correctly, he knows where he is in the, in the fight. He can heal people appropriately. He knows the damage ranges and all of Satoros' abilities, and he'll be absolutely fine. Looks like Felissa also got a heat flash start as well. Loser's doing a good job of healing. And she is on the exact same pattern, except she is in a different situation. Garrett is now in danger of dying to eruption um, if it gets targeted on her, uh, on him. Sorry. Ooh, close. And very lucky, targeted Ivan instead. Very, very good. But we've actually made strides in catching up to the rest of the runners, considering the misfortune he experienced earlier. He's just coming into the Saturos fight now. Yeah, he's still a bit behind. This is a long cutscene. Uh, Future has a fireball start. Um, there is a really nasty... If, if, if there's a nasty pattern here, if, if Satoros attacks, it's actually the slowest pattern that he can give. Uh, there's the heat flash. Heat flash, okay. That should be fine. That means next attack is a, a next ability is attack, then eruption. So uh, Future will just have to prepare for eruption and then it'll be absolutely fine. Felissa is in control. Future will be in control very shortly. Um, Bluezer is making great strides to conquering this fight. The hardest part about this fight is managing the healing in your party members and doing so without hesitation. Knowing who to heal at the exact moment will save you so much time in this boss fight. Yeah, all of our runners here today know the damage ranges. They know what if a heat flash will kill, if an attack will kill, and because we know what the next action is, uh, once we get the pattern down, uh, we, we can always mitigate the risk. We can double heal if we need to. And we can defend if we need to, and it's all blue fine. Blue finished up. Blue's has to tore us down. Okay, and Bowie is just starting the fight, so 
He's got a bit to go. Looks like Velissa and Future are going through the motions. Looks like they will they'll be finishing up shortly as well. Also, shout outs to this amazing boss soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, the Sosaurus theme is one of the, the classic Golden Sun themes, one of the best themes in the series. Uh, they they even remixed it, included it in Dark Dawn, which was a, a good touch, even though I disagree with the bells, but that's uh, that's my personal problem. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of controversial uh, opinions within the Golden Sun community. Yeah, we do, we do. Uh, <laughs> Velissa has Sotoros down. She is coming in second. Uh, pretty strong recovery from her. You may recall she was lagging behind after the bandits fight. Um, she's done very well to recover. Absolutely. She was in last place, I believe, right after the bandits fight, and now she's come up to second. Exactly. Huge strides. And it looks like uh, Future is coming up on the kill here as well. Usually you'll only summon uh, Venus with Ivan if you're going for a kill. And there we go, Nereid, and down Central Roscoe's Nereid is our tier 2 Mercury summon. Basically Ramses, but for Mercury, uh, which is the water alignment, um, but Nereid is not nearly as good as Ramses. Ramses is uh, basically an instant ability, um, whereas Nereid is, uh, well, quite laggy. So we just got Bowie. I didn't catch where Bowie is in the pattern. That looks like Heat Flash. Did he get attack Heat Flash by chance? I missed it too. Yeah, we were all focused on everybody else. I think he got attack Heat Flash, which means that... No, he can't have had that. Hmm. I don't know what he has, but I know what's coming next. Should be a Fireball. Let's see where it targets. Yeah, I think he had attack Heat Flash Fireball. So attack Heat Flash Fireball is one of the fastest patterns you can get, so I think he's he should be very much in control at this point. Should be able to guide this one home and uh, shouldn't be too too much drama. Ivan here is actually unnaturally tanky because we set the Mars Ginny on him. We never see Ivan being tanky yeah, throughout really... the rest of the game. But in this fight, he's, he's able yeah, to survive. Yeah, it's a really, really great thing here. It's a really great thing because we actually exploit the fact that the Mars class is really tanky. Uh, we have two Mars Gym, which puts Ivan into the level 2 Mars class for the Jupiter Adepts. And that makes him A, faster than Satoros, B, bulky as heck. Like, the dude can tank, face tank an eruption at level 7. No other party member can, that includes Garrett. Um, so Ivan is actually the tank in this fight, that's why he's still in the middle of the party. We'll eventually move him to the sides to mitigate damage. Uh, but. Yeah, the, the miracle of the of the class system just gives us so much more flexibility. Looks like Bowie's just about to clear clear out the Satoros fight. And Very nice. he's down. Awesome. So I believe this will be a good point for us to initiate a, a little bit of a break. Um, I believe that GDQ is going to be running um, some breaks here. And yeah, all of the runners will be paused for now. Yes, uh, we'll be able to take a small five-minute break. That way everyone can kind of get up, stretch around, get some water, things along those lines. Just a couple of announcements real fast. That Summer Games Dunquick 2021 online is going to be July 4th to the 11th. I believe we do have another Golden Sun at this Summer uh, Games Dunquick online as well. That'll be fun. But the games list is out now, and prize submissions are now open. So you can go to gamesdonequick.com to find out about submitting prizes for the event. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube and would like to support our live content, please consider checking out our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash GDQ. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe to any Twitch channel of your, of your choice every month for free. Please consider using your Prime Gaming account to subscribe to the GDQ Twitch channel. Once again, we'll be taking a small break to get, have, make everyone get up, stretch, get some water. Things along those lines. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our 20th anniversary Golden Sun race. My name is Midnight Vesper, and I am your host. Just a couple quick announcements before we get things underway. Once again, Summer Games Done Quick 2021 online is going to be July 4th to the 11th. Games list is out now, and the prize submissions are open as well. You can go to gamesdonequick.com to find out all about submitting prizes for the event. Also, don't forget that Frame, that frame Fatales, the all-woman speedrunning event, will be returning on August 15th to 21st with the Flame Fatales. 
Game submissions will be open from May 18th to May 25th. Go to gamesdonequick.com slash frame for for more information on the upcoming event. And with that, I do believe we're going to go ahead and toss it back to our amazing commentators for this amazing Golden Sun race. Take it away, Plexa, and good cause. Yeah, thanks so much. So we're coming back into the Golden Sun race, and I believe that I could... Plexa, do we want to start counting them down? Okay. Awesome. So, so yep, we got people running. When we when we took our break, Bluezer had been in the lead, and Bowie uh, had just finished up the Soturos fight. Velissa and Future are somewhere between those two right now. Yeah, exactly. Um, we just uh, took a little bit of time to correct uh, for Bowie's false start and uh, a little bit of the time differences from beginning. That's why some of the text boxes may have been different, but there's been no substantial uh, gain or time. It's just been a, just been a correction. Yeah, awesome. And uh, I just want to also recognize the huge audience that we have in the in, in, on Twitch today. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching, everyone. We love this game, and I hope that you love it as much as we do. Fantastic. Um, like, we've been uh, checking some of the splits in the break just to see how the runners are faring, and uh, we've been made aware that Blues actually had a 119 Satoros. Now, that means nothing to most people, but let's just say that 119s are a milestone in the community. Uh, 120 Satoros is kind of like par. Anytime you have a 119 Satoros, it means you're in a very, very, very good run. Uh, it is possible to get 118. Uh, the world record for Satoros is 118.08, actually. Um, but 18s are very, very rare. Um, so having a 119 in a race setting is, is incredible. So Bluezer is he's on fire. He's way out ahead. He is, he is zooming. Not only is he executing on everything perfectly, but he also has the RNG gods on his side right now. For the moment. Yeah, he's, for the moment, for the moment. It will change, it will change. <laughs> Um, so as everybody's coming out of Satoros, uh, some people will be electing to take uh, extra, uh, extra experience. Some people will be playing for level 8 Ivan. If you get level 8 Ivan, you can use an ability called Avoid all the way through to Treachery. Um, Avoid suppresses encounters completely. It kind of works like Repel in Pokemon. If you are above the level threshold, you don't get any encounters. If you're below the threshold, it does nothing. So it looks like Velissa and Future are both opting to take experience to try get level 8. This will allow them to skip encounters for uh, all of Kalima Forest and some parts of Treachery itself. Bluezer, on the other hand, is not taking any encounters. He is committing to level 7 Ivan. He is going to get more encounters, but we believe this to be worth it as long as you're not taking more than one encounter. And this is a, a recent uh, strategy change, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. It's been a little bit, uh, it was a little bit different when I was running in the community around the beginning of the year, but this uh, this little change does impact slightly the Tret boss fight that we're going to be coming into in about five minutes. Yeah, it's, it's something where we realized that perhaps uh, a void isn't as strong as we thought it was, and we, we redid the calculations on the math. Uh, we realized that... Um, Fleeing from things is not so bad after all, and taking encounters takes a lot of time. So, um, oh, actually, Future is going to pick up an extra encounter here because he can't risk fleeing unless for somebody will die. Uh, so that's pretty unfortunate, um, but it's the correct play. He also gets level eight off that encounter, so he is good to avoid through threat. Looks like Velissa is way out of hitch. I think she only took one encounter in the overworld, so she is she, she is zooming. She's almost caught up to Bluza, uh, who is just continually getting encounters. They're actually on the same screen. What a fight back from Velissa. What a what a massive overworld segment. I missed most of it. <laughs> yeah, I was watching Blue at the same time. The, the, the small things like that can have such a huge impact, and it's um a little difficult to watch all four of them at the same time, but <laughs> that's why there's two of us. Exactly. It's, but uh, yeah, it looks like uh, Velissa has made up a ton of time. She is very, she is, yeah, like she, she literally on the same puzzle at the moment. Future has got a ton of terrible encounters, unfortunately. He is well, well off the pace. He can make up some time with a void, um, but it remains to be seen how bad the encounters are for Blue and Velissa. Blue is, is, is clearly having a tough time with these encounters. You know, the RNG is it's the RNG. Um, but don't know if it's going to be enough to make up the difference that the, the investment that Future made to get level 8 will be worth it. So we'll have to wait and see if that pays off. Bowie looks like he's committing to level 7 as well. Uh, probably, again, the, the objectively right play here. 
Something that we haven't really noted so far either is that on puzzle rooms, you won't get uh, any encounters. Yeah, um, knowing where there aren't any encounters on a screen is really important in this game. Uh, later on, we use that information to recover our gin when we're doing summons. At this point in the game, it's just useful to know where you can uh, be suboptimal or just not worry about encounters for a screen, don't have to heal, that kind of stuff. And Bluzer's actually in so Bluzer's the first now. person to Tritri. <laughs> And he is off to get Breeze. Uh, Breeze is our second Jupiter Gin. If you're keeping track at home, currently we have two Gin of each element. Velissa is being swaggy with instant climb. Um, <laughs> just showing off there. That's a fun little glitch. Uh, she contributed to the discovery of that, as we mentioned a while ago. Um, but that's purely for display. I mean, Tass does it to save like frames. She almost certainly lost time there. But as we say in the community, swag is time neutral. So. Uh, mad, mad props to her for that frame perfect trick there. Frame perfect 60, 60 FPS, by the way. Um, as I was saying, if you've been keeping score at home, we have two gin of each element except Jupiter. The second Jupiter gin is in this dungeon. We're going to go pick it up, and it's going to give us uh, an, a very welcome power boost for the next boss fight, which is Tret. And Breeze is going to be a combat Jenny, so that means that uh, unfortunately it can flee from us. It's not that bad. If it flees, we have to redo the battle, but the map, um, in retrospect, to an entry point to reset it isn't uh, isn't that challenging to get to, so we're thankful for that at least. Yeah, um, Bluza didn't get the flea. The flea costs about 20 seconds. Um, there are some other gin coming up where that flea, flea will add anywhere up to an, a minute of time loss, actually. Um, so... Um, Right now, not so not too bad, and, and Bluzer is, is clearing this like a champ, so he's good. Future is making use of his avoid. Um, clearly, his investment hasn't quite paid off, but uh, he is still ahead of Bowie at least. Although Bowie seems to be getting good RNG, so Bowie might be making a comeback. I believe this is on the breeze back. fight. One of the interesting player uh, choices here is that if you chose to mince Isaac instead of Ivan for whatever reason during the Saturos fight, you would actually outturn Breeze with Isaac, and so you would eliminate the opportunity for it to flee. Yeah, that's exactly what Velissa did. Looks like she has committed to the mint Isaac strats, so she was able to outturn Breeze, so Breeze never got an action. No possibility of Breeze running away, so that's one of the few advantages of minting Isaac. So Bluzer is about to drop down to the Tret fight. Uh, Tret is the boss of this dungeon. You're actually expected to fight Tret a lot early in the game. Technically, we did a minor sequence break to go to Mercury Lighthouse first. Um, and the game does expect you to come here with three party members and defeat this boss. Um, at this level, with four party members and, and two gen of each element, this fight is trivial. Um, but it can can cause a little bit of time loss because he's, he's got that sleep ability that's so annoying. And uh, he's got some strong abilities like Thorn and uh, uh, and whatnot that can kill people. So a, a big source of time loss potentially here. And I'm not sure if it's because Bluzer has probably the most attempted runs, but I've seen him um, get thrown off by Sleep Star, which is Tret's um, AoE sleeping move multiple times, uh, too many times for comfort. Um, I've seen him get a, a triple sleep on this boss, which of course isn't... Here we oh. go. Oh, oh no. <laughs> All right. Oh no, two sleeps. That's oh, that is that is blues of luck in a nutshell. That is Oh. Speak of the devil. It's two party members out of commission. It's not threatening, but it's going to lose them some time. It's going to lose them a lot of time. Um uh, unless they wake up this and they don't wake up. Um, sleep doesn't work like sleep in most RPGs. Sleep's just like basically equivalent to a stun. You just can't do anything for a bit. Um, and you just have to suck it up. Um, even getting hit with an ability doesn't wake you up necessarily. Um, so Bluza has to make up two two people worth of damage with uh, Ooh, two people. Velissa. Oh, Velissa gets two sleeps as well. What is going on? Amazing. So if Future and Bowie get through the trap fight without a sleep, they're going to be they're going to have a significant um, ability to, to catch up here. Bluza's confirming Ooh, the kill. Okay, so Bluza. Blues has got a rainbow kill on Tret, which gives him extra experience. Not planned, but he got it. Um, rough fight. Big time loss there for Blue, but he, he navigated it like a pro from experience. As you know, he's, a, he's, a, he, he's in this situation quite a lot. 
Valissa fortunately has a, has uh, has had Ivan wake up. Not the thorn. Oh, oh no, the thorn hits Ivan. Oh, that is tragic. Um, Ivan is just a piece of paper in these fights, and uh, if he gets targeted twice by Trit, he can die. So Valissa has had a, a even worse Trit fight, despite the um, just despite the sleep being slightly less punishing. This bodes well for the um, runners wow. behind right now. Wow! 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 Yeah, there, there's only about uh, a minute 30 between these runners right now. It's uh, a very, very tight race. Now, Plexa, is Ivan being dead here impactful at all? Um, my initial inclination... Yes, it is. Yeah. You want to speak to why? Yeah. Yeah, we're looking to get Ivan to a certain level so we can start outspeeding things. Um, Velissa hasn't committed the mint to Ivan, very important fact. So she needs to get Ivan to level 9 for him to outspeed things in a dungeon coming up. Uh, without that, it's just going to be really rough. Um, she has to do some, some. Uh, I don't know what she's going to do, actually. It's just a really tough situation. She's just going to have to suck it up and hope she doesn't get bad encounters, really. Future's boss fight's going very well so far. Yeah, Bowie and, and Future have these fights going according to script. Uh, Bowie gets a thorn. Um, not it's not that bad, though. I mean, he's about to finish the fight, I think. No, he's not. He was on the first turn. This is actually problematic. Bowie could be in a world of hurt here. Future, on the other hand, is getting perfect RNG, so he's having a good time. Mm -hmm. He's making up some ground here. Oh, not another Thorn. And, Ooh. Oh, very, very lucky. I think Bowie utilized the Flex Defend strat there, which is something that uh, the newer strats allow you to do to give you the, pretty much coverage for that exact situation. And Future with a kill. Uh, so, yeah, so Future's out. Good RNG. Bowie has navigated a tough situation, but avoided the Ivan death, really important. Um, but both Blue and Bowie have made up significant time because of those fights. Um, but Blue is still very much in the lead. Melissa coming up second, Future third, Bowie fourth. I'm just... This is an interesting point in the run. This is generally where we consider the, end, the early game to be over and kind of the platform for the rest of the game to begin. Because from here on out, we're going to be abusing summons to clear encounters and uh, we're only going, to be going, only going to be fleeing at strategic times. So. Uh, very interesting point of the race. We get access to a, a particular summon that's very powerful shortly, and it really changes the way that we play the game, as Plexa alluded to. Um, but I just want to take a second to just recognize Bowie here, who had a very unfortunate uh, occurrence happen in, in the overworld where he got pushed back to one of the previous cities. A, quite a significant um, disruption in gameplay, but he's only about 20 seconds behind future right now. Um, so, Bowie is, sec is currently second place uh, in the rankings for the game, and it's showing. Um, really amazed, actually, at how well he is uh, coming back here. Uh, so, Bluzer is attempting to flee from these bears. That's no problem. He almost had a bad situation, but it doesn't matter. There's a revive point up here, so if someone dies, it's, it's, it's small risk, basically. So, it's calculated. Um, but he's going to dive into Fushin Temple here to pick up Zephyr. The third Jupiter Gen that gives us two things. It gives us Zephyr. Zephyr's special ability is, is that it increases our agility. Um, agility is the most important stat in this game. If you can go first, then the enemy doesn't get a turn, and then that's great. Um, but it also gives us access to the tier three Jupiter summon called Procne. Now, Procne is not only absurdly powerful, like by far and away the strongest thing we can have access to at this point in the game, but it's also the fastest ability in the game that isn't a regular attack. In fact, if a regular attack crits, Procne is faster. So it's AoE, very powerful ability that takes no time at all. It's a speedrunner's dream. It is a two and a half minute investment to pick up Procne, but over the course of the run, that time investment pays off in spades. So uh, very well worth the detour, even if uh, our minute friends can uh, skip this gen. So the screen Bluzer is in right now could have encounters. He skipped the encounter, that's good. It's very unlucky if you get an encounter there. If you do pick up the encounter, uh, really bad things can happen because they're much stronger than we're expecting at this point of the game. Blues is going to do another retreat warp, get down below 6 PP, uh, run across this uh, invisible path here. That is not the retreat warp. That path is always there. You can do that just without doing any fun fancy stuff. Walk through the door and it takes us very conveniently right before Zephyr. He's coming into the Now Zephyr has a real tendency to run away um, and can kill people. If Zephyr decides to use Storm Ray on Ivan, Ivan will die. 
Um, if Zephyr runs away, that is a 40, 30 second time or something. And we got Wind Slash. So Wind Slash is fine. Um, now Blues will finish off Zephyr, clear out uh, clear out this encounter with uh, this very precise setup. Melissa's setting up for the Retreat Warp. Um, so she'll have to do this fight soon too, and hopefully she gets good energy as well. And in our community, uh, uh, Zephyr but, has uh, a really, go ahead. really amazing or uh, infamous rather reputation for, for fleeing. There is uh, multiple runs on the leaderboards in very, very um, high rankings, that being um, second, third, that uh, will sometimes have three Zephyr fleas included in the run somehow. Yeah, look, Bowie's getting terrible RNG. He can't get the fleet from these maulers. The death there is an impactful. He'll just revive that, so it's not a problem. But he's about two and a half minutes off the pace at the moment with him in the future, so they need all the time save they can get. Uh, so Blues is about to switch into Procne mode, so he's going to distribute his gin in a very particular way. By splitting up the gin across his party, when he uses a summon, they will all be put into recovery across three different people. What that means is that when, when you get a gin recovery tick, which is a sound, what will happen is that they'll all recover simultaneously. So instead of it being recovering one by one on the person, they'll recover one on three people. That way he can bring back Procne very quickly after each encounter. He's also setting Forge on Mia to make sure that Mia outspeeds things as well. If Mia can outspeed things, it covers a, a couple dodgy situations, which is very uh, good to avoid. Felissa got the encounter before Mogul Forest. That Ooh. is so unlucky. And a caught by surprise. That is very unfortunate. For those of you at home with your bingo cards, you can check that one off. <laughs> yeah, that's that's very, very, very unlikely. Although Velissa does play it a little bit riskier than most people. She does try to cheat a recovery in the overworld. She just got called on that play by the game. So as Future and Bowie are hitting up on Zephyr, uh, Bluezer is about to head into Quartz. Now Quartz is similar to Zephyr in that uh, Zephyr, uh, Quartz can be a little bit dangerous. But more, more to the point, Quartz has a, a nasty habit of running away as well. If Quartz runs away, it's like a minute time loss or something, as you have to reset a very long room, and you'll almost certainly get another encounter. So Future got Wind Slash. Okay, pretty much the same as Blueza. Absolutely fine on his end. Um, so he will collect Zephyr soon. Bowie coming up on Zephyr as well. Um, Bluezer has entered the Quartz fight, which is basically just a classic summon rush. He gets Briar from Quartz instead of Flea, which is, it doesn't matter what, what uh, Quartz does, because whatever it does, as long as it's not a Flea, you're safe. Mm -hmm. Bowie gets Whirlwind on Zephyr, so everybody's got had a good Zephyr, which is great. Bluezer's cleared Quartz, which is really the scariest Gin Flea in the game. Uh, so Bluezer is probably clear from the RNG hurdles for the next little while. Um, next, next stop for him is Killer Ape, which is the boss of this area, which again isn't going to kill the run, but can certainly cause some time loss through uh, uh, unfortunate actions, shall we say? And Quartz now. So the list is about coming up in Quartz as well. Quartz actually gives us access to the third tier Venus Summon too, which is a good amount of damage, but we don't use it very often because it is quite slow. And quite slow is putting it lightly. We call it the time loss of Saurus because of how terrible it is actually. <laughs> um, it is a eight second animation compared to the, the blink of an eye that Procne is. So yeah, we, if we're using Cybel, we we need a very, very, very good justification for Felicis it. The list is coming into the quartz fight. What are those Yep, uh, looks like Velissa has a good Quartz as well. Gaia is a slow ability, but again, as long as it's not Flea, we don't care. We cut our losses. Amazing that Zephyr behaved well for everyone in the run. Yeah. So that's, we'll that's see very if Quartz lucky. follows. Oh, we picked up a, a Bramble Seed, actually. Uh, there are some flex strats you can do with a Bramble Seed. So Bramble Seeds are a synergy item thingy that enemies have a chance of dropping. A Bramble Seed is the strongest of the four synergy items, they, them being Oil Drop, Crystal Powder, uh, Weasel Claw, and the Bramble Seed. I don't know if Bowie knows the strategies to utilize that Bramble Seed, so it may just sit in his inventory, but it can offer him a slight time save on certain uh, Jin and uh, bosses coming up if he elects to use it. Bluezer's actually just about to Blues pick up the only item that we will detour out of our way to go and grab. It's called the Elven Shirt. What it does is it increases the wearer's agility by 50%, and that makes Ivan later on in the game uncontestable for speed, but it also allows us in some boss fights, we'll equip it on Garrett or some other party members um, to alter the turn order. So right now the Elven Shirt's being put on Mia. That allows Mia and Ivan to consistently outspeed the enemies in this area, which is 
obviously very helpful. And we'll keep it on Mia for most of the mid game. Um, it, again, it, it allows her the flex option of being able to clear a difficult Ooh. encounter alongside Ivan. Future got the the quartz flea. Oh no, that's that's a big, big time loss. As you can see, he's got to run all the way to the top of the room and run back. Oh. All, almost always, you're picking up an extra encounter, possibly two. Uh, the quartz flea is terrible. Bowie, on the other hand, uh, has got a mad growth from quartz and is going to get through get collect quartz without an issue. So, unlucky future, but that's the name of this game. Like bad RNG is is just one one screen away. Speaking of bad screens, um, Blues is coming up on Killer Ape. Now, what are some of the scary things that uh, Killer Ape can do? Uh, Killer Ape's got a couple bad abilities. Um, Warcry and um, Ransack are the two abilities we don't want to see. Warcry can take away your party member's turn if it, if it connects and they haven't had an action. In particular, we don't want to see Warcry on Garrett. Uh, you can see Blues are using Granite here to give protection. That's basically going to give him the most flex options to be able to react to whatever Killer Ape does on this next turn. He gets Debilitate, perfect, that's not an issue at all. Uh, Ransack, on the other hand, is a very hard-hitting physical ability that should one-shot Ivan, I think everybody else will tank it from here. Because he didn't take any damage on the first turn, which is fortunate. Did we speak to using Zephyr in the boss fight? Uh, we kind of touched on Zephyr's utility and that it allows you to outspeed things. Um, so Zephyr was used to, uh, to give extra agility that it basically is going to allow Ivan, Mir, and Garrett, uh, Ivan, Mir, and Isaac, sorry, to outspeed Killer Ape on the final turn and basically eliminate an action. Attack from Killer Ape, perfect boss fight, perfect boss fight for Blue. He is um, absolutely yeah. fine. He picked up the apple earlier as well, so he will not get the range. Sometimes you can uh, miss a damage range on this if you get bad level ups or something. So. Uh, perfect boss, fantastic. Well done, Blue. Uh, looks looks like he's coming in with a 144-ish killer rate, if I'm not mistaken. Um, solid time, mm -hmm. very solid. Um, and now he's off to Xi'an, the next town. Well, Velissa's about to start up the killer rate. Ooh, he gets the encounter in between the cities with the, the ape, actually. He's just going to flee, oh, ransack. We'll talk more about these apes in a moment yeah. here, but basically they are, oh, the three... Three failed fleas on that encounter is really bad. Uh, no one died though, so he he's okay. Meanwhile, Velissa got attacked turn one, uh, so she is good. Oh, she's using a new strat. She's using a uh, 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 a damage front loaded strategy that I, I developed very recently. Like literally, this is like a week old almost, uh, mm. and it's potentially going to allow her to get a rainbow kill on the killer. Right? We mentioned rainbow kills earlier. Uh, essentially, if you defeat an enemy with a gin of the opposite element, the, the element that it's weak to, uh, you can potentially make it flash rainbow colors, and that will give you 30% more experience and 30% more coins. You don't care about the coins, you do care about the experience. Um, that will help her hit some ranges later on, potentially make up some of that um, lost um, experience on Ivan from, uh, whatchamacallit, from Tret. So, about the boss, or the the golden apes, not sure what they're actually called, the yellowish gold apes that you'll see in the they're overworld encounters. They're just called encounters. ape, actually. They're just, they're called, just ape. called ape? Just ape, okay. Yep. Well, they're actually... Apes strung together. They have a ridiculous amount of HP for their, uh, for their place in the game. They actually have more HP than the later versions of apes, which are supposed to be stronger, ideally, with the way the JRPGs go. But because of how strong they are, um, not only are they dangerous to our party, but uh, it just takes a, a, takes us a lot of time to get through the encounter. Um, and so we just flee from them, uh, ideally. And yeah, yeah. Blues are also got There's a some flea stuff from... Happening here with, yeah, you got, you got Corona to flee. That's really unlucky. Corona is an overworld gin, a poorly explained mechanic in this game where you can find gin in the overworld randomly. Uh, and Corona decided to run away. Another annoying mechanic in these games where Jin can decide to just leave the battle. Anyway, mm -hmm. he gets the kill there. He collects Corona. Minor time loss. No big deal. Meanwhile, yeah. Bowie has a perfect killer rape fight, and then Future is just starting up his killer rape fight, which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Bowie had a bind on Isaac, which is super inconsequential. That can pose a little bit of a problem if it lands on Garrett. It looks like Bowie is, is very fine with experience, which is good. I think Bluezer is okay as well. Mm. We're kind of looking to get level 11 on I Isaac very soon, and if you can get level mm. 11 on Isaac, um, that's going to allow us to start fleeing an ult. I want you to watch Bowie's stream right now. He's going for a trick called the Frost Clip. Um, Blue and Velissa missed it. I think Bowie's positioning is 
We might be one pixel to the left. Let's see if he gets it. Very precise. If he does this correctly, if he does this correctly, it's a pixel perfect trick. If he does it correctly, he'll pop up onto the frost pillar and avoid running around. Nice. Hey, he got it. Nice. Third time. So that's called the frost clip. Uh, it saves about five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I missed it, but I think Blizzard got body blocked there by one of the NPCs, which is an unfortunate instance. Ah, uh, he, he got blocked by Jerry. Yeah, we, we call that guy who can block us Jerry, because he just gets in the way. Nobody likes Jerry. Let's see if Future does the Bowie's properly. electing to take the ape. Interesting, interesting. Oh. I see Velissa's taking the ape encounter yeah. too. Yeah, like, the, the, the thinking here is that apes are so scary because they can basically one-shot Ivan, you know? Um, that it may just be a good idea to, to take the fight and just deal mm -hmm. with it. The difference between Velissa and Bowie is that Velissa had access to the tier 3 Mars summon, which significantly speeds up that fight. Uh, Bowie had to use the tier 3 Mercury summon, which is Neptune, which is one of the slowest summon animations in the game. So a lot of people like to flee apes before they get Tiamat at least, which is the tier 3 Mars summon, um, because it's just too slow otherwise. But it looks like um, Bowie's got himself Corona. It looks like um, Blue and Velissa are about to deal with his first living statue, which is a mini boss uh, for Alton Peak, which is a, well, it's a condensed dungeon because, uh, well, <laughs> there's a rather large retreat skip. Yes, it's, 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 quite, it's quite, quite significant. There's a, um, there's a boss in this dungeon that we actually don't even have to fight. Yeah, in fact, no category fights it uh, because of all the skips that are, are possible in this dungeon. Um, so Future's grinding for Corona. Looks like he's okay there. So Future will be, uh, sorry, not Future. Bluezer will be the first person into Alton Peak proper. Now, most runners will be looking for level 11 and trying to avoid ape encounters. So they'll try and clear things with Procne if they can to get experience, and otherwise they'll try and run away. Uh, as soon as Ivan hits, uh, Isaac, sorry, hits level 11, you have just enough experience to hit all of the critical ranges through the rest of the game. Uh, so runners will start to flee from encounters again as, and they'll usually set all their gin so to give them maximum stat bonuses from their gin and then just go ham and run and hope you make it. And I'm not if somebody sure. dies, it's not a big deal. There's a revive point coming up soon. Um, as soon as we do this, this uh, retreat skip, which is uh, after the second living statue. So Blues is coming up on the second living statue about now. I'm not sure if all the runners do this, but Bluezer has a strategy where he will not flee something. If it's a one one turn Procne fight, he will sometimes elect to just take the Procne fight because it's so quick as opposed to risking the, the failed flee attempts. Exactly, and that's exactly why he's only stand buying the three Jupiter Gen in his party. Um, by doing that, he's maximizing the amount of stats that his characters have, which maximize the amount of hits they can take when he attempts to flee. Uh, it's really a clever strategy. Um, we've been working on these things for a while, um, and the, this one has, has kind of stuck out like, uh, hey, this might actually be a, a really good idea. Maybe we should, uh, we should incorporate that rather than just stand buying everything. It's so amazing. He's going into this last living statue fight. He really wants to see level 11 on Isaac after this fight, so we'll see if that happens. It's amazing to see how many strategies have adapted over the last six months to incorporate more fleeing. Well, like you said right at the beginning of the show, um, fleeing is the fastest thing you can do in the game on average. Um, the only difficulty is we may die. Uh, if we die, that is bad. Yeah, he got level 11 on Isaac. He's bang on experience. He's exactly where he wants to be. Perfect. Um, so you have to balance that risk of dying versus the speed you can get from fleeing. Uh, versus the speed it would take to actually clear the encounter because that can't be discounted as well. Uh, it just so happens at this point of the game, the, the balance tips in favor of fleeing. So level, level 11, he's going to flee everything from here. You'll notice, uh, I noticed the bluezer just um, set all of his gens so that way he, we know that by this, he's not going to be taking any of the encounters. He's going to be strictly trying to flee because he has no summons available for him. Yeah, and if he tries to kill anything without summons, it's just going to take forever. His class setup is complete whack at the moment. Um, he has no good synergy available. All he has is stats, and stats are really only good for running away from things. So that that's that's why uh, we know once he's gone into the set all gen mode that we know he can't be taking any more encounters. And this should be Velissa here coming into the second uh, living statue fight, or finishing it rather. 
Yep, there's really not a lot these living statues can do to annoy you. They can crit Ivan, but Ivan, I think, tanks it from this range, so it's totally fine. In fact, Felissa's already level 11, so she does a slightly different strategy, which removes the living statue's action, which is really nice. Um, so she'll also be into the flea mode, I believe, as well. So uh, quickly pay your attention towards Bluza if you can. Um, he is setting up for a retreat glitch. So what he needs is he needs Isaac's PP to be less than six as before. Retreat needs to be bound to a hotkey. Then he use, needs to use retreat and retreat needs to fail. That will trick the game thinking in, uh, into thinking that he's going to be elsewhere in, in the dungeon. So when he walks through this next door, he's gonna pop out into a location you may not expect. Uh, he's running around to get PP back. because He's got a little bit of a PP problem here. He needs to get five PP or synergy points to be able to cast Frost. He he get, he gives up actually. He's passed the Frost gem to Mia to get Frost. Mm -hmm. He has but to cast the ability on the puddle to make a pillar to jump across. Anyway, he's now in a position that I hope uh, he's he checks. Going to, uh, I hope he checks. Yeah, he ha he's, he's got seven, which is the exact amount. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I've done that before actually, where I've casted retreat and then got an encounter and come up to the entrance, but recovered enough PP, so that way I didn't actually perform the retreat glitch properly. Yeah, in any case, you've seen him walk through the door and be sent basically outdoors. Um, so that is a very huge skip. That skips about half the dungeon. It skips getting the synergy uh, overwhelf utility synergy lift. It skips the Hydros boss. It skips a gin as well. It's the first gin that we are not collecting. Um, and it allows us to, well, greatly accelerate this part of the game and so he's into Lama Temple which is a another lengthy cutscene um, but a uh, yeah a bit of a stopping point he's just mentally preparing himself now for the, the next phase of the game meanwhile Felissa is coming on that very same retreat well she is not far behind either and you can see her spamming frost Bowie to get into the range up, actually with, with a couple good fleas here, Bowie is right in this, by the way. He has made significant time up. He is one uh, one screen behind Velissa at the moment. If he gets some good RNG here, he can make up a lot of time. Those That damage that he just took is not a bad thing. He can utilize the ability Cure Well or Cure to drain his PP a lot faster than using Move or Frost or something like that. That base, So that damage there is not a bad thing. It means he's going to have a faster setup for the, the Retreat Warp. Now, if he's lucky, he gets one more. Uh, if he's unlucky, he gets a one more encounter, and it's terrible. If he's lucky, he skips the encounter. Let's see what happens. He's almost there. I suspect he's going to pick up an encounter. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep, yeah, right below the ladder. Oh, and, and it's, it's, an a, it's an ape. Ooh, the apes of a higher level. They're oh. hard to run from. You know, it doesn't even matter if Ivan dies here because there, there's um, an ability or uh, a place to resurrect right, out, right after this. Yeah, that's still tragic though. The double fail flea there. Uh, he really needed, he really wanted to get that that uh, first try. Um, that could have made up uh, quite a bit of ground for him. But that's okay. B Bowie is not out of the race just yet. Uh, we are coming up on the first actual dangerous boss in the run. Uh, the infamous Manticore. Woohoo. Mm-hmm. Lamekin Desert is a very interesting area in particular. There's a lot of cool glitches that we see only in this area. Yeah, I mean, uh, Future is finishing up this this last section, so I, if I don't, if you don't mind, cause I want to go on a little bit of a story time. Yeah, of so, course. So, um, <laughs> there's this wonderful event and that happens uh, once or twice a year, depending on your definition. Called Awesome Games Done Quick. Part of Awesome Games Done Quick is that you uh, have to have your setup checked for when if it's an online thing. You got to go through a tech check. Uh, so this most recent Awesome Games Done Quick, uh, I, I was very fortunate to be able to run this category at the event, and uh, I was I had my tech check. One of the things I really wanted to do at, at, at GDQ was uh, do a glitch exhibition. So part of my tech check was running around in Lama Khan Desert, the, the dungeon that's just coming up, and uh, just doing silly things, just random things, just, you know, we're checking the bit rate, is everything okay, whatever, and oh, it's all good, you know. All of a sudden, I slide across an oasis, which is expected. The slip and slide glitch is, is something that we knew about. What we didn't know is that it can pop you out of bounds. So I slid across this oasis, popped out of bounds, and went, hold up, that hasn't been done before. What is going on? And it turns out that by screwing around during my GDQ tech check, we found a new glitch uh, or a new application of, an, of a known glitch that significantly speeds up the dungeon. So we'll see all of our runners today do a glitch called the uh, slip and slide glitch, where we, they will slide across an oasis and pop out of bounds. 
And the whole reason why it took so long to find was to make it work, you have to walk and not run. So the moral of the story, kids, is don't run by the pool, walk. <laughs> Great story. But yeah, thank you, you GDQ, for helping us find this glitch, is the, is the moral here. The second moral, two morals. <laughs> One, don't run by the pool. Two, uh, GDQ can find glitches. And you can see that Bluezer's now in Lamakin Desert. Uh, in his setup, you'll see that he sets uh, one Mars Jin on Mia to help her with uh, getting some access to some stronger Psy energies that help him optimize the encounters in this area. It's a very small tech, but uh, very impactful. Yeah, basically, with Forge set, Mia gets enough agility, with the Elven shirt, that is, to be able to outspeed Ivan, cast this uh, synergy ability, uh, so that Procne can secure a couple ranges it wouldn't otherwise be able to secure. Uh, very, very, very handy. Now, part of the slip and slide glitch requires the heat gauge on the left that, that Bluezer is incrementing uh, to be managed. You increment heat gauge when you walk across the desert. This, 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 this desert's gimmick, basically. Uh, every time the, 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 uh, the, the thing overflows, you take an eighth or, or something of your, of your HP as damage. Um, but for the glitch to work, the heat gauge must be below half, so he's going to end up at the at the oasis, just about 40% of that gauge full, maybe a little bit higher, uh, with this particular route through the desert. This route is a little bit slower than if you just walk there, uh, just walk as fast as you can, but obviously the slip and slide glitch is just too too powerful to give up, so even the minor time loss is worth it. Ooh, loser got a lot of encounters Ooh, back to back there. Ooh, having to use there. Neptune. Yeah, so having he... to use Neptune, that's so unfortunate. He didn't have the time for his uh, Jin to recover between encounters because he, ha he had a bad encounter rate, and so he w was pretty much forced to be using Neptune there. So here's Smog, uh, the fourth Jupiter Jin. Um, that's going to give us access to our first tier four summon. Uh, Golden Sun 1 only has uh, four uh, summons of each element, and they go up to tier four. Tier four being the strongest. Um, of them, they do very, very, very strong damage. We're going to make extensive use of them uh, as soon as we get them. The only problem is Thor is very slow, so we'll try and avoid Thor wherever we can. So Blue is currently setting up for Slip and Slide. He's going to use Reveal, then go into Retreat Mode, then walk across the Oasis. Look and at that. Pop, and he pops, pops out of bounds. So a really convenient fact about Lamakan Desert is that the Manticore, the boss for the re for this area, happens to live at zero zero or the coordinate zero zero on every map for some unknown reason. Um, but anyway, he is uh, navigated to zero zero. He's in position. He even got an encounter skip, which is huge. And he's about to fight the Manticore. Very scary boss with the wrong pattern here. He could have somebody die. Um, but all our runners picked up a Water of Life, which is the reviving thing at the previous town and that should allow at least one death to get away with, uh, but Manticore can be mean, so let's see what it does. Yeah, Manticore is another pattern boss, isn't it? Correct, yes. And I, in my my personal opinion is the, the poison sting that uh, Manticore can do. A lot of the times it won't kill, but the poison effect afterwards will seal the death for your party member. Poison tail, Correct. sorry. And, okay, so exactly Ooh. the situation uh, Bluesa finds himself in right now with the, with the poison proc on Ivan. Um, I believe Ivan could be in trouble here. He could die if, if Manticore targets him on this turn. Um, he won't die on this turn, but he will die to the poison proc on the next turn if, if things go poorly here. It seems that every boss fight, when I'm explaining something, it directly happens to Bluezer. <laughs> hey, look, Melissa is just sitting up for the Manticore as well. She is not far off the pace either. She's right there with Blue right now. And I'm not sure we talked about it. I think we're going to go it. straight into Vine. <laughs> not sure we talked about it right, um... Sorry, go ahead, Plexa. Yeah, look, there's a lot of things that's going to happen really fast. So Bluezer has successfully cleared the Manticore fight. Bowie is setting up Slip and Slide. Uh, Velissa is doing Manticore. She is okay as well, I believe. Um, but we're about to come into the gen known as Vine. Now, every gin in the overworld basically has a 100% chance of being found in the overworld, except for Vine. Vine only has a 40% chance of turning up, um, and so Vine time loss is very, very common, um, and it, it can be another great equalizer in this race. It's very easy to lose a minute hunting for Vine if things go, go badly. Blues is going to do a little stutter step movement on the overworld. If you're not pressing a direction when you get an encounter, it forces the game to give you Vine for some reason. We don't know why. So he's going to run into the forest. He's going to stutter step. 
and oh, he gets try. vine first try. Fantastic. Let's hope. We'll see if it if it flees. If it flees, then he might have a hard time finding it again. Nice. He is fine. Well done. He did it. A, a small. Garrus level twelve, so he's doing heat wave variant. Nice. A small interaction in the Manticore fight, while we still have people inside of it, I'm not sure we mentioned this, but we set, part of our setup for this fight is putting the Elven shirt onto Garrett for the fight, and that's to give him the 50% speed boost in setting up the right turn order so that we can secure the fight with a tier 2 Mercury summon. Yeah, this is also the first instance where we're using the elemental power boost that summons have. So every time you use a summon, the uh, you will get a certain amount of extra elemental power. And elemental power determines the power of your synergy abilities and summons as well. So we open these fights with uh, Mia using Neptune that gives us 60 extra points of Mercury power. Those 60 extra points then flow into the second summon she uses, which is Nereid and makes Nereid a, a good chunk stronger. And with that extra elemental power boost, we're actually able to make turn, take this from a four turn fight to a three turn fight where the Manticore doesn't get an action off. It's, it's very clever, and we're going to see a lot more use of the elemental power boosts as we go into the, the end game. We see Velissa securing like Vine Velissa as well. successfully got Vine. Yeah, she got Vine. She did a different strategy. She did the uh, uh, Procne Smog Tiamat variant, which is safer, but only loses like a, a third of a second. It's it's not mm. so bad at all. And why is it safer? Uh, Ivan can get targeted by Vine. Uh, I, Vine can use something like Clay Spire and kill Ivan. So even though Ivan can get his, his damage off, he will die, which is a time loss because you want to, you have to go visit the Sanctum and revive him. So uh, a third of a second investment to get a guaranteed not have to revive is pretty nice. Future in the Manticore fight um, it has poison on Mia, unfortunately, but it might not matter because poison doesn't proc when the fight ends. So if this fight actually ends with a Mia summon, so it might not matter. Also, she's not in range yeah, to die, matter. ultimately. <laughs> that too, but yeah, it won't matter. So everybody gets through Manticore okay. Um, no deaths. Velissa and Blue success. Yeah, Velissa and Blue both got the, the Vine kill, uh, Vine collection. Bowie is now jump diving into Vine. Uh, Blue picked up a sleep bomb. We'll talk about that in a moment. Bowie gets Vine first try as well. Vine is not trolling people today. We'll see. Oh, it tried oh. to run. Tried to run, but it didn't. Oh, very lucky for for that. Uh, oh, and Future, future Gitmus is the uh, unlucky. This you is a scary encounter, it. so he's just going to clear it. Yeah, now he's got to reset his gen and try again. That's a huge time loss. That's really unfortunate. Ah, uh, Vine. Forever the troll. Future needs to pull out some of that future RNG. <laughs> he will, he will. Don't you worry. Don't you worry, he will. Yeah, there we go. Is. There we go. All right. That now wasn't too bad. Uh, fingers crossed that we don't get a flea here. Nice. Yep. All good. Okay. Um, so one of our runners done in Calais. Calais is this next town. Um, people are buying whatever equipment they want to take for the rest of the game, basically. Um, this is our last shopping trip. Uh, Felissa is buying extra armor for Ivan to secure a couple uh, potential damage ranges later on in the game. Bluza has opted to omit that, which is fair. Um, they, they would only cover some really strange edge cases and stuff, so it makes sense why it didn't go for it. Uh, Bluza picked up a sleep bomb, which is important for the next boss fight. Felissa skipped it. I don't know if she already has one, or if she's just going for the slightly riskier Kraken strats, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Kraken is probably one of the most interesting parts of this run, um, from the perspective of I'm wondering who might get bad RNG. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a boss fight that essentially comes down to a status effect, um, and if, if that status effect fails, um, there's a very small chance that you can successfully defeat the boss still, but it is uh, incredibly unlikely, and with four people running the game, it's uh, more likely than not that someone is uh, going to have a rough crack in boss fight. Yeah, so let's talk about that a little bit. So every enemy in the game, or even every class in the game, in fact, has a certain, um, has a hidden value that determines if you have a weakness to a particular effect. Now, for most bosses, it's like you're weak to HP drain, which is like pathetic because that's completely useless. The Kraken, however, is weak to sleep. That gives you an extra 25% chance that sleep will proc on the Kraken. 
now between that extra 25% chance and Ivan's already high base uh, Jupiter power. What that basically means is that sleep is a 50% chance to proc on Kraken if Ivan casts sleep. Which is huge, like the Kraken is an incredibly scary and dangerous fight, um, known for killing runs, just, uh, just casually a nightmare as well, just an absurdly powerful boss. The, the fact that we can make it go to sleep makes this fight winnable and winnable quickly. So what we do is we try and get sleep on the Kraken. Uh, we also try to get a stun on the Kraken. There's only a 30% chance of stun working, but it's better than nothing. And if that doesn't work, we try again. And if that doesn't work, well, we will probably see our runners reset. <laughs> we, we pray. We um, pray. <laughs> we pray, we pray. So the point here is that if you do the probability tree calculation and whatnot, there is an 84% chance that a status effect will proc on the Kraken. That means there's a 16% chance that it won't, which is or... roughly one in six. So... Mm -hmm. Um, and then if you do more probability calculations, you will realize that the chance of everybody having a good Kraken is 48%, which means there's a 52% chance that somebody will die on the Kraken today. So, which of our runners will it be? Take notes, everyone. The test is next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so much of routing this game comes down to probability calculations. Uh, we haven't really dived into it. We talked a little bit about it at the GDQ event. But essentially, you bash the expected time it takes to clear an encounter versus the expected time number of attempts it takes to flee into a calculator, and you spit out a number called the expected value. And if the expected value for fleeing is lower than the expected value for fighting, we flee. And if it's fast to fight, we fight. Pretty simple. Um, simple in concept, difficult to math out, but uh, that's that was 90% of the routing of this game, working out whether or not fleeing or fighting is, is better. <laughs> and Future's just coming out of the oldest man cutscene. That's a little yeah, earworm that everyone man. in the Golden Sun oldest community man. has. Yeah, I know Blue loves that song. Yeah, he really is a oldest man. <laughs> <laughs> So actually, this boat segment's quite chill. Um, there are three encounters, they're scripted. They take one tier four summon to blow up. We'll be using Judgment because it's fastest. Judgment is the tier four Venus summon. Absurdly powerful, absurd, absurdly fast. It's our preferred means of killing if we can't use Procne. Um, we have Meteor, our tier four Mars summon. We picked up our fourth Mars gen in the previous town. Uh, Meteor is two seconds slower. And of course we have Thor, which is the tier four Jupiter summon, which is slower, uh, uh, it's like an eight second animation. It's really, 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 really slow. So we try to avoid that, but sometimes we can't. And so for our tier four summons, the order of them between fastest, the slowest I believe would be Jupiter. Um, uh, sorry, the, the judgment uh, summon would be the fastest next to Meteor and then Boreas, which we don't have quite yet, but of course Thor, as we've mentioned before, is the slowest so you'll see us sometimes or you'll see the runners sometimes using meteor when judgment is down exactly yeah well that's that's for after the boat right now we're just going to sit back relax take take a lazy cruise across the ocean and blow up some monsters absolutely and if you're ever interested in picking up this game to speed run there is about a 45 second bathroom break potential that you have between these cutscenes. <laughs> if yep. you're feeling fast But yeah, super curious uh, think, to see. I think Blues is, Blues is doing some new strats here, I think. I think he's doing fast Garrett strats. I think everybody else will do fast Ivan strats. It, it really doesn't matter. It just amounts to shifting the Elven shirt around. It's a, very, it's a very small optimization, but uh, it eliminates some menus, which might be a second or two. Uh, it's not even that much of an optimization, to be fair. Uh, you have to do some extra menuing to compensate. Um, but yeah, it just depends on how quickly you can do do your item swaps. They they can take a little. They can be a little bit confusing. They the items don't necessarily form fall in a static way in your inventory, depending on what random crap you pick up from the world. Uh, so uh, mm. it can just be easier to do a gin menu where everything's fixed versus an item menu where things can be a little bit jumbled up. Anyway, Blue has set sail, so he's getting his first encounter. 
He also did not clear that that text box frame perfectly. I'm going to scold him afterwards for that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Blueser plays a game on his stream. He tries to get all of his encounters argless. When he dives into the, the bottom here, there's an arg text box. Arg, there. Um, and it also plays a sound effect, like to the tune of like some white noise. Um, and he wants to skip the white noise if he can. The only way you can do that is if you clear it really quickly. Um, I don't think he believes he's got three arglesses before, so um, that's unfortunate. That's interesting. This is the first time I've seen someone try a fast Garrett strat, and I noticed he um, set Zephyr there to boost his speed a little bit on Garrett. Yeah, Garrett's just a slow boy. Um, Zephyr puts him in a Jupiter class, and Jupiter, again, very fast classes, just generally speaking. Um, that gives Garrett enough agility to outspeed, and um, yeah, it, it's, it's kind of nice. Although, you can see Blues' unfamiliarity with the strategy. He dived into the menu for a second time to make sure it was okay, and he fumbled the inputs a little bit. Normally, this is like a lightning fast, boom, 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 done, let's keep going. Uh, but, you know, this, these strats are like literally 48 hours old or something. It's all very hot off the presses tech that we're using here. Mm -hmm. yeah, so this... I believe everybody else is going to use Speedy Ivan because that's the, the tried and true. Mm -hmm. This uh, community race really reignited the community in this category in particular. A lot of people have been playing other categories in the game, but uh, with this race coming up in this category, um, oh, the, we've seen a lot of optimizations over the past month. Yeah, I really put the thinking cap on and had some really great ideas. I'm really proud of Gallant Isaac, which we'll see out in a moment. Captain Wayard, Gallant I, Isaac, yeah, I Rambo thought we were Isaac. Gonna... <laughs> I thought the... I, 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 like Ram I like Rambo Isaac these days, but we'll come to that in a bit. But we've really done a lot of rerouting and really optimized the flea percentages and stuff like that. It's, it's, been, it's been fun. Uh, before that, we were all running at all bronze transferables, which is basically this game's 100% category. Um, it requires you to get all gin, all overworld synergy, activate all of the, the Lost Stage transferable events. The Lost Stage transferable event, events are things like Save Sue from the, uh, the Rockfall and Talk to Dora, Win Colosso. It also includes defeating Deadbed, so that category will defeat Deadbed. Um, it's basically 100%. It's good fun. Uh, it takes about five hours. I think the world record is 439. I forget the seconds. Yep, oh, that's not this category. <laughs> <laughs> Blizzard's into the second fight here. Bowie's into yep. the first. Easy clear. Yep, these, these, there's, there's nothing that can go wrong with these fights. The only thing that can go wrong is that somebody has done a, a gin menu incorrectly, and if they've done a gin menu incorrectly, it doesn't matter. They can always recover the situation. Um, these fights aren't so dangerous that they, they can be run ending if you make a mistake. You can I lose time, uh... don't get me wrong. You can absolutely lose time. You just won't die. <laughs> I can't tell who's ahead dragon. between Bowie and uh, Velissa. Which one of them is up ahead right now? Uh, Velissa. It'll be interesting to see if the current rankings of players stays the same throughout the next few splits. It won't shift around until after Kraken, of course. Yeah, we'll have a big chat about Kraken as a platform going into the, the, the very brutal end game. Um, mm -hmm. but, but really, all of the runners in this community basically view Kraken as like, okay, this is my platform, I have this much time left I can save, I'm this far ahead or this far behind. Mm -hmm. Now the run really needs to cooperate. But first of all, we got to get past Kraken. Yeah. Um, very, very scary fight, as we said. One in six chance that, that nothing works and we just have people die. A lot of so, runners won't consider a run to be a real run until you get past Kraken. Like, don't get excited about your huge time save until you get past Kraken. Exactly. I mean, we've all been on really good pace runs before and run into Kraken and Kraken says, nope, I am, I have had my coffee this morning. I am not falling asleep. And you're like, well, I guess we just die then. Um, yep, you're overdue <laughs> for your uh, sacrifice to the sea god. I'm taking your run today. Yeah, yep. Yeah. We, we have a, a, a kind of a running joke that you, you have to sacrifice a run to the squid god every now and then to make sure he's happy so that when you do actually get a good run, um, he doesn't kill your run. Obviously, this doesn't work in practice, but um, we like to think it does. So we, we often have bad runs going into Kraken and we're like, please kill the run. Please let this one be my sacrifice. <laughs> um, and Blues has sacrificed the run um, uh, yesterday, actually. So he, he should be in good, good spiritual standing, I believe. Um, we'll see if that actually pans out for him. 
And I said that the, the rankings of players and their times right now won't change until after Kraken. That might actually be false if one of them gets a bad That's Kraken fight. That's not true. That's not true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, right now, nothing's going to change. But if uh, if Blueza doesn't hit sleep here, we have an even playing field. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very, very close between all four runners. In fact, I think if Blueza misses, is unable to sleep the Kraken, I think Velissa will sneak ahead as first, but obviously then she's got to sleep the Kraken, but mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see how it goes. Personally, I'm, like I'm most finished. excited about this part of the run. Uh, it's it's not very engaging from a, <laughs> an audience's perspective, but uh, knowing the run and what it means, I'm, I'm very excited to see what this means uh, and setting up for the next uh, later half of the game. Um, so, so for those of you tuning in right now, Bluezer is just about to come into the Kraken fight. Uh, Velissa has cleared the third fight. She's just about to set up for Kraken. Bowie is coming into the third fight, and Bluezer just cleared the second fight, so he's coming into the third fight. Um, but he just got a sleep bomb drop as well, which can be helpful on Kraken. All right, Bluezer, the time is nigh. Will the Kraken go to sleep? Will it take its first victim? Bets, folks. So remember, sleep is 50% chance to work. 50%. Scorch is 30%. And if we have to go deeper, we will go deeper. Hopefully we don't. Blue saves the game. Very, very wise. Wise decision. If you, <laughs> if you die here, it's a 10 minute, re 10 minute time loss. So this is one of the few places that all the runners should be saving just in case Kraken is mean. All right, Blue. Take it home. Take it home, Blue. So opening up with Granite to defend, uh, just always opening with granite to mitigate any damage. Sleep comes sleep? off and oh, it's, it's no effect on Kraken. Okay, we're down to 30%. 30% 30% Scorch proc, come on. This is where you scorch. start sweating. Come on, Garrett. Ah, Garrett's he gets stunned. the stun, perfect. He hits the 30%, free fight, Kraken is down. It's gonna be a 221, 220 Kraken. Good time, very, very good time. He is Everyone, uh... flying, he has cleared the first hurdle. Loser is on a run, people. Amazing. Well, See, that's one out of four. Very, very carefully, yeah, this fight is very, very carefully calculated to make sure that we can kill the Kraken um, after, uh, w w if we can stun it on the first turn. So we squeeze in literally uh, within five damage of the amount. We, we overkill by about five damage to secure any ranges. I'd like to turn and, your attention uh, to Velissa's stream now. Oh yeah, Velissa is coming into Kraken. She missed the first sleep as well. Oh no, she didn't. She she got out outspit. That's fine. Oh, turn one she sleep. She gets the sleep. Oh, fantastic. Beautiful. So that very precise kill has just killed the Kraken. Velissa is free. Velissa is on a run. Now Bowie is about to come into the Kraken fight too. Scary, scary. Um, if you're a fan of conditional probability, I believe the chances are what now? They are... Hmm, what are the chances? What's 25 over 36? Good cause. Couldn't They're tell you. prime so this is annoying. It's about a, about a 4 and 6, which is... So there's about a 1 in 3 chance that both of our runners... Um, All right. That one of our runners gets an Ebr uh, gets, get, uh, loses the fight at this point. Now so it's Bowie's turn. probability for the win. One and three. Okay. Let's see if Bowie does it. Moment of truth. Oh. Ooh, okay. First sleep misses. That's scary. Come on, Garrett. Come on, Garrett. You Bring it home. Buddy. Oh, okay. Oh, Bowie no. now has to hit the next trap. So the sleep bomb here is 30%. Um, there and we have lost our ability to stun with Scorch. We got another attempt at sleep. Oh no! <laughs> Misses! He's down to the sleep bomb. The sleep bomb is a 30% chance. Oh, is this gonna be another sleep bomb run? Come on, Bowie. Come on, sleep bomb. Oh, oh no! Oh, he, and oh, he opted, to, he opts to reset instead of trying to take the fight. Yeah. Yeah, struggling through that fight is just not fun. He's he's making the right play here. Oh, he didn't we're, save at the right time either. He should save immediately before Kraken. We, we're, we're, so we're now coming oh, no, into we're now coming into future <laughs> future and Bowie taking the fight at the same time now. All right, future and Bowie, what do we got? 
Future turn Future one sweep. Future first try. Turn, yep, well done. Bowie is... Oh, oh no, again? Not again. Bowie hasn't been sacrificing oh, enough no. runs to the Kraken God. Oh, oh he's missed the Scorch. Uh, this is, this is precarious. This is not good, friends. Oh, not again. Oh no, come on, sleep bomb, 30%. Oh my god. Is, is, the, well, is, the, RNG, is the RNG in his save file the same? He is no, it's not. It's not the same. Um, he is he, the, the, the 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 RNG is rotating every time he does a soft reset. So he's getting different, genuinely different attempts on the Kraken. He just is extremely unlucky to miss it twice on the Kraken. Uh, this is this the whole race has been so unfortunate for Bowie. Um, it, I'm, I'm impressed he's hanging, holding it together. Well done, Bowie. Soldier on, friend. Hopefully this time. Surely this time. What? Oh, and another miss. Oh, we haven't even started talking about Tolby Overworld and stuff yet. Oh dear. We'll, we'll catch up to it. Uh, Blue's just coming into another gin fight here that can flee. Yeah, this is Hale. It's our fourth uh, Mercury gin that gives us access to the tier four Mercury summon. It's the last non-essential gin we're going to collect, actually. A uh, pretty important milestone for the run. All the gin we collect from here on out are hilariously it's busted. Slapped. Finally, the Kraken falls asleep. Finally. What a relief. And, um... Yeah, we, we will uh, be, be taking a quick break as soon as uh, Bowie is able to down the Kraken, uh, which won't be too far off in the future. Meanwhile, uh, Bluezer is heading off to get another really powerful gin called Ground. Uh, we'll talk... Oh, caught by surprise here is kind of scary. And he's fine. Never mind. It's all good. We'll talk a little bit about what's happening over here in the overworld once Bowie clears through the Kraken fight. Oh, the rat defends! Okay, so these rats are really annoying. They have a chance to flash defend, which basically reduces the damage down to 10%, uh, as opposed to taking 100%, so it's a 90% damage reduction. Um, and that rat decided to troll Bluza, which is a time loss, but... Um, whoa! Is Do my eyes deceive me? Velissa has taken the lead! What? Velissa has just overtook... It's it's neck and neck at the moment, but what happened was the armored rat added an extra turn to the encounter, and in that time, uh, Velissa has been getting good RNG, and she has now taken the lead. What a time to to uh, and take Bowie, a break. Bowie with the rainbow kill. Yeah, we're going to be setting up for a, another short break. Thanks for sticking with us, everyone. All righty, looks like everyone has a. Uh... Pause. Yes, it looks like everyone is paused. We'll be taking like I said, like uh, they all said, we'll be taking a nice five-minute break. It's a good chance for everyone to stretch, get some water, hydrate, everything else along those lines. Just a couple quick announcements. Don't forget, Summer Games Done Quick 2021 online is July 4th through the 11th. Game list is already out, and the prize submissions are now open. Go to gamesdonequick.com to find out more about submitting prizes for the event. And, of course, information on all of our Hotfix shows are going to be available at gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. From there, you can find out more information about submitting your runs to any of our weekly shows. We're going to, like I said, we're going to be taking a nice, quick five-minute break. So stay tuned. We'll begin, we'll be continuing in just a moment. And welcome back to our special Golden Sun 20th anniversary race. We got some great, it's a great race so far. We'll continue on in just a second. Just a quick announcement that Summer Games Done Quick 2021 online is going to be July 4th to the 11th. Games list is out now and prize submissions are open. So you can go to gamesdonequick.com to find out about how to, about submitting prizes for the event. And Frame Fatales, the all women speed running event will be returning on August 15th to the 21st with Flame Fatales. Game submissions will be open from May 18th to the 25th. You can go to gamesonquick.com slash framefatales for more information on the upcoming event. And don't forget, tomorrow on the Community Spotlight is going to be a Mega Man Battle Network show featuring Battle Networks 1, 4, and 5. Be sure to tune in as we celebrate Mega May. 
And now, without further delay, we turn it right back to our commentators, Plexa and The Good Cause. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to be resuming the game in just a moment here. And this last section of the game is uh, what most consider, what most runners would consider to be the late game. Um, predominantly, uh, it will be dominated by tier four summons, quick encounter knowledge, and uh, fast menuing. Yeah, look, um, a lot of runners these days have come around to the idea that uh, Kraken is the, the end of the first part of the game, and, and now we're into the end game. Kraken affords our runners a platform to go fast. It doesn't matter what's happened before or what's happening to, or what, what could happen in the future. Uh, Kraken has given you either it's, you're either ahead or behind at this point, and you just have to deal with it. I can um, speak to it a little bit. No, uh, speak to a little no, bit of the no, game right now. Sorry. No time deficit here. No time deficit here is too large. You can make all of this time back in the subsequent splits to come because there's so much RNG variance. Even Bowie, who is currently pulling up in last place due to some horrific crack in RNG, can make a comeback here if, if, the, if the cards fall just right for him. Um, I believe as in the Bowie was comeback. Saying, <laughs> as course was saying, at this point in the game, we're really relying on our tier four summons, our strongest summons in the game to kill uh, these encounters. Generally speaking, they can be cleared in one encounter, save for a couple encounters. Uh, save most uh, some encounters can be defeated by one summon, save for a few of them, which require uh, either some synergy or an attack or maybe a secondary summon in some cases. So most of the runners are coming into the Alt Miller dungeon. This is a really interesting place in the game because, in my opinion, that's where the encounters start to become incredibly dangerous. Um, and if you don't know your encounter knowledge. Um, you could end up uh, misplaying and wiping. Um, no one's going to do that today, hopefully. But there's... Uh, the typical way to deal with this dungeon would be to use your tier 4 summons, uh, exploit weaknesses, and just go through this as fast as possible that way. However, Eat. most recently in the community, there's been a new strategy. Name undetermined. Some people are calling it Captain Wayard. Um, what was the other name there, Plexa? Uh, I prefer either Gallant Isaac or Rambo Isaac, and um, Velissa, uh, uh, Bluezer has just switched into the strategy. Velissa got into this first. That is huge. Captain Wayard, Rambo Isaac, Gallant Isaac, you name it. What we do is we do our menu for the upcoming dungeon Colosso right now. What that does is we put all of our Venus Gin onto Isaac and put other people into tier two classes. It gives us the ability to get through encounters with a high probability that nobody dies. Alyssa was the first person to be able to get into this uh, in this race, well before Blue was able to. So she has actually made up significant ground. Oh, she's overtaken Blue by some margin at this point. You'll remember um, at the Blue beginning of the dungeon, just... they were neck yeah, and neck. Yeah. So Blue is Blue had to take encounters and, and to get to level 14. 14 is the minimum level for Colosso, by the way. Whereas Velissa is just screaming ahead because she's just been able to flee from everything. Huge advantage. This is a scary encounter though. People can die here, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Death warping after this dungeon is completed is actually optimal in, in most circumstances if you can do it. Blue has the exact same encounter on his screen. Let's see what happens here with him. And it looks like Velissa was level 14 coming into the dungeon. Is that right? It must be. She got into it so quickly. This is another mm -hmm. scary encounter. Um, very, very scary. Okay, this is potentially problematic here for Velissa. Oh, that forcible arm going onto Mia is amazing. She Okay, she got away there. Uh, she is well set up for a death warp. She does need to heal up and uh, be, be defensive here for a moment. But she Loser. flew through that ult -mola. That is so fast. Yeah, that wow. was incredibly quick. Bluezer also had a hard time. Um, in the previous encounter, he had half of his party wipe. You'll see that he resurrected like, Isaac after that. Yeah, looks like everybody's into um, uh, Altmiller right now. Looks like Future has also been able to get into uh, this Gallant Isaac strategy or Rambo Isaac uh, like very early on in the dungeon. Now he's pulling away from Bowie, something terrible here as well. Bowie is a little bit behind here on experience. That could be could be a problem could inhibit his ability to make the comeback. Bluezer is currently being trolled. Oh my, that is unfortunate. Wow, Felissa just made up two minutes on that. 
two minutes against this uh that's just insane what a split what a monster split that could be the race right there actually like that's so, that's that's a huge swing for this early on she's now got so much buffer to deal with all kinds of terrible rng that could be going her way spectacular it's like oh no uh Velissa could be in some trouble here this is either perfect or terrible it is in fact perfect she is she is going to be okay. She's going to get through this. <laughs> Bluzer just coming to the end of Alt Miller. And you can see Velissa did this quite some time ago. She is, she has found something. This is, this is amazing. Yeah, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Bowie is still in encounter hell. He is, he is having to grind for more experience. Finally, he sees level 14 on Isaac. He can now switch into Gallant. Um, he's waiting for a gen recovery and then he'll swap all his gen over and, and get into the flea strat. But yeah like future is made up ground on blueza wow this is this is a race folks this is a race it's really amazing to see the variance i know we've talked about that a lot in the past so far in the run but the variance that uh, dungeons like this will force onto players and uh where they come out on the other end is just so interesting yeah and these strategies are so new this, this this gallant isaac strategy i came up with like three weeks ago um it was just like you know, I was doing a run and I had this amazing idea and I was like, hey, actually, this this could work. And, and it worked out really well. And since then, we've, we've realistically found about a minute and a half of reliable time save in all our future runs. So um, the world record, which was set like four months ago, actually has this time save sitting there for available to be had. So it, it makes something like a, a 3.33, a, a realistic uh, time for this category to be pushed to, which is ridiculous. Um, Bowie is is making good progress here as well. Future is at the end of the dungeon. Both Felissa and Belusa are talking with Bobby. That's like a six minute cutscene or something terrible like that. Well, to be fair, it's a two minute cutscene followed by a four minute cutscene. So, yeah, we might be here for a while. Um, I didn't see how Belusa's party was faring going into the the Bobby discussion. I know Velissa could very well be looking for a Geth Warp here. What we need to do after this, this series of uh, cutscenes is we need to get back to Tolby. Uh, now, there are two ways to do that. You can retreat and walk back, which is pretty reliable, or you could die and be sent back to Tolby. Now, the Death Warp is faster if you get the right encounter and if you've been set up correctly. Um, Velissa has a, a pretty important judgment call to make of whether she wants to flee or if, or if she wants to, sorry, um, try the Death Warp or whether she will retreat and try and flee. I know my preference. My preference is always to walk back, uh, but maybe her risk tolerance is, is a little bit higher than mine. How's everyone's setup going so far for the retreat glitch? Do you think the, the most of the runners are going to try it or walk back? I mean, the death warp. Um, I, I only know what Velis is at. I know she's got Garrett and Isaac alive with some damage on them. Uh, oh. Okay, we got we got insight into futures set up here now, and he's trying to kill his party members off, so he doesn't mind this damage. Um, <laughs> Did I say retreat glitch? Be running back from this point. Oh what? Oh no! Oh no! What happened? Bluza overmashed after the Barbie cutscene and retreated out of the dungeon. Oh. Wow! 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 That is that is huge. Velissa has just opened up a chasm between her and the field. Oh, that is so unlucky. Oh, folks, if you had that on your bingo card... Oh, no, is he going to wipe? Oh. Bluzer is in such a precarious position right now. This is so scary. Oh, he's got to commit the second water of life into Isaac. Oh, my. Oh, the wheels have fallen off the Bluzer bus, friends. That's really oh, going to... Uh, that's really going to impact him he's later on in the game, too. Yeah, he, he's got to collect himself and, and pull himself back from this. This is hugely tilting. Losing um, those waters of life oh, here wow. means that he's he's going to have a lot less room later on in the game for bad things to happen to him. Yeah, so um, like I said, the root only gets three waters of life or three revives. We have no other access to revive. Um, I would think he is going to pick up both backup waters of life, potentially even a third, which is quite a quite a significant deviation. 
knowing Blues that he'll take the risk and probably only pick up one of them, he'll probably pick up the one in Toby. But this is that is a huge turn against him right now. Uh, Velista is very comfortably three minutes ahead at this point. Three, three thirty minutes ahead. This is wow. Um, even the worst possible Colosso, uh, which is the next series of things that's about to happen, Velista will still have a healthy lead over the field. Um, I am very, very. I'm impressed that she's been able to pull it back. She was quite behind, remember? Quite some mm -hmm. time ago, she's come from fourth place into first and a comfortable first. Yeah, coming I out of the bandits Blues fight. Though. Coming out of the bandits fight, she was fourth place and Bluzer was in first. And, um, well, we can see how that's going now. Yeah, I mean, I feel for Bluzer. That is such a horrific way to lose time. I mean, I, I have done that myself. Velissa's doing the run back. I approve. I approve. This is what I would do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, I have done this before. I've done this um, right before the final fight in the Lost Age. I have retreated back to the beginning of the dungeon, which is horrific. I have retreated in Venus Lighthouse a couple times. Like, I'm I'm notorious for it. So I, I know what Bluzer's going through. It's awful. Um, but Velissa is uh, about to enter Colossa. Everybody else is dealing with Barbie. I wonder if anyone's going to go for the Death Warp. I think Blue will. Yeah, but yeah. we'll see. I think Velissa so... opting to skip the backup order of life. That's interesting. When Bluzer typically plays like this when he does normal rounds, what will happen is if he if he gets behind or if he feels like he's behind, he'll start playing riskier. So I think that he might go for the Death Warp. Yeah, that's that's probably a strong play for him. He's got damage on both Isaac and Garrett. Um, pretty pretty decent chance here. Mm -hmm. um, so Velissa picked up the Power Bread from those stones. Uh, the Power Bread is another stat boosting item. This is our third stat boosting item. This one is used on Ivan. It gives him basically an extra level worth of HP stats. Um, the best tanking stat in the game is not defense, it's HP. And this is basically going to allow Ivan to tank a little bit more things during the final fight. He may, if you ever see him survive with like four or eight or seven HP in the final fight, the power bread was at play there. And is the option for using the power bread on Isaac still viable, or has that been uh, has that been fleshed out? Yeah, the issue with power bread on Isaac was always well. The reason we did it was because if you didn't do it. It was highly likely that Azart, which is the first Colossal Gladiator, would get extra actions off. And um, seeing as we're about at that point, let's explain the Colossal Gladiators. They're very easy fights. They're they're basically scripts. You you run a summon, you run some, you run three or four Ragnaroks, and you win the fight. The only way these fights can go off script is if they crit you, which is basically dead and run over, or if they use their nuts. And each time they use a nut, you lose 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, the nut heals about 200 so, HP and causes an extra two turns of, uh, of the combat. Blusa, Blusa is going for the death warp, by the way. If you watch, he's trying to death warp to a, to a mole, which is Ooh, not unideal. a good death warp. Not a good... He is, he is definitely losing time compared to um, just doing the run back. Yeah. Um, so the whole reason we don't do... We, we moved off from Power Bread Isaac to Power Bread Ivan was because it gave Azart an extra action. That extra action basically opened up another opportunity for Nut to be used. And if the Nut is used, uh, well, you, you're turns. losing 20 seconds. Um, we've recently come up with another strat, which is slightly slower, um, but it avoids needing to Power Bread on Isaac. And it's just, uh, yeah, then we can put the Power Bread on Ivan, which we prefer for in-game reasons. Mm -hmm. Future is trying to death warp. He got a bad first encounter. Ooh, he rolls nice. the dice. He gets a much better second encounter. This is a good death warp for him. Still a slow death warp, though. Um, Velissa definitely made the right call in the run back. Um, run back's fast, folks. Yeah. I, I Bowie say, is also deciding to run back. Interesting. Reliable strategy. Exactly. It's amazing how, All right. like, at, at that Alt Miller split, Velissa just extended a huge, huge lead. Um, of course, uh, we, we saw Bluzer do the, the mistake the retreat input, but even without that, it was uh, still a, a giant leap forward for Velissa. Yes, yeah, so something very interesting just happened on future stream. He committed the power bread into Isaac. So he'll be doing the, the old school, slightly faster strats on Azart. Um, but in exchange, he's going to have a much riskier Ivan in the final fight. So maybe that'll come into play later on. Um, a lot of people like the Colossus segment. Let's explain the Colossus segment really quickly. It's basically a series of mini challenges, and then Isaac does a one-on-one -on -one battle with a gladiator at the end of the at the end of the thing. 
A lot of people have fond memories of this that get their party members to help and basically cheat and allow you to pick up all the items really easily and just run around because basically the, uh, the other gladiator runs on a timer. He has a fixed set of time to reach the item and whoever gets to the end first gets better equipment basically. Um, so what you'd do is you'd use all your party members to uh, cheat and give yourself advantages during the course to guarantee you can pick up all the items and still get the, uh, the best gear at the end of it. Of course, being speedrunners, um, seeing as the other guy takes a fixed amount of time, we don't care about going faster through our course. We would like to speed him up. We can't, so we elect to not use any help at all. Um, mm -hmm. So Velis is coming up to the first Colossal Gladiator fight. Again, we're trying to look for nuts here. Yeah. The other uh, thing... So Velis is doing the strat. Ooh, so we don't yeah, like the oil drop oil now drop. use the nuts are in play. Uh, so if we... Oh, Ragnarok is the wrong move here. That needed to be Flint. Fortunately, got a defend. Yeah, good flint. Attack. Okay, perfect. Now she'll use ground and then judgment and clear the fight. Oh, this ground is, is a Ground is a hilariously busted gin, by the way. It removes the ability for an enemy to act. So we're going to make extensive oh. use of that in the Saturus Minati fight at the end of the game. Uh, this ground here to prevent the, the, the gladiator from using a nut while we build up to our tier 4 summon so smart. is a, a neat little trick you can do. No, that, that's, 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 that's huge. Um, you just blew my mind with the strategy here. I've never seen that being used before. So one of the major threats when you're in Colossal Gladiator fights <laughs> is that uh, one of the gladiators, or all of them rather, can use Defend when you're going to use your uh, your Judgment Summon, which takes a huge chunk of your damage potential away. But what Velissa just did there, using Ground, eliminating the action prior to using the Judgment Summon, made it so that the gladiator could not use Defend. Just blew my mind there. That that's not true, actually. Really? <laughs> it can use defend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. So actually, 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 <laughs> what's going on there is that? Oh no, she said yes to it's a tutorial. Oh no, uh, that loses like twenty seconds. That's unfortunate. Um, the pressure is obviously getting to her. Uh, she, I think she knows she's the head. Okay, so the point of that strategy is you keep your class multiplier really high, so you don't get in, in danger of dying to random things from Azart. Um, and by being able to use ground last, it by having sorry by having ground and something else set on the the second to last turn, you retain those class bonuses. Use ground, you lose all your class bonuses, but they don't get to go, and then you outspeed and summon. So it's just a way to um, ensure that you don't die, basically, <laughs> without needing to use the power bread and without giving Azart an extra opportunity to use a nut. That's 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 all that there is to it. Unfortunately, they can still defend. Very, very annoying. Huh. You hate to see the defend. In fact, if, even more annoying with that strategy because you have um, uh, extra damage you need to make up. I think Velissa tried to do that with the Ragnarok or she just forgot. Um, if you get that extra Ragnarok and it does make if, uh, a defended judgment a little bit easier. There's Velissa just throwing some swag there with the instant climb. Instant uh, climb. Loser hype. is doing conventional strategies. He could get nutted right here. This is a problem. Yeah, and he gets nutted. Yep. Oh. That is unfortunate. That's 20 seconds time lost there. That's basically the time Velissa just expended in the uh, tutorial. Oh, a second nut. Uh, yeah, that's plus 40 seconds. Future may be overtaking Loser here. We'll see. Ooh, the oh, crit. the crit. That's actually scary. Uh, Future yeah. needs to heal here. Yep, he and he does. Oh, the oil, oil drops. Drop. Nuts are in play. Mm. Just got to get through two actions. Two actions. I think we see a nut here. Nice, nope, nice. Future gets it. He gets the good fight. Oh. Bowie and uh, Melissa into their respective fights. Bowie going for the risky apple stretch. This is a range. He could die here. Uh, nuts are activated uh, on the Satrich fight with, with Melissa. That's pretty scary. The uh, Azart in Bowie's screen nutted. Yeah, he used the nut. Um, so this is a bit spooky. Is uh, is Velissa just getting perfect Satridge? It looks like it. Perfect. Oh wow, Velissa is on a run. This has got some pace. Double nut for Bowie. That's unfortunate. Um, this run has not been kind to him. No, he. Is oh, and the crit. Wow. That is, that is some RNG. Poor Bowie. So, Blue and Future are neck and neck right now. That is crazy. 
Oh, Bowie playing it safe. I think Ragnarok here kills, but he's quite right to not take the risk. If he if he has to reset here, it's just... He just gets put further and further behind. Oh, it doesn't kill. He did calculate it correctly. Wow. There we go. Finally dead. Terrible, terrible ass art fight. Uh, when the game is mean, good cause. The game is mean. Absolutely. And, and you know, I'm not even too... Um focused on where they where they are in retrospect to each other right now because the as we know as we joke in the community one of the splits coming up shortly um venus lighthouse 2 which is the last dungeon in the game is where um the great are made <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i mean just today even i was on a run uh, that was like a minute behind uh, well like two minutes behind on the right before Venus 2, and I made up three minutes in the Venus 2 split. It's, wow. it's so swingy, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come to Venus 2. We'll see if Bluza gets better nut RNG here. Um, so Velissa is doing the final fight, Navampa. Navampa is actually an optional fight. If you defeat Navampa, you unlock an event in TLA, and you get a reward in the lure cap, which is pretty useless for us because it increases your encounter rate, which is the opposite thing we want to do. Um, so basically, we just try to die as quickly as possible. And she gets the instant climb. Oh, is she's going for... She is just styling on the game now. <laughs> <laughs> Love to see uh, her. I, 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 am, I am not brave enough to do that. Kudos to her. All right, Blue is into his Satridge fight. What's going on with Seti? But yeah, it's actually... Um, Velissa's coming into the last fight here, and it, it's, it's actually faster to lose. Correct. Uh, Bluza has Nuts enabled, Future doesn't. That's kind of big. Aha, but they... Okay, they're both in a very similar situation. Hmm. Ah, uh, no, Blue Blue goes for it. He goes for the kill. The risk. Fantastic. Fantastic. Was there, was there a lot well of played. risk in that? Sorry? Was there a lot of risk in what Blue just did there? Or was he pretty safe in... Uh, if, it? if he calculated that correctly, he is completely fine. So Velissa purposely loses the last round here uh, so that Navampa gets a stronger weapon. The idea here is that, that uh, Navampa two hits us. One hit and hopefully doesn't use the nut. And there we go. Good. Well done. Perfect Good fight. Split. Navampa can do a Basically few things. Like he, can, he can use smoke bomb. He can defend, which just, you know, it doesn't kill you, but it adds time. Yeah, the, the worst thing is, is when you hit Navampa, it, it activates his ability to use the nut. And then you can go smoke bomb, nut, sleep bomb, defend, defend. And it's like, oh, please just hit me. I'm trying to lose here. <laughs> All right, Bowie. Oh, no, turn one smoke bomb. Uh, nuts are activated on Bowie's stream. Um, hopefully doesn't use them. Knowing it's Bowie's luck. There it is. There's the nut. There oh, has, he, has he had any He's... nuts miss? No. no, so far, no. This, this, oh, oh, there it is, the God. double nut. You hate to see that. Oh, the, the, the game is being so cruel to Bowie right now. It's hard to believe, actually. <laughs> wow. Like, this, oh, poor Bowie. This, this much bad RNG for, for the same player is probably... I feel like that's pretty rare. <laughs> you'd, th you'd think it's pretty rare, but it happens more often than you think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just all of it fixated on the same player, though. Yeah, you know, like, there's going to be a moment in Bowie's run where it's going to break, and he's going to get some amazing RNG out of nowhere. Um, to have consistently bad RNG to the tune that he's had through this entire run is pretty incredible in and of itself. Um, I am very much hoping that he, he comes into Suhala, which is the next major split, and is able to uh, get all Me the too. skips that we, that we have there. We talked about this. Is... Go ahead. We talked about this a little bit earlier in the game when we were around the Bilibin area, which had a high degree of encounter skips. But the Sohala Desert split, which we're coming into soon, is another one of these cases where there's a lot of potentials for encounter skips based off of um, the scripted fights around you. Exactly. Um, so in about four minutes and. 15 seconds, Velissa will finally be free from this cutscene. This is the longest cutscene outside of the intro. It takes forever. Um, so we got all the time in the world to chat about Sue Haller and what's to come. Future is just screwing around because he can. Like, there's absolutely no risk right now for him. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, we will definitely talk about Sukala once we've cleared out through Colosso. What do we got coming into the Vampa. Blue attack. That's nice. good. Nice. We got the second. Oh, we got the smoke, smoke bomb. bomb. Okay, that's not good. Nut. No. Oh, oh, yeah, I oh. hate to see it. Here we go. Here we go. Sleep bomb. Sleep bomb. No. Oh, no. Finally, good, good, good. Yeah, there we go. Good. All right, that's still unfortunate. Navampa can be annoying like that. Oh, what does future get? It's a double attack. Perfect. Perfect, perfect Navampa. So blue and future are neck and neck right now, and Bowie is a course behind. He's about two minutes off pace. Velissa is just so far ahead right now. It's it's kind of crazy. So I guess we can start talking about Suhala. So there are two deserts in this game. One of them is Lamakan, which we've already crossed, and the other one is Suhala. Uh, Suhala is very unique in that it has a series of scripted fights throughout the dungeon. Um, there are these tornado lizards that you need to cast Douse on to fight. And that the lore is you... Uh, there's all these tornadoes that have come out of nowhere. They're throwing people all around the world. Um, and you work out miraculously that using Douse on them actually stops them from being a tornado and you fight these lizards which are generating these tornadoes. What that actually means for us is that it sets up a series of checkpoints for where if we're able to get from one from the entrance to the lizard or the lizard to the next lizard or the lizard to the next lizard without getting an encounter we can skip an encounter. There are seven encounter, encounter skips coming up through to the end of Suhala Desert. Each encounter skip counts for anywhere from uh, 10 seconds through to about 20 seconds, depending on how bad that encounter is. So uh, multiply that by seven, let's say worst case scenario, you can you can lose over two minutes on the split coming up. It's insane. And of course, you've had to endure all the RNG to this point anyway, you have to skip all the nuts and all that, that horrible stuff. Navampa for um, Bowie coming up here. Yeah. yeah. Does he, he gets the perfect, perfect fire. Navampa for Bowie. So yeah, uh, Suhala is the taste of what's to come. Like sure, these, these encounter skips now are only 20 seconds, but the next dungeon, they're gonna be 30 seconds. And then uh, dungeons after that could be even longer depending on how horrific the encounters are. So Velissa has a comfortable lead, um, very much a firm favorite right now to take it home, but big RNG swings can happen and the, and the gap could close. I um, mean, if I were to, to throw some money out right now and guess who was going to be the first to the top of the lighthouse, I, I would say Velissa, clearly. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean that she's going to win the race. I it think she would just be at the at the area the first because there's a lot of things that can go wrong on the final bosses that could screw the screw up her her run right now. It's super safe to say Velissa will be the first one to Venus too. Oh yeah, entering Venus too. Yes, I, I'd say at, with the lead she has at the moment, I'd say even to the Airy. It's it is, this is huge. She, she could get the worst possible Suhala, which I've personally never seen. Like even people who do pick up a fail every encounter skip at least get good encounters there. Um, she could have that happen, and she'll still be in the lead. So I'm very confident that she can make it to the Airy with even suboptimal RNG and and be fine. Um, the issue for her is going to be clearing the final bosses, so it'll be interesting to see if she picks up any additional Waters of Life. Do we have a counter on how many Waters of Life each player has used and how much they have available for the last fight? Um, Velissa is on three, Blues is on uh, one, no, no, zero, one or zero. Um, I believe Bowie is, is also on three, and I think Future is also on three. So mm -hmm. I think only Blues has dipped into the Water of Life chest so to speak it's a uh, kind of a unnerving spot for him to be in uh coming into the potentially the dangerous uh hour of the game yeah so i i really hope blue does pick up some waters of life but uh he's known for being a risk taker so he may just go for it um, so Velissa just undoes that menu there real quick. She splits her gin up across everybody. As before, she's set up in such a way that when she uses a summon, after one tick of recovery, all of her gin will come back from that summon. And that just optimizes the efficiency. By the way, she got the first encounter skip. If you Second are a Golden Sun speedrun fanatic, you have just written vote yeah in chat. Ah, she's missed the next one. This is a good encounter though. This is just a, a quick um, media synergy. Is the Elven shirt not on Ivan? Oh, yeah, she must have wow. missed that because... Oh, uh... no, 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 he's... I, Ivan's missing a level, that's why. Oh. Get 15 off... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, um... 
With the new strats, he doesn't get level 15 until uh, either two encounters or the first tornado lizard. I see. Yeah, she checks. She checks the Elven shirt. She's like, "What? What happened there?" <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just because uh, Ivan's missing a bit of a level. That's fine. It's, it's not a big deal. This is the desert now where Velissa's coming into. You'll see the uh, lizard fight in just a moment here. It's a pretty quick fight. It's very optimized. Um, the only bad thing that can happen is Ward, but I think that there's a strategy to get around it, so it's inconsequential now. Well, it's, it's Runner's Choice, actually. Um, there, there's three ways to approach this fight. You can clear it quickly, which is just Ground Judgment Tiamat, which is uh, fine. Velissa is going for the Risky Strat, where you just do uh, Judgment Tiamat. The hope here is that it uses uh, Wing Stroke or whatever it's called to get damage on a lot of people's Storm Raid. That works too. Mm -hmm. Velissa wants to get damage on people so she can cure it off later for a retreat warp that can potentially get an encounter skip. So that's kind of interesting. This is what uh, I actually do. The risk with the strat that Velissa did, the risk to what Velissa just did is that it can use ward, and if it uses ward, it increases its resistance and it doesn't die. She didn't have a backup strat there, so she got very lucky that she didn't get warded. That's actually the other way the... to clear this fight. The other way to clear this fight is by using synergy with Isaac to do a, a ground quake sphere judgment procne. And that is one six slower than this strategy that Velissa is doing, but has the advantage that uh, it can't use ward. Uh, so, wins oh, Velissa is just, is, this is fantastic. Uh, perfect RNG here for Velissa. This is exactly what she And she got an encounter skip too, by the way. She has now uh, failed the first one, got the next one, got the next one. That is huge. She is, she is off to a flyer. Beluza has just finished the Barbie cutscene. He is making the trip to the shop to pick up a Water of Life. Very sensible. Velissa gets an amazing encounter here. This this is a, a one tier four encounter. Don't have to do anything special. Um, this here is the hardest encounter skip to get, so you don't mind seeing this encounter. And if it's a one summon encounter like this just was, is that's just amazing. Uh, Future is opting to skip the Water of Life. I believe he's got three, and that's why he's skipping it. Blue really needed right. it. So glad to see him pick it up. Um, when I run this game, I actually do what Velissa is doing right now, with uh, with one uh, with one exception. I had one run where I got warded by all three of the lizards, and because of that, um, it's not optimal. But I, I add in a procne on Garrett to secure the kill. Um, it's it's like a one second menu, and uh, doesn't happen if you don't need it. But the flip side to that, of course, is that if it does go off, you're very vulnerable if you get a quick encounter after that. Yes, yeah, so, so some things happened here. Velissa used ground on the last one because Isaac's PP is drained, so don't need to worry about ward, that's fantastic. Future missed an encounter skip, got a similar encounter to Bluza here in, in the Suhala overworld part, um, but but Bluza doesn't yes. know where the shop is because oh, he never picks up this water of life. Is he going for the uh, second? So he's picking up a, yeah, he's going, for, he's going for the extra water of life. Oh, he, he, has, he had no waters of life left, that makes so much sense. Oh. So Future has snuck ahead of Blue here. Crazy stuff. Uh, Velissa is trying to get one encounter to Flash. She got a very early encounter. She's probably going to pick up two encounters here. If she gets what, if she doesn't, then she has again got another encounter skip and is on an insane and pace. Flash is a, is probably one of the most. She got the encounter skip. She got the encounter skip. This is oh. huge. She's got. She has only missed one encounter skip. This is wow. What a pace. This what is a pace. probably a, a very strong. Uh, like secure, uh, really strong security for her um, in, in completing the run ahead of everyone else. Um, just because this, of the amount is, of RNG is, that has to happen this is the for Sue everyone of else. Dreams. This is the Sue Heller of Dreams cause. This is like, you never get this RNG. This is so good. This is, this is Amazing. unbelievable. That's a sub three flash. That's so good. A flash, wow. by the way, is another gen. We haven't spoken about flash. Flash is busted. Can, uh... Flash gives 90% damage reduction when used on priority. Just ridiculous gen. It's the reason we go out of our way to pick it up, even though it doesn't give us an extra summon. Bliss is just doing a quick menu to distribute her defensive gen ground and flash out. A uh, bluzer is not getting encounter skips. Future is not getting encounter skips. That is a good encounter to get. That's a single tier four. What is going on with Velissa's street right now? Velissa she is getting all is, the luck what here. What is happening? And the, um... How do I get this RNG in my hands? Wow. <laughs> Flash is uh, probably the most overpowered Jenny in the entire game. Um, and not probably, I mean that definitively. It is Which... the strongest. It gives Let's us... worry about that in a moment because she is trying to outrun the Storm Lizard. Is she going to make it? She got another encounter skip. What oh. is going on? <laughs> what is actually going on? <laughs> One encounter lead from Suhala. She got. All but one encounter. Oh, steps, literal steps from skipping this encounter as well. What did she eat for breakfast? This is incredible. Future is a clear tornado ahead of Bluza. He must have got an encounter skip too. 
Amazing. What is going on? Like, a, a blue and Bowie on the same encounter? Um... It looks like if it. I just, no, 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 sorry. The blue blue is a hit by one encounter. Sorry, I'm getting so excited by Velissa right now. Like, I, I this is this RNG is unbelievable. Absolutely yeah. unbelievable. That put her ahead quite a bit. Everyone else is... We'll see how, where they are at the end of their uh, Sohala split, but... Um... No. Future is a clear lizard ahead of Blueza right now. The classic Future in-game luck is coming through. This is unreal. So... Oh, but Velissa's in Suhala Gate. We need to talk about this. Well, Suhala Gate is either one, two, or three encounters. Three is terrible. One is uh, perfect. She got an uh, early one. Caught by surprise here is... Yeah, caught by surprise is a bit scary, but this looks fine. They're not doing anything scary. She should clear this, no problem. An encounter skip in Suhala Gate is a 30 second uh, swing in her favor. Um, she has Isaac's PP set up in such a way that it increases her chance of getting the skip to 40%. Um, that could be huge. Uh, so, oh, she oh. miscalculated and the gnome is getting an action off. It's a slow action. It's not going to do anything. Um, it will actually help her do the, the retreat warp, actually, so that's kind of nice. Yeah, she'll have Future the... Future is taking down Flash. She'll have the ability to heal here and secure the Retreat Warp. Yep, exactly. Um, All right, Future's oh, got but she Flash. Gets the quick second... Oh, that's fine. She got a quick second encounter, but it's an easy one to clear. Meteor will clear that out. Okay, she's, she got normal RNG in Suhala Gate. Finally, the RNG is normalized for her. Wow, okay. For now. Um, now she's going to... She's Yeah, she, now she's going to get onto Venus 1, which is... Uh, there's no encounters there because of a, a random glitch. Um, but now Future is attempting to leave the desert. Uh, I think he's going to be okay. Yep. Do you want uh, to take the uh, reveal glitch in Venus 1 for a sec? What's that? Do you want to take the uh, reveal walking trick in Venus 1? Yeah, absolutely. So when we're entering Venus 1 here, you'll see that Velissa's uh, spamming uh, reveal. And what this basically does is it adds a... Uh, might be explaining it incorrectly, but it adds a, a layer of map over top of the original and when we're walking in that layer um, We actually don't generate any um, Encounter rate, so there's no risk of us getting an encounter while we're walking in reveal We essentially do that here to uh, avoid all encounters in this section of the um, dungeon Yeah, and, and these encounters here are like the same as this, uh, as to Gate, but worse So getting an encounter here is like again a 30 second swing against you so you, you don't want to see that it's just quicker to spam reveal um it, this is interesting it's a english english and international exclusive glitch it is not available in the japanese version um so that's kind of fun something really uh, really interesting Melissa wants to get blue path here uh blue path saves four minutes over yellow path so hopefully she gets blue you can't do anything about yellow, it okay, so, yeah it's this is a straight 50 50. it's dependent on frame count there's nothing you can do to manipulate it uh, so she will retalk to the statue and trigger the blue path because uh, that again saves a ton of time. Yes. Loser is on his way out of the desert. He did not get the encounter skip leaving. Bowie Someone, got an encounter uh, right for Flash. That is so unfortunate. But I Bowie is catching on blue. This is this is getting scary. I saw someone in chat mention this, but uh, it's just uh, they, they were just pointing out how um, Velissa and Future are ahead of the first or sorry second and third place runners right now. Like what an upset. But it's not over, so uh, it's I over. I know. It's, it's the RNG. Like, the RNG in this game is nuts. Like, this this part of the game is so swingy. And, look, Future in the community is known for getting unreasonably good luck. This is a perfect encounter. This is a judgment yeah. encounter. Look at him go. <laughs> um, just, Let's go. Like, Future is notorious for getting just the most ridiculous RNG that, that we've ever seen. Absolutely. He's the only person to ever get the Tunnel Ruins encounter skip. Like that's not, that's like usually Tass only, but this guy he's got he's got the luck of a of a magician on the side. These guys, um, they're also yeah, focused like, right now. You can just tell. Yeah, like Future is generally considered to have the weakest early game, but his end game luck is no joke. It's a real thing. The last three runs he's had at Venus Lighthouse, he's had double attacks first in Venus Lighthouse twice. Uh, sorry, all three runs he's had double attacks first, which is ridiculous. That is so unlikely. But that's just future XRNG for you. I'm actually so proud of Future right now in this moment because I know coming into this he was a little bit uh, anxious that he might be really behind, but he is uh, <laughs> more than holding. He's up. holding his own. So yeah, proud. look, if I was Future right now, my scary part of the game is over. I'm in my comfort zone. I am in my end game. I can luck this one out. I've got this. Bowie has just left the desert. I think he got the. I don't know if he got the encounter skip out of the desert. Um, 
but he didn't have a great desert from just eyeballing it. Yeah, and Valis is entering the final stretch of dungeons, um, and this is where your encounters start to become incredibly dangerous, and if you misplay, you might end up with a wipe. You have to usually mitigate the yeah. enemies in some way by either grounding them or using flash. Yeah, actually, Felissa had a really good encounter, but she, she's clearly uh, unfamiliar with this one. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't clear this with a, with a single tier four. I think just the pressure must be getting to her. She knows these ranges. She knows them. Uh, Future missed the yellow uh, blue path, by the way, so he had to second try blue path. Um, that is a very early encounter. That retreat warp that, she, that Felissa did only skips one screen, but that screen is enough to boost the chance of one encounter from... Uh, boost the encounter, the chance of getting one encounter to like 60%. Uh, the fact that she missed it is, uh, got that really early encounter is unfortunate. She will pick up a second encounter. She will not get the encounter oh, skip before yet, the, why, before the cutscene. What happened with Bowie? Sorry? I was just noting that she got the encounter before the cutscene. Yeah, Future is doing the Rage Flea before Lalavera and he paid the price. That's fine. Uh, that's, a, that's a generally accepted gambit that you can play. Uh, the correct way to heal here is to pick up the Water of Life and use the Water of Life on uh, the person who died rather than visit the Sanctum because going to the shop and buying Water of Life is faster than going to the Sanctum. So we'll see what he does there. Mm -hmm. Bowie misses the encounter skip in Suhalagate. I don't think anybody got the encounter skip in Suhalagate. Um, but Future got good encounters, so he made up some time there. Blues are coming up on his path choice. What's he going to get here? 50-50. If Felissa gets a, a, another yellow encounter path. on this screen, <laughs> uh, another yellow path, um, if Felissa gets a third encounter on this screen, it's actually, I think, more than what the average would be. Um, I yes, think that, yes, you're quite right. Yeah, so that would, that would actually Two equalize a little bit. Yeah, that'd be a 30 swing, second swing against her, depending on encounter, of course. Mm -hmm. um, like, on average, it'd be about a 30 second swing. Um, it's, she did get oh. that encounter quite early, so it's, it's a possibility. Yeah. Nah, future's we'll going for the revive in the sanctum. That's fair. Respect that play. Maybe he wants the water of life or something else, or maybe he doesn't realize that you can do water of life. Not everybody is familiar with some of these weird in-game ticks. They're kind of oh, he, oh, he's okay, doing he both. wants to pick up the water of life for in-game. He wants the water of life for fusion dragon. That makes sense. Yeah, it's I it's the safe play. play. It's the safe play for sure. I would do the same thing yeah. probably. Yeah. Respect. Respect. Really Bowie curious. is now doing his Venus, uh, Venus one. I hope Bowie gets a blue path here. Yeah, he, he, he more than has earned it at this point. So Future is opting not to go for the retreat warp. That almost guarantees that he's getting two encounters here, but that's, a, that's a, again, a respected play. He's making a trade-off. He's not draining Isaac's PP until the very end of, t of um, Tunnel Ruins, mm. which Valissa had to expend extra time to do that in Suhala Gate. Uh, sorry, in Suhala, sorry. And uh, so Future will have a faster PP drain. However, he will get an extra encounter for sure. So because Velissa didn't get any Ooh. encounter skips. Oh, that was the, bad for oh Future. No. Come on, Future. Come on, Future. Hold it together. Oh, no. I don't think he knew how to deal with this encounter. I, I, don't, I don't know. I think he meant to use a summon, but he can't. Yeah. Future, okay. That's okay, that's okay. It's not too bad of a time loss. He can he can come back from this. Yeah, absolutely. But it does mean there's been a lead change. Yep. I, I didn't see if um, Bowie got blue path, but he um, he at least got it this time. Yeah, I got distracted there with uh, with what was happening with Future, but yeah, the Blues yeah, is now overtaken so second place. Still, Velissa has cleared all of uh, Barbie Lighthouse. She is a very, very comfortable lead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that encounter that Future had looked like it was an easy, an easy judgment, but uh, maybe, maybe he it was more complicated yeah, he than that. Put, he missed him put on Ivan twice. He, he he knows that. He knows he needed to use judgment. He even covered the damage with media to be to be safe. Uh, but he just, he just he must have fat fingered the left and and defended instead. It's it's such a, such yeah. a shame. Nerves can get really high at this point in the game because you're there's such a high punishment for doing any type of mis misinputting. Yeah. Like, we, like we've been saying, it's like every time you pick up an extra encounter, it's a 30 second swing one way or another. And the so, other thing that players can often do is uh, over check and waste time by like double checking menus or things like that. So it's, a, it's, it's just really high on your nerves. Everyone's performing exactly. very well. And, 
Yeah, Blues have got a very similar encounter. He got two skeletons. He's correct that that's a Judgment Procne. Um, you should have got an amazing I encounter think... here. That's a fantastic encounter. That's a one summon. You love to see it, but it's an early encounter. So mm. this time he went for the retreat warp, which I don't know if I agree with at this point, but he made the play anyway. Uh, he did get a good encounter, so that's that's nice, uh, but he will probably pick up a second encounter as well. So unfortunately, the gamble does not pay off. Mm. Not before the cutscene, um, though, we'll which is nice. Loser. Uh, Bowie has got a very late encounter here. Oh, so and a... even though this, this is a nasty encounter, However, Bowie's got a chance of getting the encounter skip. If he gets the encounter skip, he could very well leapfrog future here, which is insane because Bowie got completely destroyed by RNG this entire run. He's mm -hmm. really making a strong comeback here. And uh, Bluzer also has a chance to get a second encounter. If Bluzer gets a second encounter, again, could Bowie could overtake Bluzer. What a race. And Velissa's just finishing up the uh, statue puzzle. What, after she's done this, if she, if she um, skips the encounter in the next room, she's in the home stretch. She'll be in the Venus 2 dungeon, which we have been talking about previously. Quite the infamous dungeon. Um, this is where uh, the the, <laughs> the winners are made, and uh, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. The whole run is basically made in Venus Lighthouse. Now, uh, if Velissa does skip this encounter, she'll only be the second person to ever skip the encounter in Tunnel Ruins. So, um, I, if I was a betting person, I would say she is going to get an encounter in the next room. It just depends on what that encounter is. If it's a caught by surprise, uh, that could be a great equalizer in this race. We will we will have just have to wait and see. Mm hmm. We'll see. Oh yeah. Oh, she got the skip. What? Amazing. God, Alyssa, what, what what did you have for breakfast? Unless I missed an encounter, which is entirely possible, but that is... Yeah, it could have happened, but like, either way, the the, uh, the encounter skip there is huge. Absolutely huge. She is, she is a clear dungeon head now. That's not a great encounter. So basically right now, every encounter is going to require a protective gin and usually two tier four summons. Uh, some encounters you can clear with like a Boreas or, or a Judgment if you get very lucky, but it's very unlikely to happen. Um, so, yeah, basically right now she's just trying to get through these fights as quickly as possible, dealing with the RNG as she gets them. These fights can take a very long time. As you can see, the enemy, uh, the enemy uh, monsters are getting actions off. Those actions add to the turn count. Fire Blessing outspeeding is scary. Oh no. Oh no, why is I Ivan so slow? That uh -oh. could be a concern for Velissa, but she is handling it like a champ. She got very lucky. Good RNG there. Is he uh, under leveled? She will definitely be healing. Uh, yeah, she just got level 16, so maybe she did skip Tunnel Ruins encounter and is, is slightly under leveled than Ivan, but um, she also doesn't commit the mint to Ivan, remember? She committed right. the mint to Isaac all that time ago, so that, that, mm -hmm. that decision to not mint Ivan is kind of haunting her right now. Um, obviously, she could never have expected to get such an insane run with so few encounters, um, but, you know, good case, and she's kind of feeling the pinch on that, but she does have the extra level now, she should be fine. Yeah. Uh, Blue and Future both skipped the encounter, I believe. No, no, Future got the encounter. They're in the same room. It, Blue and Future are in the same room. Yeah. Quite and impressive. Bowie, oh no, Bowie gets the second encounter. And he's not set up either. Oh, he oh, doesn't have no. flash. He doesn't oh, know. He, doesn't he has all the wrong summons to clear this fight. You want Boreas and Judgment for this fight, and he's got Thor and Media. That's super At least Thor is effective against the Griffin. Yeah. Oh, so, no, no, Thor is good against the Griffin, but you don't need Thor. It's, yeah. Thor is a really slow ability, but... Absolutely. He's got no choice. He has to use it. He has to use it. I think he's um, going to be able to get out of this alive. Yeah, he he, he'll be fine. He had ground, but if he didn't have ground and he didn't have flash, that was a potential wipe for him, which was scary at this point in the game. Uh, super happy that he was able yeah. to clear that one. That was a tricky uh, off-script fight. Yo, uh, Bluza got the swag move. Oh, no, he didn't. Never mind. I thought he had the swag move. <laughs> <laughs> you can... No one's going for the swag move. I'm only going to go for the swag move. That's a shame. <laughs> is that the clip in the last Future room that you're referencing? With the move. <laughs> Sorry? Is that the clip in the last room that you're referencing? Yeah, the room that Blues are in Future are in right now, you can m do two moves from the staircase instead of having to reposition. Oh. Um, it's really, really precise and hard to get, but it's really swaggy when you do it. And, you know, swag is time neutral. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you got to flex God, on Vel people. Vlissa is so far ahead. Um, she is... 
She's had two encounters, which is normal by this point. She is about a third of the way through the dungeon, um, probably looking at a seven, a, a seven or a six encounter lighthouse, which is six is good, seven is normal. So she is, she is on pace. She is um, clearing the dungeon as she needs to, making good progress. She is uh, about to pick up the Gaia Blade. So if, if, if we are not looking when she picks it up, it's basically the best weapon in this game, quote unquote. Um, the Gaia Blade is useful not for its plus attack stat, but for its plus elemental power stat. That plus elemental power is going to make our Judgment Summon a lot stronger for the final battle, and uh, that's going to be a key part of our strategy to defeat the final bosses. Bowie gets a eh, kind of meh encounter. At least he can Boreas Judgment this one, mm -hmm. uh, but that's pretty unfortunate. Be interesting to see if Bluzer and Future get the encounter skip in the room after the puzzle. Yeah, they they uh, they probably will. Uh, Felissa just got an amazing encounter. The double Bolter oh, yeah. Beast is one of the best encounters you can get. That's a single tier four summon Claire. That is amazing. We um, love a little bit early, so she's probably on track for seven encounters at this point. But having a fast encounter is very good. And we love to see that. We love to see one summon encounters, especially at this point in the game. Oh, another really good encounter if she knows how to clear it properly. Yeah, with with. The Chimera Mage oh, there, Oh, she missed input. She missed input media. That's not going to matter. She can clear it with Boreas afterwards. Um, but that's fine. A little bit of time lost there. Yeah. Future skips an encounter. He is into Venus Lighthouse alongside Blue. Future is playing it safe. Blue safe. is just out there. They're basically tied entering the screen. That is insane. Wow. I can't believe how close this race is. Like, Future died, remember? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, and and it, Bluzer also uh, mistakenly used the retreat uh, ability in uh, in Alt Miller. Yeah, this is this is insane. Uh, Bowie is finally getting into the statue puzzle. He he can make this up. We'll see what happens. Blue and Future are just basically tied. This is ridiculous. Uh, so, uh, Velissa's just picked up the Gaia Blade. Oh, they both uh, they got both single mob move. encounters. They're both good encounters too, if they know how to clear them properly. Mm -hmm. uh, they're both, uh, you, uh, with uh, the Griffin you need to use ground, but the Golem you don't. But the Golem generally has longer summons, so they're about the same time as well. Future went uh, for the, the Thor there. The puzzle that Blissa's in is really long, by the way. Let's go ahead. Future went for the Thor there. Oh, Mia surviving with one HP on Future stream. It's, it was the uh, Truncheon fist, fist proc, I believe. So um, there's a percent chance that that ability can take you down to one HP, and I believe it procs, which is a shame. Uh, more likely. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Blue okay. actually came out of that fight significantly ahead. So that's. Uh, ooh, we'll have to see what the rest of the lighthouse holds. Mm -hmm. It's getting there. Melissa's almost done this puzzle, yeah. and then she's in. Uh, she's basically in the home stretch for uh, the final boss fight. There'll be a few more yep. encounters, and uh... Bowie has just made it into the lighthouse, so he is uh, chasing up the rear. He's not too far behind. Um, some good RNG here could very much swing him back into the race. Loser gets unfortunate rate. Uh, Bowie with the decent save. encounter though. So Velissa is currently on three encounters here. Again, Ooh. six is normal, seven is also... Oh, six is like good normal, seven is bad normal. Um, she also had a really good encounter, so she's probably going to get an encounter immediately after the switch. A future gets the dream encounter, actually. Another good encounter with single mm -hmm. tier four to clear. That's huge. Velissa's still not getting that encounter. Maybe I missed an encounter somewhere. There oh, she got Oh, that. it's a single Storm Lizard. That's, again, another wonderful encounter. That is a, a, a very quick kill. Love you know to how see to do it. it properly. Uh, yeah, you love to did. see it. It's, I think she used two tier four kill. summons. very good. Uh, there's a very good chance that she can make it to the end of this dungeon without a, si a last encounter. And if she can do that, that is, that's actually massive. She is... Not only has she had a really good set of RNG in the endgame so far, but she's also having a, a, an amazing Venus too. Just wow. I wonder Will how she close get that this last is. Encounter skip, though? I wonder how close this is to a PB for Velissa. Oh, she, she gets it. Is she, she got getting it? it? She got she, it. Oh yes. There's no encounter where she's wiggling. She's no encounter where she's wiggling. She, she wiggles there to get the gin recovery back. She drops down, and and wow, what a Venus lighthouse. Wow. And this. What this, did you eat for breakfast, Velissa? I want notes. I want this RNG every run. Oh wow. Truly so she's amazing. about to get into the final fights. Wow. Future and Blue are once again tied to the frame, uh, but Future picks up an extra encounter. 
But we've not fallen oh, behind either. Oh, but it's a bad encounter. Ooh, 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 this is... There's kind of three races going on right now, right? There's can Future outdo Blue? Can Bowie catch up? Can Velissa hold her lead? This is this is all coming to, to a hold now. Um, the final fights that Velissa is coming into are very scary. Uh, Minardi and Satoros have uh, very, very scary abilities that can just end the run, basically. Mm -hmm. um, Ivan is very... can die. Uh, fortunately, Velissa committed the power bridge to Ivan, so he's got a little bit more survivability. Uh, but Minardi has an ability called Death Size. Death Size can instantly kill a party member, even through a defensive Ginny like Flash, which is 90% damage reduction. Doesn't matter if you instantly die, right? Yeah. Satoros has an ability called Break. Break uh, removes our buffs. So all that extra power we added into our judgments just gets evaporated, which is sad. <laughs> what like about Resist? So, Minati has Resist. Resist increases the enemy abilities to resist our summons, which basically means our judgments do less damage, which is a shame. And finally, Satoros has Potent Heal, which heals 300 damage and just adds extra time to the fight. The strategy for the final bosses is really intricate. It's called Courthouse uh, because we're trying to get as many judgments out as we can. So Velis is going to set things up so that Mir is in a tier 4 Merc uh, Mars class, sorry. That's going to give her the access to Wish. On the first turn, we're going to do uh, Jin with Mir, Jin with Garrett, Jin with Ivan, and Summon with Isaac. And Isaac will use Judgment. On the second turn, Mir will use Wish. Isaac will use the other Venus Jin, Garrett will use Flash, and then Ivan will use Mars. In this way, we are perfectly able to cycle between a, 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 an offensive turn in the Judgment Spam and a defensive turn in the Flash turn. Remember, Flash is 90% damage reduction, so it's highly unlikely that we will die. In alternating these two turns progressively throughout Satoros Minati and Fusion Dragon, we can actually kill these fights quickly and safely. Uh, which is really really exciting um it's a, it's a really cool strategy i'm really proud of it um and there's even a little modifier that that Velissa is doing where she's going to throw in boreas and thor into fusion dragon to try and cut two turns from that <laughs> so it's all happening it's all happening now yeah I'll... future is the first person to solve the puzzle by the way future has a, a small lead over blue uh but there could just be an encounter that that hasn't happened on future's stream yet Future is being very cautious. He's taking an extra safety save. He's so scared of that caught by surprise. The caught by, by surprise, surprise at this is, point of the run is, is detrimental. Running. It's it's legitimately a seven minute time loss from this from this point. So he he's right to be safe, um, but also caught by surprise is very unlikely. Bowie is closing in. He is only about a minute behind Bluza at this point. I think spiked armor. Yo, he got a drop. Melissa got the same one. Nice. Yeah. Well, this is going to be entering the final boss fight in just a moment, at least phase one of it. Um, crazy to see how yeah. everyone's doing. Yeah, so I'm going to try to do my best to, to stay on top of all of the streams right here. Um, it's hard to keep track of all these encounters, but we will try and focus on Velissa because this is a very critical moment. If she can make it through Satoru and Minati, she probably will just win this race. If yeah. Satoros and Minati do not cooperate, anybody's game. Hugely critical moment. Blue and Future are about to enter the final screens as well. Mm -hmm. um, so Velissa is actually doing a modification which tries to end on a flint turn, uh, which is going to even speed up the Fusion Dragon even more. Future X is getting great late game RNG as expected from him. Wow. Attack from Satoros. Great turn one. Great turn one. And you'll notice so what that... we're doing is we're using we're using ground on Minati in these strategies because Minati we perceive to be the greater threat, as in she has instant death and she's got resist. So we try and prevent as many actions from her as possible. This is the first time Minati gets an action. What is she going to do? Is she going to kill the run? Supernova, perfect, love it. Uh, so Velissa is probably safe this turn unless Satoros does uh, heat flash. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Um, so just gonna do that three more times, no problem. Hopefully we don't get a break. Uh, break is not too bad with, with the setup. The with the strat that Velissa is doing, break isn't the end of the world. You just have to throw in a couple extra synergies. It's not, not a big deal. Um, but certainly anything like a potent cure or something. Oh, she's using another one on Minardi. I don't know if that's correct. Um, generally, we try to get it boosted into Satoros to make this fight a little bit smoother. But um, mm -hmm. as long as Satoros doesn't use break, it should be fine from here. But we'll, we'll have to see. 
they get the judgment off the force of troops to even take a move, right? Yeah. Exactly, which is why you like to get that boosted one into Satoros for the extra damage mm -hmm. on him. Uh, but no break yet, so so far unpunished. Bowie has a, tra a tragic encounter. The Chimera Chimera Storm Lizard is one of the worst encounters you can get. Um, but I believe that could be his last encounter in the Lighthouse. No, it's probably second to last. Impact on Satoros. Okay. Impact is scary because it can make Satoros one-shot Ivan through Granite. Remember, Granite is only 50% damage reduction. That is 24 damage right there through 90% damage reduction. That ability would have done 240 damage without flash up at this moment. So now Satoros can very much kill uh, Ivan. So, okay. I think Phyllis has just forgotten she didn't target Satoros. That could be a problem in getting Flint off. That's okay. It's not going to be enough to cost the run. We really don't want to see Heat Flash from Satoros on Ivan in this situation. If that doesn't happen, we're okay. What do we got, Satoros? What do we got? Oh, I'm so nervous for her. Inferno, perfect. Okay. Nice. Inferno is like the weakest AoE that he can do, not even targeting Ivan. Okay, that's fine. She's completely fine here. Um, death size is still a possibility, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, Future and Blue are doing the final menus. Uh, Blue's a strong menu in coming through here and giving him an advantage. Uh, Future kind of fumbling it a little bit, but he can recover. He can do it, Future. Hang in there, hang in there. No, Bluezer is also fumbling. Future is set up. Minati impacts again. That is good and bad. Good for the exact same reasons. Right. Heat Flash, Ivan, through Flash, 30 damage this time. That's 300 damage through Flash. They're all, uh, they're all flash, approaching so. it. Loser's now approaching the final boss fight, just as Bowie is approaching the the Eerie here. So there, this is a very very tight race. Okay, so so uh, Felicia has now finally targeted Satoros. Minati should die here, um, and she is set up for a Flint kill. We just need to hope and pray that Heat Flash does not go on Ivan, and I think even attack at this point is too much for Ivan to handle. So please, come on, less RNG, less potion. Oh, oh, you hate to see that. Oh, you hate to see it. Okay, so now, now um, I don't think Velissa can go for the, for the kill here, but I think she's going to try. Does she, she go for a judgment kill at this point? I, I don't think she will. I think she wants to go for the... Um, I think she wants to go for the, the, the damage here. She just needs to make up 300 damage um, on top of the flint. So she is... She might be able to do it, actually. Is she going to take the risk? If she takes the risk, I think she gets it. Uh, but it's a bit spooky. Is that all she does? Oh, she's going for it. Get Ragnarok, keep mm -hmm. the Planet Diver, and then... Uh, okay, you should have crypt on. and wouldn't slash, that's fine. 72, Ragnarok, this is important, this is important. Nice. She gets a kill, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, Velissa is set up for a 5 turn Fusion Dragon, that is disgustingly good. Well played, Velissa, well played. That is... If it cooperates. Seriously good. Seriously good stuff there. Okay. Yeah, just in time for Future to enter the final boss fight with Sadaros Minardi. So same deal here. We, we, we are really much watching Minardi's action like a hawk. Um, really don't want to see bad things come out of her here. Uh, of course, you can't do anything on the first turn, so... Uh, but remember, Future did oh, not commit haunts. the power bridge to Ivan. Haunt's fine. Didn't proc. That's fine. Uh, Bluza is resetting. He must have done the setup incorrectly. Anyway, on Future's stream here, note 108 HP on Ivan. That is about uh, 6 HP less than on Velissa's stream. That's because he didn't commit the power bread on Ivan. That could be relevant. Let's watch that as it develops. I think Bowie has just overtaken Bluza because Bluza had to reset on the bosses there. That is unfortunate. So unfortunate. I didn't see why Bluza reset, did you? Uh, yeah, he had ground set, uh, sorry, ground standby, so he couldn't oh. do a, He couldn't have a safe first turn. Really unfortunate, really unfortunate menu there. Props to Future being ahead at this point in the game. Yeah, Future is honestly playing extremely well. Uh, he could be even close to PB pace, actually. He's playing very, very, very strongly. How close do you think Veles is to PB pace? For herself. Uh, she course. is she is on three she is on three forty pace, I believe. Which is PB for her. That the, her end game has just been from Ultimate onwards has been disgusting. She is into the fusion dragon. Five thousand HP. We want to see judgment. Off turn, judgment, summon everything, judgment for the quick kill. So three judgments. So you count them down, chat. Count them down as as she gets them off. So this will be one. 
And if we get a break, it's all over. Because Mia doesn't have enough um, levels to get the strongest synergies, so there's no way to kill if, if it gets broken. So there's one. Attack, nice. perfect. Quick animation. You're really trying to minimize animations here. You have no agency over it, though, but you love to see attack. You don't want to see deadly poison. You don't want to see haunt. You don't want to see out of space. Um, out of space is the real Fang killer. Is yeah, out of space can snipe Ivan. It's not fun. Drain Fang is uh, perfect. Run killer. And this little... Future um... is, is... Attack again. Oh, this is amazing. This is incredible. Amazing RNG. Amazing RNG. Wow. All right, this is two. No break. This is two. Future is steaming through this SM fight, by the way. He has got a very good RNG so far. No issues. He could be well on his way to a perfect fight as well, which is insane. This is number two. Nice. Oh, See, one, one, another one, four, attack. Five damage. Another attack. Oh my. This is this is seriously the most ungodly of ungodly uh, fusion dragons. Is she, no, she doesn't. She doesn't go for it. She, if she could have gone for it here, yeah. the risk is that if she gets broken, she has no out. Yeah. Um, so if she get if she sees break here, then fine. But um, she should just be winning from this position. I don't think there's anything the fusion dragon can do except attack. Oh, attack! Uh, what? Oh, oh, every it's single every dragon. single action every single action has been attacked what for this fusion, this fusion dragon. dragon what seed is this can we uh, can we distribute it to everyone I, want to buy one seed Velissa, please <laughs> oh my that's that's the race that is the race she cannot lose from this position no, she will she use can't. judgment that's three she'll use boreas she'll use thor fight over gg well played Velissa. the i am unbelievably impressed Oh, and the break comes out after yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't even uh, matter at this point. Perfect. This, uh, Absolutely perfect fight. Amazing for Felissa here. This little uh, bit where they add in Boreas and Thor was something that uh, Bluzer and myself contributed to the, the courthouse strats. Amazing. The run does not end after Fusion Dragon. There is a small bit of uh, cutscene gameplay. PBs and world records have been made in that segment, so it does matter. But um, there is no denying Velissa first at this rate. This is incredible. What a perfect um, and there fight! There is GG's perfect fusion dragon. That Absolutely is literally incredible. You cannot get that, a more that, perfect fusion dragon than that. Not only did you get the perfect. I, I think. I think that's a three three nine. I think that's a three three nine. I, I don't know. It, it could be tight. It could be a very low three forty. But that is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous in a race. That is incredible. Amazing. Well played. Truly Future amazing. has Citrus Minati down. Bowie has got a second break, and so his fight's completely ruined. He's having to take the extra turn there. I haven't been seeing what's happening on Blue Stream because I've been so captivated by this Fusion Dragon that's got a pinch hunt for attacking. Oh my. What there's, a race. There's what actually race. no variation of that Fusion Dragon fight that could be further optimized. Is that right? Like, all of the I actions mean, it, were perfect, all of the attacks were, like, it was the fastest attack animation that it could have done five times in a row. Practically speaking, no, you cannot get a better fusion dragon fight than that. Pra I mean, you can. You can get all attacks or something like that, but... That's what she got, I thought. I'm sorry. Oh, she got no, a she break. Got a drain frang. She got oh, a drain right. frang and a break. Right, so, right, right. I mean, yeah, sure, and in Tass land you can get better fusion dragon, but that is as good as it gets. Practically speaking, that is perfect. Uh, that that would be a community gold. Well, no, it won't be because she didn't go for the quick kill. If she had committed to the quick kill, it would have been a community gold, 100%. That that could still be a community gold because the actions were so quick. Yeah. Bluzer also got his second break, so Bluzer and Bowie are both uh, fighting it out here for third at the moment. Um, I think I think both of them can't enter Fusion Dragon on the Flint turn, so they'll have an extra turn in the Fusion Dragon fight, which is a bit spooky. Mm -hmm. Interesting to see how neck and neck they are. Yeah, exactly. Like, they, they're both having terrible fights. Minardi casting wishes are relevant. We don't care about that. Um, mm -hmm. Future is into the fusion dragon fight. Another break from Satoros. Wow. Um, Bowie is not having a good day at the office. <laughs> not having a good day at the All office. Right. Future's got the menus going here. We'll see oh, what no, Future is on a flint turn. Future is on a flint turn. That's huge. He can go for the five turn fusion dragon. That saves a considerable, a considerable amount of time. Mm -hmm. 
We'll see who finishes the Satyrus Minority f fight out of uh, Bluezer and Bowie first. Okay. It's getting really close. Future Future oh. just got a spooky friend on Isaac. Bluezer just cleared them both with, okay. with Quake. Okay, so so okay, so okay, Bluezer and Bowie, okay, lots of things are happening at the moment. Okay, first thing, Isaac has a ghost attached to him. That's an, a, a side effect of Evil Blessing or Haunt. It has a one in eight chance to proc a quarter damage of you so when you deal damage there's a one eighth, eighth chance that you will deal 25 percent damage back to yourself whenever isaac summons judgment that means he could die future mm -hmm. also just got broken so his fight's a little bit scary right now he needs extra turns here yeah also and he also needs to pray that, every, that after the judgment isaac doesn't go down so chat if you want future to take second you really got to get those bless rngs in chat because he needs every ounce of luck you can get every ounce of it Loser right. is probably five future. seconds ahead of Bowie. He's a lot more than that, actually. He's about uh, about forty seconds ahead because he's got he doesn't have to do the flash turn, so it's actually a sizable advantage. Oh, right, right. Come on. Yes, oh, no proc, no proc. He he did get broken again. This is fine. He needs to get one more judgment off. Then he'll do the damage turn, then he can do anything to finish the fight. Like Ramses, Mars, whatever he needs to do to finish the fight. One more judgment, chat. One more judgment. He should be fine though. He as long as um as long as he can get through to the final turn of this fight with with at least three people alive, he should be able to finish the fight. Out of space, this is fine, it's a flash turn, it's slow. I but you can also... see the time difference between an attack and an out of space. Out of space just takes forever. Mm -hmm. Attack, perfect. Okay, one more chat. Let's go. One more bliss RNG. Let's go, future. Let's go. You Come can do on, it. Come on, future. Take second. I believe. Meanwhile, Valissa is closing connects. in on her time. Come on. Yep, Valissa is, is finishing things up. This is a huge win for her. I'm so proud of her. Uh, she has put in so much work. Like. I was so impressed the day that I saw her her lab out every single encounter in the end game. Like I've labbed it, but like I didn't expect anybody else to lab it out. No, it, it didn't proc on Isaac. Oh, future, the end game RNG god has done it again. Boreas, There's get off no the vine. The Doesn't kill. really matter. Put the flash up. Secure the kill. Uh, he can kill with the Ramses off of this. This is huge. Well we done, go. future X. Well done. The end game god comes through with a huge, huge win. Like. Okay, he's, he's coming in second, but for him, this is a huge win, right? Like, yeah, I would not um, have. He is, I would not have expected Future yeah. to come in second. This is a huge win. I'm super proud for him. I'm so I'm so proud of Future as well. Like this is so incredible for him. Like I know he he has a love hate relationship with this game at times, <laughs> particularly early <laughs> we on. We all do. In, in the early game, I've seen some terrible RNG, but his his faithful late game RNG has come through in spades, and he is he is going to come second. Velissa just doing the very last menu of the game. Put it in, Velissa. Put the black orb in. There we go. Black orb. The ship is rising. Time is on. The final text box where Jenna, uh, where Mia says uh, Jenna is waiting for us. Bluezer just had a, a spooky friend proc on Isaac. That is so unfortunate. Bluezer is now in a precarious position. Ooh. Does he have any waters of life left? He does. He, he does. Two. He bought those extra ones. Future taking the judgment for the secure kill here. GG's Future coming in second. Let's go, Future. Let's go, well future. done. Well played, sir. I, and now it's so close between Bowie and Blue. I think Bowie's going to clutch it now. That that death on Isaac is so scary. Let's see if the Fusion Dragon lets I, Isaac live. Break. I, okay. Good, have good, they been good. following their fights well enough to know which one of them's ahead? Yeah, well, with that death on Isaac, I think Blue loses a turn. So I think at worst they're equal. Bowie just did a, a boosted round of damage. I think he's going to go Boreas here. Yep, he's going for the five turn. Uh, well, the six turn kill actually from That's... his position. And because he has an extra turn, he had an extra turn of, of, of Flash, which kind contributes of, uh, another 100 damage to this fight. Really so if he gets risky, broken though. here, he's actually okay. No, he's fine. He's absolutely fine. That extra turn is actually going to secure this if it uses Break. He also has Hail Prism on Mia. He is absolutely fine. Bowie is going to come in third. What about if um, Ivan gets killed on the on the summon proc because he has a ghost? I guess it's not going to happen now because he, he already used Thor, but he already used it. He already used it. Bowie, yeah. what a comeback! What a comeback! Yes, you have hit time with Velissa. Yes, time is being hit. This this should be the dragon going down on Bowie's stream. 
What a race. Bowie, oh my. Every piece of RNG working against him, scrapping it out in the RNG salt mines, managed to clutch <laughs> it out against Bluza. It was Bluza's incredibly unfortunate having to reset after getting through all those text boxes in Satoros and Minati. Oh, that was enough to equalize. And this should be the kill on Bowie's stream. And there it is, GG's Bowie, well played. Wow, <laughs> wow, wow. What a comeback, what a fight back from Bowie. And Blue is, oh, Isaac is down again. Come on, Blue, you can bring this home. He must be so close at this point. Must be so close. You can do it. This is the this is when the Fusion Dragon goes wrong. Like this is the things that could have happened to Future if that spooky friend had propped on Isaac in his run. So what's the play here? I think you need to play Cybell. No, he's going for the kill. Okay. Scary. Okay. He's, ris he's risking it. Yeah. Okay. I know what he's doing. He's going for the damage up front this turn. He's trying to set up a judgment on the next turn which is going to be scary. Um, uh, actually, he'll have Flash. If this next Judgment does not kill, he's in a world of trouble. Yeah. But I, I'm pretty sure he's okay. I think he's okay. I think he he's might... got enough two Judgments ready. I he think he's going to be fine. might be able to secure it with Psy Energies after his summons run out if he hasn't gotten the kill, but uh, it's really sketchy. He sh yeah, like, because he's kind of changed up the turn order here because he had the death and he's really trying to get this win home, um, basically this, this here needs to this needs to kill or if not it needs to get really close oh he can't even oh he can't oh. can he he's the side bell i think Granite. i think he's oh, side bell yeah here. he needed to use judgment he needed to use judgment here oh no time loss of source coming he, in he, yeah time loss of source can it clutch it up ivan is on one hp that is not good that is very scary yeah he could have used judgment if this doesn't kill he's going to be kicking himself he could have used judgment. Oh, I got the it kill. It kills. All right. Well done. Oh, sketchy fight there, Bluza, but well done, sir. You, yeah. you, have, you have brought it home. Guy's getting me anxiety. Wow. <laughs> what a race. Oh my, what a race. I, I cannot believe what I just saw. <laughs> like, this is end game. Like, oh my, what an end game. That's uh, her, her Venus Lighthouse 2 split into the. Uh, boss fight, especially the Fusion Dragon boss fight. Oh. Just incredible, unprecedented RNG. I, I, have a, I have a very, very important message from uh, definitely not FX. He is uh, one of the co-authors of the Golden Sun TAS. He just messaged me, all caps, that RNG that Velissa had is better than the TAS. What? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your input, FX. Thank you. <laughs> That's better, oh, that like, legitimately insane. better than the TAS? Legitimately better than the TAS. The TAS gets lots of Drain Fangs, if I recall correctly, but... My god. <laughs> Incredible. What a run. Whew. So everybody's closing it out. Now, um, there are some frame savers at the end here that we have not touched on because we've been fusion dragging it out. Um, all our runners will go and talk to Item. So where Bowie is right now, um, Isaac, after this cutscene, will run to Iodem, the guy in black, chat to him and leave. That saves a second. The other time saver is on the docks. If you position Isaac correctly and you use the black orb, you minimize Isaac's steps and that just saves like half a second or something. So there are frame savers here and, and those frame savers have made the difference before. Bluezer and Bowie, remember, they, they had a, an 11 frame difference in their PVs at one point. That difference was entirely made in the split, actually. Bluezer fumbled a menu and um, Bowie was able to, to clutch it out. So um, this split matters. It absolutely matters. I've actually <laughs> tied with someone to the second on uh, when I was climbing up the rankings and uh, I didn't know about that one second time save, kicked myself for it afterwards. <laughs> Yeah, look, so, so like Future here is using the uh, Black Orb from right at the end of the dock and that makes Isaac move back. That's that half second that I was talking about. If you use it from where roughly Isaac's positioned now on Future's stream, you, you get uh, basically no step and it saves a decent chunk of time. Really? Just like the small things, eh? Yeah, uh, you know, like there's not much going on in the split, but uh, if you're trying to mash for a PB, you, you've got to know all the, tr all the tricks, you know? Mm-hmm. Amazing. What what a what a crazy run, honestly. I, I mean, all four runs were, were crazy. Like 
the future just like slogged it out, split after split, and eventually the end game luck came through and he, and he just made it. He, he got her across the line. A uh, bluezer just, he was first off the boat, first off the mm -hmm. Kraken, and then things just went downhill afterwards. Like some really unfortunate overworld encounters there. A couple of rats being annoying, just. Yeah, well, there's also um, the retreat in Alt Miller, too, and um, Bowie and had. And then the uh, retreat. And... Bowie had. Yeah, but the, Bowie. Uh, the, 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 the Immel the, overworld the, the encounter death. that wiped them. Yeah, the, the, the death outside of Immel, the, the Kraken would refuse to sleep. Like, that's the that's the kind of RNG you rage quit oh, on, you know? Um, yeah, like, but I, he, he clutched I completely, it out. I completely forgot about that. The times two Kraken fight where all of the status effects failed, like, that is... Oh, and, he, and he had um, awful RNG and Colossal as well. And yeah. I mean, the, the, the final difference maker was just Blue unfortunately fumbling that last menu and um, having some Jin standby that shouldn't be of standby and then having to reset. Um, basically losing all the advantage he had over Bowie and then it was pretty touch and go there at the end. I mean, it looked like Blue had the better position going into the fight, but some very, very unlucky uh, spooky friend procs um, just kind of ruined it for him. Oh, no. Real, it's, it's, it's Golden Sun. Yeah, <laughs> it's what it's yeah. all about. It's That's what this game is. This crazy RNG fest. We've talked about Absolutely it so much crazy. over and over and over again. Variants, RNG, this type of how, how swingy this game is, especially the lighter half. And, this uh, speedrun uh, for the community has really demonstrated that for you guys today. Also, just want to recognize that uh, some of the times are coming up on stream now, and uh, Valissa's in at a 3.39. What? Yep. 3.39 in a, in a race. Oh, Valissa. That, that's a huge milestone for a runner. Dropping below the 3.40 for the first time in a race? Yep. Like, like what, what's, you, uh, what's the second? What's the second counter on that? What's the second count on that? A three forty-five for future, so super close to his uh, current PB. What's the what? What's uh, the, the, the oh, second sorry. count on Velissa's three three nine? It's, uh, it's 12, 12 milliseconds, or um, sorry, twelve seconds. So you you take out those safety saves, and that could have whoa, been whoa, a three thirty-eight. Pause, 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 pause. Three three nine twelve. Yes. That is a third place time. That bops Bluza. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Velissa, that is incredible. That is that is actually unreal. Congratulations once again, Velissa. Uh, amazing run. That that like wow, third place. That's insane. Absolutely. That, that's um. What's uh, in in the grand scheme of things, that is uh, seventh place overall. Crazy. Absolutely Blizzard, crazy. Blues are coming in at 3.46. A very respectable time. Very respectable time. With all the things that have happened in this run, that is still a very respectable time. All oh I my. Is, wow. Incredible. And now here's the final time coming up with Bowie in a few moments here. In Blusa, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Bowie's done. He's out. Third place. There were just so and many twists and turns throughout this time. entire race. Yeah, look, this is why Golden Sun is so fun. Like, yes, we have to endure that really, really, really long intro, but uh after that, it's just a wild ride of RNG. You're up and down, you, you gain, you lose, and just congratulations to all of our runners. They did a, a, an amazing job. Like Navigating some of that rough RNG is, is, is really difficult. To do it in a race setting is very impressive. Um, and people have... Uh, I have been thoroughly entertained, and they have, they have done the game proud. Well done, everyone. Yeah, well done indeed. Hats off to all the runners. You guys killed it today. Well, if anyone that was watching this uh, race wanted to know more about Golden Sun, maybe they want like after watching this man, they maybe they would be interested in joining. Where would they go to learn more about the race? Or go I'm sorry, to more about the community. <laughs> <laughs> go to speedrun.com and navigate your way up to the Golden Sun section. Uh, we have a video tutorial series for this category. We have notes for this category. 
If you prefer to run the Lost Age, we have a 150 page guide for the Lost Age, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Um, but um, join the Discord. Uh, we have Discord links also from the speedrun.com page. And uh, we're, we're more than happy to, to help you all out and uh, get you all acquainted with this uh, at times frustrating, but overall immensely satisfying speedrun. And to, to add to that, um, in my experience in the speedrunning community and just tw Twitch in general, this has been one of the most welcoming communities I've ever seen. And all of the runners that you've seen here today, as well as myself and Plexa, would be happy to help new runners um, in, in uh, getting introduced and in, in getting familiar with the game. Yeah, if, if uh, any uh, any other comments, anything, any other shout outs that you all would like? Just want to highlight that Plexa has a run coming up in uh, SGDQ for TLA. It's been mentioned yeah. a few times. Yeah, it's, it's coming up. I, I'm pretty excited for that. SGDQ, not too far away now. It's going to be very exciting. Yeah. Yeah, and if uh, any other comments from the, the runners, uh, I believe we have a discussion that was beforehand about that. Yeah, I think Felissa wants to jump in and uh, we, we should have a yeah. chat with her because she just did something truly phenomenal. Yeah, I actually cannot believe this run just happened. This was insane. I, I was actually listening to the commentary this entire time, just listening along. Cause I, I, I originally meant to turn it off when I had to focus, but I, I just couldn't. <laughs> it was top tier commentary <laughs> and Hearing Plexa lose his mind over that fusion dragon is very, like, <laughs> the, the, very that understandable. That's that fusion dragon ridiculous. is just the, that fusion uh, dragon is illegal. Kind of teared up at the end there because this run was actually just, first of all, such a blast, so much fun, just racing against everybody here in the lead change uh, regularly. Me catching up again after Garrett died at the start of the game. That's always nice. <laughs> Freaking Garrett dying to uh, bandits. Uh, oh no, to the encounter before bandits even. Um, yeah, I've, I've had an absolute blast. GG's everyone, uh, thanks for raising. Uh, sh Shoutouts to Future for also putting down a great run, even though he's he was kind of the underdog in terms of PBs. Um, Shoutouts to Bowie uh, for just pushing through all that terrible RNG. Like, it, it actually ended up being so close for how completely destroyed he got by Emil and Kraken and some other stuff and Blues are pushing through despite the accidental retreats. That was just really good. Uh, thank you all for the race, it's been fantastic. Well, thank you for the entertainment. That's just, I, I, I'm lost for words. I, I'm, I'm so proud of, of what you achieved there. Like, I'm not even you, like, I, I, we, like just, I, I've seen you in the community for so long and I always knew you could get that 339 just to see it in this, in this <laughs> setting in that way is just, yeah. Unbelievable. <clears throat> Were you, uh, like standing on the shoulders of giants. Like every time I've watched anyone do runs of this game, I'm I'm learning. I'm making like mental notes of how to beat certain encounters or how to put put my gin for more survivability or whatever. Um Plexa obviously making a whole video tutorial series, which you should check out if you want to run the game. Slightly outdated but still very useful. Um yeah, so just thanks to the entire community. They have been fantastic. If anyone was curious, uh, uh, that you just mentioned about the, the video, if anyone's curious, would it be on speedrun.com? Sure is. Maybe I should just push for mm -hmm. a better time without breaks. <laughs> 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 yeah, Valissa, did you just uh, hold yourself back there and uh, wait to do the 339 for the community race? <laughs> I mean, I have been grinding New Game Plus just for better practice, but that also resulted in me not being able to finish, you know, normal runs, so... In a way, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, any other shout outs? Any other kind words? Um, I just want to thank the whole community, like all the runners and Plexa for commentating and everyone coming together uh, to do this. And of course, to GDQ for giving us the spotlight to uh, show off our community to the wide um, range of audience that you have here. Thanks to everyone. Yeah, for sure. Also, thanks to everybody supporting us in chat. It's been a blast seeing everyone vote for their favorite teams and just living with us in the run. It's been great. All right, just a yeah. couple more quick announcements. Don't forget, since we mentioned Summer Games on Quick earlier, uh, that it is actually going to be online and it'll be 
July 4th to the 11th. The games list is already out, and we know that there's a Golden Sun in there, the second game. Am I correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't forget that the prize submissions are now open. You can go to gamesunquick.com to find out more about submitting prizes to the event. Frame Fatales, the all-woman speedrunning event, will be returning on August 15th to the 21st with Flame Fatales. Game submissions will be open from May 18th to the 25th. You can go to gamesunquick.com slash frame fatales for more information on the upcoming event. Information on all of our hotfix shows will be available at gamesdunquick.com slash hotfix. From there, you can find out more information about submitting your runs to any of our weekly shows. If you are watching this on YouTube and would like to support our live content, please consider checking out our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash gdq. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe to any Twitch channel of your choice for free. Please consider using your Prime Gaming account to subscribe to the GDQ Twitch channel. And don't forget, tomorrow is going to be Community Spotlight with a Mega Man Battle Network show featuring Battle Networks 1, 4, and 5. Tune in as we celebrate Mega May, and I believe that will do it for us. Thank you all to the runners and commentators for this amazing, fantastic race.